Oh, you want me also prove to people that you were on my Stern you're website, sure and that's where you got all your Howard TV clips from, and you put them on YouTube, and that's how you got your views on their Jimmernam, your right. first account? I actually started YouTube 12 months ago, and when I started YouTube, I was doing basically uh, Howard Stern TV stuff. I started playing a lot of Howard TV shows. I made almost 400 videos of Howard TV stuff. Don't lie on my name and pretend that your I was name. you were cool. Dude, no and one I even knows who you, you are, bro. What did I learn from you? Is your name what did Wish? I learn from you? Is that who you are? Yeah, nobody knows who I am. This? Yes. What's this? This is what I'm doing to you when I see you. Oh, okay. So you got a BB gun that you do target practice with, you shithead? Oh, yeah. Because you're yeah. a weasel. Zoom in on that. Not only do you in look like... Did you tell these people you're a sexual predator yet? No. All right, I want you to be all about love. No. I love you, bro. You're a good Ew. kid. I love you, dude. What? I miss you. I love you, okay? No, I, I want you to be a good kid. I don't want you to be a bad boy, okay? I, no, to be no, a good no, boy. Please don't ever use those words in the same sentence. And then you buy fake viewers. At least we don't tell everybody I buy you're successful. fake viewers. Shorty, if I show you proof that this guy's a child predator, uh, no, 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 get her, get no, him, no, get him, no, 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 because uh, if is. there was proof, he would not be on the YouTube streets. Yes. I know what the fuck yes, I'm will. talking about. Because he's changed his name a million times. No, it, but you you put a 12 year old boy in charge of your fucking porn section on Discord. Oh really? So go ahead and show us the proof on that. <laughs> we don't see Discord, stupid. Why did you get Discord shut down? Because you made a 12 year old your moderator and tried showing him porn. Why did you try 12? Why did you try making a little kid a moderated Discord that porn in it? Because he's smarter than you. He's oh, than so you made it. Yes, so more you made, you made than a you. fuck. He so has you more made. views than you. He has more views than you. So he you made a child. He's not a pussy like you who doesn't know shit about sports. So you made a child. Moderate of a Discord where you had naked and porn in it. You're a child. So you, so you had a Discord with porn in it and you made a 12 year old your moderator? What are you talking about? Discord with porn in it. Internet has born, you fucking moron. Oh shit, they found out that I'm a child predator. I want to fuck people's kids. Better change my YouTube channel now. God damn it. Oh shit. Oh shit. He loves people like that because he can manipulate them and pull the puppet strings because they're so stupid for Jimmernam. But when someone like me comes along, all uh, night, I do have a silver night. plaque from YouTube thanking me for getting over 100,000 subs. But, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you're not aware you of that. You can buy it. By the way, viewers, you can buy those plaques. Oh, okay. Well, I don't buy yeah, shit. Yeah, you can. But, Good right. money. Yeah, how much do you make? Because you should be proud of it. Uh, some months so I've made $30,000 on a slow month. Have you ever made 30000 <laughs> in one month? Oh, uh, okay. There we go. Now I got that clip, so now I get to disprove that. Thank you. Okay. Write that down. Well, I hope I can Julia. see you again. It's been a pleasure. You're going to see me again. Go ahead and click end. I knew what I knew in the past, I would have been blacked out on your ass. Hi, everybody. Look who's back. Welcome. Thank you for waiting. I'm sorry that it's a little bit late here, 38 minutes late, but you know, good things come to those who wait. And uh, we have a little surprise here tonight. And um, I think it's going to be exciting, uh, especially for Jimmernam. Uh, I think he's crossed paths with this man before, so uh, why don't we go ahead and add him to the show as our surprise guest? <laughs> Whoa! Uh oh! Uh oh! Heard you, wanna, uh, heard you wanna choke me out and break my arm? Heard you said yeah. uh, Luana said I had fake tits or something? They're like, look at that! Look at that! Next, what I mean, are, I what's hey, going on there? 
Yeah, what's are they squirting all over the place? What's going on, huh? What's up, buddy? <laughs> How you doing? Jim and him is uh, actually live right now. From oh, what man. I've seen, and so I think, he's about to get murked. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think Jim and him should be everybody. Everybody watching this should go over to Jim and Am's chat, whether you're a fan of him or not, and go in there and tell him that Mark Harley is here, ready to uh, give him a challenge. Ooh, ready? Give him a challenge Ooh, because yeah, Jim Ernam right. said that he was going to beat up Mark Harley. Is that correct, Mark? That is, I have it in text message, actually. You can, if you go to my YouTube, you can actually see it's, a, it's the uh, thumbnail for the video that I made about him. Yeah, Sorry. Let's, let's actually bring that up so we can get a refresher of what he was a saying. Refresher. Let's and, see. Uh, Mark Harley. How are you doing, Mark, by the way? I'm doing phenomenally well. Thank you. Um, feeling great. Got my workouts in today. That's why I just like, this is how I honestly spend most of my day. Like this, like if I'm at the house, I got my shirt off. So I'm like, what the fuck not? And also it's just ironic. No, you got to flex. You got to flex. flex on him, baby. And also Jim Renan, like, it, it's funny because again, I the whole situation as I described to you when I somebody connected me to Discord and everybody on Discord and I met you and I'm like, this is the guy who knows where all the bodies are buried. So it's been really cool connecting with you the last <laughs> couple of days. You've like blown my mind with all the information that you have about this guy. That as I made this analogy, it was like you're walking through the forest and you trip on something. That was like him betraying me, you know, making videos about me nine months ago or whatever. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Like forget about him. And then you go back, you're like, wait a second, was that a tree root or is that a, oh my God, like what's this whole universe of bullshit, crazy, you know, child grooming, uh, fake YouTube accounts, you know, 15 years of betraying people. Uh, yeah, we can watch this. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm sorry about the Wi-Fi already because I was like in a dead spot in my house. And I didn't, you know, so I was like, I see, but I still made this in response to him. Uh, like threatening me he was like go live with me tonight pussy or i'm gonna fucking like i'm gonna rip you apart and he sends me the link to it i was like oh no he just didn't um because he was calling me a pussy for not going on a live stream with him mm -hmm. and i said oh i'll live stream with you we'll do it in person bitch i'll drive i'll drive to you we can wherever you want to meet up let's do it but like you just said you wanted to meet me and choke me out and break my arm so here's my arm here's my neck do however you want to start but once a guy crosses that line, I just want to give him the chance to. I'm not saying I'm going to go terrorize somebody. Like, I would never, like, show up at somebody's house, per se, right? But, you know, uh, if somebody says that they want to do that, I want to give them the opportunity to. That's all. No, and you you even said, hey, I will give you my arm first. Right. I'll sign the waiver. I'll go, whatever yeah. happens in this, I can't sue you. I can't call the police. I said, I'll start in literally whatever position you want. I have no BJJ experience. Just uh, Marin County High School uh, heavyweight athletic league wrestling champion of the year. It's whatever. Like it's honestly, it's, that's in the past. Like I don't, I don't have any grappling experience for all he cares, right? Um, so I was just interested to have this. I was like, that you must be really confident in your martial arts skills. Maybe it's an Asian thing. I don't know, but he uh, definitely seemed very confident that at whatever it said on his driver's license, five eleven, one seventy. So I, I got to imagine he's adding a few inches there. So under six feet tall, under two hundred pounds. No discernible muscular definition, seems to be cross-eyed and also a hermit, uh, and agoraphobic, doesn't leave his house. Um, well, he said, well, hold on. He said the reason, and we'll see in this video, that he wasn't going to meet you or fight you is because he would be afraid that he oh. would hurt you and go to jail. Yeah. And, and I'm so like, now you're giving the solution to that problem, and so let's see what happens now. So let's watch this video to give people a reminder of what Jim Renam has said, or morbid, or uh, T fact, or uh, misery box. I can't keep up at this yeah, point. What, what, what I was having a conversation with the T fact K channel, aka Jimmerman, because I recently called him out for being a sociopathic grifter because he went uh, behind my back after desperately trying to befriend me for months and months, only in order to turn right around and tell private information that I disclosed him to Luana and um, in an attempt to undermine me and make me look stupid. So he's milked both of us for views, obviously, over the past however many months, nine months. He's made, you know, dozens of views about me. Some of them have been taken down. She's privacy struck some of them because she doesn't want to be involved in these. But uh, so this guy um, challenged me to come on his live stream. I mean, I started climbing and <clears throat> I'm not going to help you anymore because you make a channel that's solely devoted to reading 
TFATK subreddit comments for a living, right? So he said, come on a live stream, you know, because um, I proclaimed that I'll run intellectual circles around him because he's a guy who makes a living again. Reading comments from a subreddit. That is his entire page is reading comments from a subreddit, right? That's how he makes a living. He also makes a living from getting uh, 800 views a video on uh, Disney Resort pages, and he's going to go live with this video on me and Luana, I guess, uh, on his third channel, Morbid. You know, he gets about a thousand views of video, so hopefully he's trying to crack uh, 2K video, uh, 2K views or so. But um, the funny part is he's calling me a pussy, saying that I'm too pussy to meet up with him in, uh, on the live stream. And I said, tell you what, I'll come to your house right now. And we can do this live in person and see if you keep that same energy, right? He wouldn't give me his address. He wouldn't agree to meet up in person, but he kept calling me like a pussy and a dumb ape and a, and a retard and a 12 year old girl. And I said, dude, we can, we can meet up. We can do this in person. We can film this in real life tonight. And he kept saying, I'm a pussy for backing down from going on a live stream with him. Well, I'm just not going to give him the views, right? Then he goes on. And I'll show you the text messages. <laughs> he says he's going to break my arm arm bar. He goes, yeah, I'd meet up with you, but I don't want to get arrested for beating the shit out of you. Um, this guy, ugh, not the best brains for the art, also not the best body for MMA, but, you know, he's been... I'm sorry about this picture. I'm sorry. Bucks. I'm just making sure that's uh, the actual video. That's yeah, that's on my video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm just, just making sure. I had a spot in my house that, that I just like, right. as soon as he sent the link, I was like, I'm just doing this right now to preempt. It's all him. good. I just want to make sure it wasn't me. Looking through gifts and stuff right now. <laughs> Here it is. I guess the, he catfished his girl. His girlfriend's been reaching out to me, telling me what a sociopathic grifter he is. Let's just take a look at this guy real quick. Can we all see that? Yeah, we see it. <laughs> this this uh, this guy says that he is going to break my arm. This fat guy right here, <laughs> who apparently catfished the shit out of his girlfriend for s several years during the pandemic, claiming that he was younger than he is, claiming was sending her pictures that were like 10 years old when he was skinny or not, not so fast. This guy claims that he's going to meet up with me and get arrested for breaking my arm in an arm bar. And I said, actually, you know, I'll give you my arm to start with. If you wanted to do the arm bar thing, I'll give you my arm to start with. And let's bet 500 bucks on who wins that exchange. Because I said, how are you going to do it? You're going to take me down? You're going you're gonna to grab my arm? Because I, I just, I, how do you picture this going down, Jim or Nam? Jim or Nam has been kicked out of every single community he's ever been a part of. True. Because he's a groomer, a pedophile, True. a sociopath, a grifter. He takes advantage of the mentally ill. He has a retarded woman on his uh, live streams weekly that he takes advantage of. And he catfishes women because he doesn't have any game. He's uh, soft. He's aging. And he feels the need to manipulate women in order to feel better about himself. And then when they find out the truth about him, put them down. So... See, so I have to pause it right here just for a second because I had a lot of people giving me a lot of flack and you know it's kind of annoying to give a guy who's such a piece of shit like the even any sort of leverage or anything yeah he's technically not a pedo okay he didn't <laughs> we don't have proof of him well, that's a, of, that's that's a good point that's me just sexual, like him. just being like yeah. hey what's up, pedo you know and then and actually at the time that I said that that was just like chatter that I was hearing You've actually opened me up to the fact that there's like hard evidence of him interacting with children, which you put in the intro saying, I love you, the porn thing with kids. There mm -hmm. are several documented instances of highly inappropriate. And I say this is a guy I taught and tutored for 10 years. I coached uh, football. I tutored uh, middle school kids and high school kids. I taught all ages from kindergarten. to So my boundaries with children are like, if anybody were to put that into question, it's like, whoa, dude, we're going to have a fucking problem. If you ever say something about me as a, like, like, like if if the word grooming ever came out about me that would ruin my life right that would ruin my livelihood for yeah. 10 years of my life before i started doing more entertainment stuff so the fact that he can sit here 
and you've called him a groomer to your to his face, and he has no comeback. Like I first discovered you actually because someone sent me this clip of you having this mic drop moment where he's like, "Yeah, that's why you ran to Canada." Like, yeah, I'd never come to Canada, and he and you go, "Well, they wouldn't let you in because they don't let in child groomers." Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because he knows it's true, right? Yeah, that's the so the issue I think is. Well, some people are like you have to be very specific because if you make false accusations, it takes away from the true ones. True. And we I saw, I, I agree, he yeah. isn't a pedo yet that we know of, right. but, but, but he has groomed children, a child yeah. predator. So I'm just making the disclaimer. Um, there, here's another linguistic distinction. See if, if, it's, I'm, if I'm a gay man, bad. but I've never had sex with a man, does that still make me a gay man? If I'm attracted to men. That's what I said. So I said to them, my argument was, so what do you need to happen? Do you, do you are you hoping a child's going to be abused in order to verify yeah. all of this? It's like, like this psychopath need to kill someone in order yeah, we to stop it. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's a path it, to it happening. It, to me, there seems evidence that he is attracted to children in an inappropriate way that he continuously transgresses normal adult child boundaries. And, and again, as a professional educator, I'm highly aware of these boundaries it's like the moment a kid gets inappropriate with you you have to be like hey don't fucking do that because this will end my life if you if anything happens beyond like you know when i was like 25 and i'd walk into a school you'd have like young girls be like oh my god like they've never seen someone who looks like i don't mean to be cocky it's just like the teacher that i'm replacing for the day is, is some seven-year-old woman and then you know 25 year old mark walks in the door it's like ah! you know like please don't like don't make this weird for everyone and then get me fired you know like so my hyper awareness of like adult child boundaries comes from many years of experience where I go, the things that I saw on camera uh, just are so transgressive to me as a, as a person who worked professionally with kids, things that I would never say. And, and, and also then you look at his eBay store, I'm sure you'll get to that, but like, that oh, was we'll like, get to it. Yeah. We'll get, that's the moment they give me the heebie jeebies and I'll let you take well, it. Well, what's funny here is funny enough he actually has like a history in child development too so he knows how to work with kids. i mean it's like what's funny it's like it's like the catholic priest thing almost you know what i mean Where it's like, yeah. like i just got into teaching my mom's a retired art teacher so it's like this easy like sub teaching such an it can be a very easy job with really young kids it's more difficult but like you know high school kids they're just hoping the sub comes in, like whoever's replacing, they give you all these instructions. Like it's, it's, it's very sub teaching in LA, especially, but I've done it in all the state. It's, it's relatively easy job, but you do have to like manage the kids ultimately. That's really, it's like, are you a good babysitter of 30 kids at once? Then you'd be a good sub teacher, but you have to develop certain tricks and tactics. And if you were to like, I've never kept in touch with a girl from a fucking that I've subbed with whatever, like some young men I've worked with for like an entire year and then we stay in contact and I mentor them over the course of years, but it's always like, I would never like say anything inappropriate about sex or drugs or like porn or anything like the moment any of those things were brought up, it would be like, because as a, as a mentor figure, I'm always like, oh, here's a good book to read, check out this movie, like script, you know, you know what information to feed them and what to expose them to, and you're highly aware of what not to expose them to. And it seems like Jim Renam, as, a, as again, a 45 year old adult man is, yes. He he makes continuous transgressive actions towards the very young in a way that they because I saw a comment that somebody wrote earlier was like, yes, this happened to me when I was X years old. I'm 18 now or something. I was groomed by him. So he also has allegations from these kids who were in his discord coming mm -hmm. out later and saying the accusations are true. It's not just some made up you know thing by guys who want to take him down. What we witnessed was also what was experienced you know yeah so that's the weird thing it's like and this is uh because i wasn't following all of this stuff i knew him from seven years ago and then i heard i got a couple of things here and there of the weird stuff he was up to with like switching channels ban evading and getting exposed but the problem was a lot of these people and Shout out to uh, Vin Vader and Ian Ellis, uh, LLC. Those are two of the channels that I've had some of the clips, I believe, from. So shout yep. out to them for getting it. One of the problems was there was actual legitimate, like, cold hard proof where he had a Discord that had a thread or a channeled room for porn. Yep. And those kids that you heard in the Discord got to be as young as eight, nine years old. Some of them, yep. they sound like babies. 
and he made the 12 year old the moderator of the discord with that thread in there and his whole thing is like oh well show me the proof and but then he stupidly admits to it that it did yeah. happen but he's like yeah. it's almost like he's like shoving in your face like uh, well the so internet what? has porn on and it's like well, you don't have the proof he's like well you admitted to it so but i wish somebody who was in that discord would have screenshot it and the other point i wanted to make about what you said before so i was trying to think about it and i was like you know when i was a kid i saw a lot of heinous stuff right i get that kids are exposed when you say oh well the internet has porn so what's the big deal it's like yeah but for instance i would watch like howard stern when i was a kid but i You're it's an that. adult program made yeah. for adults and i was sneaking to watch it without my parents yeah. knowing right. the guy making the content wasn't directly conversing with me and giving me the porn and going hey look at it and also those are two example, totally remember, different things it's not even close like a, yeah i remember being like a high school one's senior a crime me, my dad would would uh, listen to how he's turned to me but it was his judgment call this is a guy who like would never have like let me watch porn or anything like that like growing up like i remember he caught me with like a playboy and he like kind of like laughed at me through the trash and he's like don't you don't get into that stuff so my dad wasn't anywhere near on the spectrum of like you know permissiveness with drugs or porn or anything but by the time i was like 17 we were watching howard listening to howard stern for a little bit on the ride to you know get yeah. dropped out of school however what that's also my dad knowing me and knowing his that's a role as a parent right to decide like what is your kid ready to see and for if i found out that my 12 year old or my 10 year old was getting exposed to pornography on the internet from an adult not going out and seeking himself right Mm -hmm. because, oh, it's just this app called Discord, right? I can be, it's just a group of uh, kids my age. Well, who curated that group? If I found out there was a 45 year old guy who curated a group uh, based on a mutual interest of children and then expose them directly to that porn, I'd go hunt that motherfucker down. Yeah. I, and I think a lot of parents would agree with that. Well, um, you kind of do have that opportunity. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just saying. This yeah. is here. By the way, I want to, I just, again, I'm going to put this out there. Jimmer Nam, I know you're out there. I know you know this is happening. You yeah. fucking pussy. All this a... shit you talked, you posted two videos about this guy. Two oh, fucking that was, videos. That was on top of his. Just recently, right? Yeah, somebody showed Show me the a... fuck up, you pussy. I'm going to put the link in the chat, by the way. I forgot. He has a BGL playlist that has 49 videos on it. So on his other channel, he has a BGL playlist. Big Gay Lion is my nickname on the TFAC K subreddit, which is a pretty funny nickname, I got to admit. But it's uh, so he refers to me as B it's also like people like BGL, Big Gay Lion. Like it's like I, you can't really insult me with something I'm kind of like that I think is funny, but he tries to. Um, but he has he made 49 videos about me in the past year. Before then, it's like you already made like you know, and then he, he acted as if he was gonna like extort me, like. You better come on or I'm going to fucking go nuts. Like, I'm going to release all the shit. I'm like, oh, no, don't play videos of me and my wife fighting from fucking, like, that everyone already saw nine months ago that you were like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, dude? And then he was, starts, he, was he the one who you sent the videos to first? Um, No. Or he, did you had already released those videos? I'd sent them to another number of people privately just being like, hey, like, because he started making uh, videos. Like okay. This. He didn't get the exclusive. He made it seem like he got, he was the only one who had them. No, a lot of people had him. He was another only... fucking lie. These guys. Right. Because oh um, what happened was basically like, you know, again, Luan and I posted. By the way, sorry, Robin. I'm going through a fight. We're going through, you know, uh, uh, marital issues. She posted some stuff about me. And I then, I didn't make anything public. Like I just, but people would like, I had people hitting me up like, fuck you, you piece of shit. I'm like, whoa, there's two sides to the story. So I'd send, I'd be like, hey, here's here's another side that you might want to consider. And a lot of people were actually really reasonable, which, which is cool. Like some people, you're never going to change their mind. But like, I'd have full on conversations where some guy would be like, you're a fucking piece of shit. I'm like, hey man, before you make that judgment, you want, might want to consider like some of these other events, you know? And that was not to defame like Luana. I was just like, I felt like I had to defend myself. And yeah, he yeah. took advantage of that. And so I was just saying, I'm like, you know, like, he was one of these people. And I'm like, so he's making videos already. He was the first person to hop on and kind of make like YouTube comments or, or YouTube videos, like being like, BGL is a piece of shit, wife beater, dead. You know, I'm like, oh my God, like, dude. And so I probably commented on a video or something like, hey, there's two sides to the story. And that's how I got in touch with me. But um, he then relentlessly 
like milked both of us for information on the other. But really, I mean, like literally, like he groomed me as like a friend because he really made it seem he kept going. And this is like the biggest red flag ever. But I just don't I probably told you this. I'm like, I'm not paranoid about people in the same way that I'm not paranoid about like, oh, I'm going to check the toilet seat to make sure nobody put a secret camera in there to fucking film my asshole and put it on the Internet. It's like I meet people all the time. Most 99.9 percent .9 of people that you meet are probably going to be not sociopaths or narcissists or, you know, as you diagnosed them, a, um, a, a vulnerable or covert narcissist. Right. Um, and I think you're, you're spot on with that, but he's somebody who really, he, he thrives on grandiosity. He thrives on manipulation. He ultimately his his only goal for this whole endeavor of befriending me while really going out of his way to be like, dude, you can trust me. I'm your friend, bro. Trust me. Trust me. You, I'm, I'm the only, he would say like, I'm the only one on the internet. Like so many of these people are fucked up and like, there's so many guys you can't trust out here. You can trust me. And I'm like, like, okay, whatever. But like, I was just telling myself that wouldn't have mattered if he didn't tell, I'm like, oh, I went on a date tonight, you know? And, and like, then he'd be like, Luana, like, you know, and I'm like, how the fuck did she, you know, like, and then it would get back to me. I'm like, wait, I only told one person this. Hmm. And so after discovering that he'd been buttering me up and playing my friend and like asking like how I'm doing or trying to get new information from me that I, it's like I disclosed my bank account information to him, but it's like if someone's checking in every day, you're like, oh yeah, thanks. I'm doing well. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And then he was like in secret reporting that to Luana and having like long drawn out conversations with her. And again, he doesn't realize like he, he proclaims like, yeah, I took advantage of both of you. I'm like, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? You're, you're admitting that you have highly manipulative, exploitative behaviors. He yeah. thinks it's cool. He thinks right. it's cool it's that he's able cool. to fuck with people. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I just don't think that's cool. I'm like, I don't mind like someone tricking me into be ha -ha, you're such a nice guy that you <laughs> fell for me being nice and we're being nice back. Yeah, ha -ha. yeah exactly. It's like, what an idiot. Me the biggest gotcha <laughs> in my life because again, most people that I meet on this are just like nice to me and I'm nice back and I never think twice about it. So you did like, you did mention at one point he's like, oh, let's go play basketball. And you started sensing he was being a fucking weirdo and you you politely yeah. declined, which is exactly my experience seven years ago. I yeah, politely yeah. declined teaming up with him and he, he's been yeah. angry ever since. He wanted, yeah, he wanted to like go to a Lakers game and a Clippers game. And at first I was like, yeah, man, sure. Like I'll bring, you know, I'll have like one, maybe one will like, Cause I'm like, I'm not into basketball, but I'm like, if Luana wants to have a night out, like we can go like whatever. Like I didn't, really didn't think much of it. Cause unless someone's like, can you go Tuesday, uh, April 14th? I'm not going to be like, no, I can't. It was just like, true thing, dude. Like see you at the game. If you have like, cause he was like, oh, I have season. That was, that was the thing. He was like, basically claiming like I have season passes or some shit. So I'm like, well, I can go to a free basketball game. Sure. Like why not? But um, he basically, once I found out he was disclosing information, he, uh, he's like, hey, man, can you come on? The hey, how's it going? Like, and I'm like, I already caught you, but I had to go through this mental process of going, what do I do about this? Do I confront him? Do I calm? Do I say, hey, man, that's not cool? For a guy who's not really your friend, it's like, bink, you know, like this card. Like, I don't have to think twice about it. It's not like, it's like, man, I've known you for years and you betrayed me. It was just like, oh, I get to not think about this person anymore. So he says, want to come on the stream? Hey, man, how you doing? Just checking in. Want to come on the stream tonight? And I'm like, nope. So he's never done a live stream with you at all or anything. No, he did one. He like invited me on to do one where it was this, it's his famous one or not famous on the subreddit at least because this guy who makes a lot of the music, I think his name's like Southern Oregon bird, like Soragon bird. So, but I think it stands for Southern Oregon bird or something mm -hmm. like that. It's like, I don't know. He makes some, um, he made music famous. Like, like, can I get a chug? Well, uh, uh, like some of these songs. Uh, I heard that song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, He's behind all that, but he came in like and kind of made a fool of himself. And I think the guy's a good guy. I think he was just like fucked up. He was like, yo, man, I'm the fucking OG in this shit. Like, I mean, I'm making change. Like, he just kind of got like. I remember that. I do remember yeah. stumbling across and, that, the thread where he was like getting pissed. Right. And for me, too was, like, I was on the stream talking to him and he was being nice yeah. to me. So I'm kind of like smiling along. I'm like, I know this guy's just like drunk and being like cocky and like talking some shit, but like, like, so out of context, it's like, you could clip it and make him look like a fucking idiot, but I think he was just like getting drunk and like pretending he was black for a second, you know. It's like, what's up, I'm a motherfucking OG dude? I don't want making all these beasts and shit. Y'all don't know. Like he was like a cringy, but at the same time, I'm like, he just looked like he'd been, you know, fucking drinking and smoking for a little bit and stupidly hopped on a live stream and kind of made an ass of himself. But like, 
he he has been he was right in the fact that he's like I'm a, I've been a contributor to this subreddit for years and maybe even I think he might have even had a conflict with Jim Renam because he was like Jim Renam was like yo yo cool it buddy cool it buddy and he's like fuck you like you like you fucking take advantage of this I think that was kind of the message was like you just leech off this shit like actually contribute to this shit you know which is accurate he just kind of phrased it the wrong way <laughs> let's see okay let's go back to this uh clip and see um i want to see what his text because i want to see what the text messages were well i can I, yeah see i don't know if yeah. i ever read it in there but i can because it was in the no thumbnail. you do I, I think you okay. do i thought you do show them don't you uh let me look um Skim through it i thought you did or maybe it's in this it's in the thumbnail maybe that's why Okay. Uh, okay. I, I can read it. Actually, I can. You want me to read and it? The other ones I want to see is the corny ones he sent you after he was sudenly trying to be your friend again. Where it's like he sent you like fifty texts, yeah, like a okay, woman. So, um, he's like, "Come on, bro. Let's just be cool. I, you know, I like you and Luana. I need to get back together." Um. Again, reminder, Jim or Nam, you're a fucking pussy. You're a little bitch. You couldn't beat up anybody. You would never leave your house. And the fact that you're telling people, I'm going to break your arm, I'm going to beat you up. And then the guy goes, okay, let's fight. And you're like, I don't, well, I don't want to get arrested because I'm such a strong guy. I would kill you and go to jail. Like, no, he's telling you, you could grab his arm first. Whatever you, whatever rules you want, he'll it's adhere to. It's actually competition. Like, that's what I'm like. I'm going to be like, I, I've actually done organized athletic competitions before. Both participants can shake hands at the beginning and agree to certain terms and sign a let, waiver. Yeah, sign a waiver, let a referee yeah. determine the outcome. Like I'm not saying this is like I'm not trying to like just go, I'm gonna beat your ass like street style. I'm saying we can agree upon any rules that you want. I gave you that opportunity. And I'm like, how do you see this happening? Cause like obviously you can't fucking take me down. Like if you want an actual like wrestling or grappling match, like even if you know jujitsu, you'd have to get him to the ground, right? How the fuck are you gonna do that? Like sorry buddy but you know like i i would if i had a million dollars right now i'd say give jim and him a hundred tries and he can reset for like as long as he wants in between these tries to take me down and i'll be like fully standing like like not even in a wrestling position like i'll let him get in a crouch position and it's like if once they blow the whistle he could shoot on me and i would put if i had a million dollars i put a million dollars on zero takedowns that's how confident i am as far as his takedown ability and my defense but I don't know jujitsu. I just know that I, I think you're making it seem more complicated. I think right. the moment he touched you, you could just fucking slam him in the face and he'd be dead. Like yes, well that's that that is you also could grab true. his skull like this and probably just crush it. That is true. And you know, I think people And he has like, a brain bleed, by the way, just letting him know. I know, it. and that's you know what? So let me tell you a quick story because he's a got a weak guys, spot in his brain. Every, I, his whole life's a metaphor, you know. <laughs> I gotta make his brain true. bleed more because I told you this in private like and I, you know like anytime someone's telling you a story it's like this isn't to be a tough guy but it's like I've broken this third metacarpal meta, metatarsal I think it is metacarpal or metatarsal um metacarpal right I don't um, know what and, the fuck it is um three times from hitting people in the face right and like not to brag but it's like I'm just that guy that's like once a guy crosses a certain amount I've never started a fucking fight in my life I've never gone up to somebody and pushed him or like It'd be like, fight me, bitch. But I get in these situations where, like, guys are triggered by me, guys my size, guys from a rival football team, for example, was one in college where, like, this dude is talking shit to me, like, pick me out of the crowd for it. He's like, can you fucking get out of here, too? I'm like, I wasn't talking to you. And then he's like, I don't give a fuck. And then I walk closer to him. And I was like, hey, man, like, I'll walk away right now. All you got to do is apologize. And then that triggers them more, right? And to the point, he's like, fuck it. And like, like, kill me, bitch. What the fuck? And it's like, you know. And so I like to do that kind of shit where it's like, I get the invitation to hit you and then I hit you. Dude still press charges, but of course he doesn't show up to court, you know. But it's like I got arrested for that. I've but this is again, he also was at this. I made it more simple. He was about to hit a girl, like because like some like he was like, and fuck you in your bitch, and like raised his arm to like almost slap her. And that's when I hit him because I knew that was like, well, legally, this is defensible. He can press charges, you can do whatever you want. Like, you're not gonna show up to court and be like, yeah, I yelled at this guy for an hour and told him to hit me in the face and then made a threatening gesture toward a woman and he hit me. You know, I'd be like, like <laughs> I know how that already plays out. But I've also been in fights where like I didn't initiate something, but like some guy talked shit to me. Like, you know, this one time I told you about on Hollywood Boulevard, like I grabbed a dude's hat and like threw it. And then his buddy comes like 
trying to tackle me. And it's like, the moment he touches me, it's like, all right, here we go, buddy. Like, if you want to do this right here, I put my fists up, you put your fists up. And then, as I told you, Luana was, you know, furiously refreshing <laughs> the local LA news. Like, did anyone die on Hollywood Boulevard tonight? Because the last time I saw, there was a guy bleeding out from his head on the sidewalk. Um, you never, you never got the end of the story of whether he's still alive. He could be dead. Yeah, you no, know, actually, you know what? Months later, we saw the same guy and his friends are pointing at me like his friends are like, oh, there he is. And I was like, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Have your brain crushed again? Like, is that like, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. If a guy has stories this recent of like punching people and like breaking their heads open, like, okay, yeah. this is not a guy. And I always thought like, you know, if if this I, not, if, if, if you're that I'm size, sure. what more fun can you have than to beat the shit out of people? Isn't that the whole hey, point? Please. But then they say people when they get bigger, they they get more less ego and more humble, and they don't want to fight unless they're yeah, that's the thing. It's like, unless I they're yeah. attacked, right? Right. I, I learn to use it. You can you can ask this about anybody. I I, was I need some steroids, by the way. <laughs> I will. That's why Mark's here. By the way, I, he's going to give me steroids for doing this. <sighs> wait, wait, just one second. Serious. I just want to say something. So. I gave moderator abilities to some people when they came in. Don't moderate anything that's like insulting. Like people can insult me. I'm sure Mark does not yeah. give a shit. Just no doxing. Like if people are doxing, remove that. But everything else goes. Everything else flies. I don't care. Talk all the shit you want. Let them say whatever they want. Go my ahead. Big, my big uh, leaky titties and my my lip injections and Botox. Yeah. What? The, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Let's <laughs> let's finish um well, a little finish bit more of this video and then. I want to see those text messages. I, I know yeah. they're in the the. I have them right now because right the right, like there's more to it. I posted a little bit of it, but like the basic start of it is so you're a pussy. Goodbye then. I'm not talking about TFAT K channel loser and the Disney Channel is a throwaway channel. You you dumb ape, which he said like 18 times already. Come meet me at Morbid X. Scared? Figured. I say, will you meet me in person? Scared? Figured. And he goes, no, because I would beat your ass and go to jail. Um, I said, I've already been on a live stream with you. This, I hadn't seen that text yet, but he goes, he, so the continuous thought that he had was no, cause I would beat your ass and go to jail. I don't know if you can see all this, but like, you know, you can, uh, I am, I am reading this. Hold on, hold on. I'll, uh, I'll make the screen bigger here. Okay. Yeah. So no, cause I could beat your ass and go to jail. I've already been on the live stream with you. He says, choke your ass out, break your arm too easy. I ain't going to jail for a dumb ape like you. You sent a voice message. He says, I thought you're the only one that wanted to go live with me. Now you're scared like the bitch you are. That's sad. The attention you want to get from homeless cats on the subreddit is funny. Oops, you're banned. He's saying you were banned. I was banned for a little bit, but oops, I'm back, bitch. Most of them are talking mass shit on you, and I don't blame them. Come join me tonight, because I will go over you tonight. And Luana, watch what happens tonight. Winky face, gay. It will be fantastic. Uh, it'll be up to the TFAC channel, too. Don't worry, pussy. So you're declining to go live when you suggested it to me? LOL. Wow, pussy. When Luana's going to text me and beg me to take down the videos... Of her and you, LOL, because she just texted me last night begging me, LOL, I got the text. No, she didn't. I took him down, you dumb fuck. Remember, you're 20 minutes, crybaby fit about it. Uh, this is how stupid you are. How stupid you are. T type like a 10-year-old much. Okay, live tonight, live? No, she struck them, you back down, pussy. Struck them, lol, I have zero strikes, you moron. Yes, live at your place. She put in a privacy complaint in person. That's not a strike, you idiot. Yes, and you back down. Figures you are a pussy. Anyhow, when you grow some balls, let me know. I, like, at this point, maybe right, all those steroids shrivel up. Like, you're a fucking pussy, Jim Renam. You're talking all this shit like, you're so scared to go live with me, but then I won't right. meet you in real life. Yeah, so uh, you but get you're the, just, the you're the pussy because you won't. My go messages camera. were more. After I said that, I was just like, I was like, uh, I can even let's play some here. Well, I'll play some because I I forget what I said. I'm sure I was just antagonizing him, but um, yeah, you can just put it right up to the the mic. Comprehension issues. What I'm saying is, I think you maybe you have auditory comprehension issues. What I'm saying is, we'll meet up in person because going on your channel would be the best thing that ever happened to you since the channel that you're talking about gets what like a thousand views or less a video 
So we can do this in person or not. And that's the big. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to scroll back. You're like, you're like not interested. You're like, if you're calling me a pussy, let's just meet up. We don't right, right, that far I, okay, away I'm not going, I'm, I'm not baiting. I'm not getting like baited into like. Maybe you have auditory comprehension. Like, I'm not, I'm not going like, fuck you, bitch. I'm just like. Person. There's a little more. I do that because you're too much of a pussy to look me in the eye and say any of the things that you said in this exchange we've had here. And of course, I'll run circles around you intellectually in person, too. It's just, uh, I'm not going to give you any more benefit. I realized you were so eager to put me on the channel because everything's going in the wrong direction for you, kind of like Bapa. Um, and things aren't looking so good. You know, saw the numbers on those Disney Resort channels. <laughs> By the way, Disney Resort, another thing for kids. It in person. What do you say about that? Yeah, so that's one voice message. I'm going to go to the next one. Um... By the way, guys, Um. so the way I did this was I set up the live stream. Then I realized to panel up with Mark, I gave a, I was like, I got, I, he knew StreamYard. So I just gave him a StreamYard link. But when you do that, it doesn't allow you to see the chat room to be able to like pop them up on the screen. But I am reading your chats. So I can't fucking read. So tell me more. Let's meet in person and film our exchange and hash it out and talk about how you're a lying sociopath. Right? Who lied? Who lied in this Here, equation? Donate to Wendy, by the way. Did you lie? Did it's you in there. go behind both me and Luana's backs and talk to one another or at least mine do you think that's a good look for you do you want to not be on camera do you want to remain anonymous i think all those things are true i think you don't want to meet me in person because then it wouldn't give you control over the situation or views and um you're too much of a giant pussy to say any of the things that you've said in this threat to my face aren't you oops uh -huh. Go and fucking scroll up. I'm gonna do a better job at knowing where the fuck I am. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Jimmer Nam, morbid. Afraid to confront Mark Harley. I know you're if you're live or not, I know you always join another panel, Jimmer Nam, and you want to get the attention and everything. And here you are. You have an opportunity to like be face to face with this guy through a screen where it's safe and you guys yeah. can hash it out maybe you could fix it who knows yeah who, let's let's be friends again jim and like you wanted to be before you started posting videos again yeah i'm sure uh i'm sure nothing she said is true about you i'm sure nothing she said is true about you i'm talking about I mean, more of my research about a guy who's been you know booted from like 12 different communities and uh exploits a mentally handicapped woman for views <laughs> let me let me figure out who the good person here is in this equation when you've already been outed as a pathological liar right cockroach handed right but who should i trust you or some girl who nailed you to the fucking wall with exactly who you are. Yeah, and there's two of them, by the way, two ex-girlfriends who, who both yeah. have the same experience with this motherfucker. Yeah, and I'm referring, I'm sorry, I'm referring to the one that he only met with a few times named, is your name Beck or something like that? Yeah, Beck. yeah, so they were together for three years, but it turns out they only met in person a few times, yeah. so, so which like, makes sense that's because that's like, over the internet is where he can manipulate the best. In person, yeah. not so much. The yeah, and and then it, he and wonders I, why these things end so quickly. I um I accused him of I'm like, dude, your ex girlfriend fucking show show me these photos of you. And then he started sending me a picture of this new. I'm like, huh? What are you talking about? He's like, no, she catfish me. She said, I'm like, I don't. What do you like? So it was very confusing because he didn't realize like who was talking to me and giving me this information. But it was like his ex ex and um anyway. Guy who joke in the YouTube community. Um, I mean. Or the guy who Half reads fish, by the way. Reddit comments. This is what he yeah. sent her. Goes because he can't He's way come better. up with his this own. This is what he looks like. Make content. Mm. There we go. 
he was calling me a joke. He's like, you're a joke in the YouTube community. <laughs> what I thought I was getting. No, that's funny. Cause that is, I mean, that's legit. Like he's the one who cat. So she went live by the way. And she showed like, the difference between like the top, like I'm looking legit. at the yeah and like yeah, she body. showed legit photos of like that were recent of her in a mirror like straight on and it's it's clearly her it's not yeah. like manipulated in any way these yeah. are like 20 year old photos he's right. 45 I mean, he's got to be at least 20 something here yeah yeah. he looks like a 20 something and i just posted a picture today of like me at like 29 i was like not gonna yeah lie. and now he's got I'm this wonky, wonky eye. eye look this eyeball here is fucking huge but yeah, I couldn't imagine like sending pic. Like I just posted one of my t look at my Instagram story right now. You'll see a, my first headshots at like in 2012. I'm like, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not like. I think I look good, but I'm like, bottom line, I just look different. You know what I mean? Like I don't look like the same fucking person. I mean, like look how fucking different that is. Jesus this Christ. is the creepiest fucking photo I've ever seen. Like look at this. This is fucking like when you have like a predator catcher video. This is what you see at the other end at the end of the video. Yeah, guys. And again, I don't afraid. normally honestly like I don't like. I have to be very self-conscious about this because as a big guy, as whatever, like I'm not the fucking high school bully going around being like, look at you, you fucking dork. But it's like this guy went on a live stream saying that I had breast implants that leak all over my wife when we fuck. It's so like, came on, you know, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, mocking my physical appearance or call me a dumb ape or a, a dump ape. I sent back shit emoji gorilla. Is that what do you guys, mean? Do guys even do that? They get breast and like men get breast implants. Um, I know they do ab oh, etching. I've heard yeah, of like, that. Like not in a, like like what idiot? When you were man. jiggling those things before. Yeah, you can't exactly. do that if there's implants in them. Yeah. Um. So it was just. I mean, what I don't get is, and I think a lot of this has to do with like pathological grandiosity, as you're well aware, makes it so that you think you're always ahead of your lie. You know, like you go. Oh, well, I can just tell this additional lie and make someone look bad. But it's like, you realize you just destroyed every other claim that might have even been true. You know what I mean? Like, but by saying yeah. something so outlandish with zero evidence, it, it portrays everything you've now said in a questionable light. And that's the one thing I, I like, and he's not even smart, but I know smart pathological liars where I'm like, you, if I catch you lying once about something insignificant, especially to make someone else look bad, because that's the pattern. It's not like you're going, I'm self-deprecating and exaggerating. It's always exaggerating to self-aggrandize or exaggerating to put someone else down or make the story better, which ultimately leads to attention for you. So it's like you can literally trust nothing out of the guy's mouth. Once he's going around saying my tits leak on like and he's saying that as if he has it's like, OK, did she play that in a text message? Like post the text message, post the recording, you know, like. What did she say? Like, it's just such a stupid it's the thing. Same that, shit as him telling me, oh, you ran to Canada. And then when I'm I'm like, okay, well, he said I ran to Canada because of this lawsuit that happened only a few years ago, like 2018, and I moved to Canada eight years ago. And it's like, oh, so what I had a time machine. I knew this fucking guy right. was gonna so you it's and then you realize you're defending this is a tactic that really stupid people who have nothing to go on use to argue and it's like i'm gonna make up just something ridiculous and then you look stupid defending yourself that's that's the tactic so it's like you know i heard jimmernam fucks uh stuffed animals and comes on them and then he sells them on ebay uh that's alongside his used funny. porno Actually, magazines that's what i heard and you know what there's actual evidence of it so right. yeah you said like you could look at it you sent me this you sent me the link to the ebay store i was like oh my god oh my god it's true he sells used plush dolls that he may yeah. or may not have jizzed on alongside vintage pornography that's now we're gonna we're gonna go through this again actually oh. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, stop screen share, present, share screen. Let's go over to here. Retro flux. Here we go. So he has this eBay store, and the primary items are look, Barbie tall Barbie, Barbie yeah. dolls. Mickey, oh look, whose hand is that in the yeah. photo? That's that's when the game of the creeps. So I was like, when it like describes it like 16 inch. I'm like, oh, like why do I feel like I'm buying a sex toy now? Or why do I feel like I'm looking at someone selling a sex toy? Because you had to put 16 inches there. It's like, is this a Mickey Mouse doll or a dildo that you're selling? Why is the hand in there? He's fingering uh Mickey. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally fingering Mickey. Yeah, he's fingering Mickey. 
and you could it's see the in thing. the um i don't know why the the actual thing is not updating when i'm clicking on stuff because now the page is different but he has so here. alongside those children's items what else does he have i wonder because like if that's a store for key you're selling stuff to kids that's great you know that's awesome like you just happen to be a disney fanatic and that's it you know most people who are into super into disney also like kind of they're just like innocent and they really like watch like pornography or anything like that right okay so now we can look at it live so here we go we got a mickey mouse anybody interested by the way mickey mouse yeah. exclusive authentic uh 16 inch plush doll 16 yep. inch that's about the size of a child right 16 yeah. inches you know a little kid and let's look at the uh the condition lots of wear and lots of love given to the doll have you ever heard of a I've, anyone refer to a used doll like this lots of wear and love I mean, given if, to if the doll to, if you wanted to persuade me to not buy something put pre-owned doll that's been used a lot why the yeah. fuck <laughs> I want to have a used fabric doll <laughs> from an adult to a child because who's buying this another like Right, it just gives you. That's what gave me the heebie-jeebies. That item right there, I was like, "Oh my when god!" When I read this, I think of a, a man who is fucking the dolls, like rubbing it against himself. Right. Lots you of love mean, given to it. Just, just so, so you know, it was taken you care of. Doll. What? Here's his hand, by the way. There's his hand tattoo it's right here. Like, why, and also, if you're holding, like, wouldn't you just put it next to some sim? Like, put it next to a ruler. Put it next yeah, to. Who a wants ruler. to see your fucking filthy hands, finger fucking Mickey in the? Like, literally, you could have been so many other things to show the size of that that doll. Please, please, Jimbernam, please don't fuck me, please. You, know, you put a picture of your hand in the genital region of Mickey Mouse to sell it to a kid. Yeah. Please, someone rescue me for seven ninety nine. Help! I'm being held here. I know the shipping is expensive. It's ten dollars. It'll save Please. a life. I'm literally being molested every night. And then I'm we confused. come back here. We go back to the the actual like items and stuff. And then you'll see he's got yeah this like, stuff in them like, porn magazines. Oh, this right. one's good. I love this one. This one was one of my favorites. Um, let's see here. So the description on this one was lots of wear again, Ugh. Um, but Ugh. it had a hole. There's a hole in the eye. Ugh. Here, look. Ugh. Faded uh, <laughs> prints, stains and shirt, and Ugh. lots of wear. So Ugh. he's got a stain. And look, look, he goes, he shows you where he came on it. Look. He it tells is, you, he's like, this is where I came. If, if this was an autistic guy just being like, <laughs> I want to show you where the stain is so you know what you're getting. It's like if it was in the sake of like, if this is a totally different person, this is where I would be different. He's showing you where he came on a plush doll in order <laughs> to have this psychological, like he can trick a kid into buying it and know that like some young kid is touching his cum stain on a, on a plush doll. Like that's actually what I believe is going on in his head as an adult who's attracted to children. Let's see what else. I think he has like his ex-girlfriend's shoes that he stole. Here we go. Women's New Balance. Bex, we're going to get these back for you. $18.99. You know I think he, he stole these from the... Uh, are these yours, Beck? <laughs> I think he stole these. We're going to get these back from you. And then, and then, well, you know, it's that's kind of creepy and weird. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, what else is in here? You know, yeah, it's just like, normal toys. Shoes. It's clearly aimed at children I, or maybe, okay, collectors, but... Even that's right. weird, but because even if you get into the store, it's like if you're a kid and you go into the store and you're searching, oh, maybe there's some interesting stuff that I want here because it's all kid, 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 kid. And so, you know, holy shit, Mark. Wait a minute. What? What do you see? He, I think he deleted all the porno mags. <laughs> he did. Wait. He deleted them all. You oh, said you scoundrel. Time. But oh, God, guess what I have? Oh, I think I have a yeah. screenshot. Oopsies. Yeah, you said when you sent me this link, I swear on my dead father, I opened it up and saw a plush doll, that Mickey plush doll, and vintage right porn. Was vintage 1970s Playboy magazines. Actually, it's too late because on uh, his ex girlfriend's stream, but it's all on there because we covered it then too, so you can see yeah, it there. It was, yeah. But yeah, this whole it's fourth like page, and he and he was all porn. This was weird because he once he was publicly accused of this, 
he made sure to scrub any evidence actually of it. that's weirder to right. keep it on there would have been like it, nothing's weird like, but to go and like, remove it is more damning correct the fact that you can acknowledge that what you did uh, yeah why did you uh, remove it jim renam is by the way I, I thought of the term this is a term you know this word cap a child attracted person so we didn't you don't need to say pedophile you oh wait wait we don't even need that look right here here's one of his feedbacks vintage playboy magazine december uh -huh. oj simpson <laughs> oh oj simpson interview yeah, yeah i thought it was like user oj simpson mm -hmm. um but just a weird combination of things right it's oddly what do you like who's giving you these 1970s playboys in the first place i mean i assume he was He's, he's finding the shit in dumpsters or i heard he's got some sort yeah. of like reseller he's like one of these drop shipper guys you know the because he's got the i know when he was filming his girlfriend like crying in his apartment and he thought it was like this big own he didn't realize he was showing that he lives in like a one-bedroom apartment carpet everywhere in tustin, and then the way, nobody in la like like tustin is in la you know? Yeah, right in the right in his kitchen where he's filming the the one the third video where he's filming the police no. I had no clue at this point, and I was my intuition just guessing on his uh, counter on the kitchen was like the thing with the tape where you the tape roller and all this like supplies, and I'm like, this guy's a drop shipper, and I was fucking right. I was yeah. right. You nailed it, dude. You take some garbage that? shit from like Alibaba, you fucking like upsell yep. it to people and pretend that it's your sure. product, and you carry and, no inventory. Yeah. But then he's got all weird shit like clothes. That he's reselling and he goes to like baby he was going to like a baby store baby gap i would buy that he-man though i gotta be honest i would buy that fucking he-man doll i remember yeah, yeah. my mom so some I of this stuff could be collector items yeah but. i had this whole collection of he-man dolls when i was a kid this and my mom like sold it at a grocery store. you don't use it anymore i'm like you fucking sold my he-mans like that's that's my childhood yeah my older brother's like was like he-man obsessed yeah and you that know this thing yeah and same here i think i think he-man gave a generation of men body to ninja turtles this i also i was super ninja, ninja turtles as well and those og fucking action figures i'd actually like i i used to play with he-mans and ninja turtles growing up those that was my shit. and then i read a story recently about how he-man basically went like the downfall of he-man was trying to shift the genre over to she-ra like like to hand the reins off to be like and she is the star now but it's like you're selling a boy that was a girl character yeah, hell no the hell universe no. So what are you selling it like as a Barbie doll now? Like it, it became, it was like one of the first examples of like go woke, go broke. Cause they're like, we'll make it girl power. And it's like, it doesn't work though. Cause he is in the boys section and you're selling like a, a girl doll lead to a bunch of guys. Like I liked He-Man cause he was fucking jacked. I was like, yeah, dude, I want to ride a tiger. You know, <laughs> like that was, He-Man was the fucking coolest thing I'd ever seen. Um, but it was the ultimate, like, I love these documentaries about like the start of Nintendo and Super Mario's and all this stuff that, I, that you can find on YouTube. And one of them happened to be like he, how He-Man was one of these first like action figure um, merchandise collaborations where it's like we're making this cartoon that's so retarded, but it's just to sell toys to kids. You know, and when he, you're he, like yeah. He changed this one too. So I swear, this one, this Pirates of the Caribbean one, originally said it had a, a hole next to the left eye. Yeah, what, he was fuck, he was skull fucking this thing and now he changed it now he just put lots of wear and use condition no love given or anything and by the way normally i wouldn't even joke like if we were just doing this to some random dude like who like called me you know ugly online it's like no 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 i'm not gonna like imply that this dude like fucks child dolls but like hook me up to a lie detector test i believe what i'm saying i believe that jim Renam put his dick in the hole next to the eye of this fucking plush doll I agree. And nobody disprove it, Jim Renam. If we're telling a lie, disprove it. I mean, I will, that's what everyone else has to do, right? To, to, you know, because again, the, the hole doesn't need to be that big, apparently, according to his ex girlfriend, too. So, um, it's true. She said she doesn't <laughs> mind, but she was like, Look, I don't care. I'm not out to dick shame, but like, I traced it one time. Like, for, like I'm that's <laughs> fucking really funny nice that he removed all those magazines. Why'd yeah. you do that, Jim Renam? Why? Well, it's like um, I re I recently read about guilty. Like, yeah, Tom Segura like got like a TV sh like it's it's insinuated that he got like a pilot with Netflix and like it's like oh all of a sudden like this angry rant to like a TSA agent and from October of this year it's all been scrubbed from Twitter <laughs> like all your shit. We're like I say whatever the fuck I want, whatever I want. It's like except when you get a major network deal 
and somebody says, you want the fucking TV show and the big time bucks? You want that Netflix money? Maybe take some shit down, you know? That's the same with Jim Renan, but on a much smaller scale, but it's like, hey, uh, I'm the king of fucking shock jock radio live streaming, which he, that's a, he, that's a quote from him, right? He goes, I'm, I'm the king of all broadcasts. You know, I'm, I'm the greatest live streamer of all time. He says to 67 people. Um, you know what? Wait, you know what's funny? Because in the intro, I show this. He's been saying this forever. There's this whole point where he was like claiming I learned everything. I was jealous yeah. of him. And it's so funny it because it shows him. Yeah. In 2018, he had six viewers and he was calling himself the greatest of all time still and bragging so he, about yeah. six people. It's always bizarre to me where it's like, where did you develop this grandiosity? Was it like from a narcissistic injury in, in your childhood or like, you know, because some people become arrogant because they have a little success and it's like, you just you're like, well, OK, you're like, a, you know, you're a 25 year old fucking who got rich off crypto. Like, I get you being an arrogant dickhead because at least you have 10 million bucks or something like that. But it's like, where does a guy like this develop that sense of grandiosity from? I wonder. Well, that's the other thing I, I well i think it's just all insecurity he wants to build yeah. this fantasy life like he says to me like yeah i make thirty thousand on you a uh, month on youtube on a bad month and I then we find it. out in the yeah he's he's on government assistance and i'm not just saying that the proof is there go in the intro and i could show you again yeah, he, he accidentally was streaming and he has it bookmarked it ain't even like a thing he visited it's bookmarked so he yeah. he has it there permanently he's yeah. collecting uh california benefits yeah, which again, which is a fr if he's making any money, he's he's committing right. fraud so either, too. You're poor or you're committing fraud. So which is it? You know what I mean? Either one's a bad look. I would guess that he's just poor um, and does legitimately qualify for government assistance because, as you proved, I, I watched a, a clip because you guys, you and some of the guys we've been talking to, have been inundating me with clips. Uh, I tried to mostly catch up on, but one I saw was him talking to Unique. And Unique, it was actually funny because Unique was like so disinterested in it. And like uh, Jim Renan was trying so hard to provoke Unique. And Unique was like, what's up? Yeah, huh? What are you talking about? Like, how much? And he's like, how much have you ever? He uses that, doesn't use the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the king of six people. <laughs> yeah. 2018, oh by the way. 2018. Oh yeah. 2018. He was just killing him. He's been killing it, huh? Um, right so he's always but, had this fucking delusion yeah unique you know and he's the guy who had some, he he he's at the center of a controversy with with brendan schaub was a whole different you know side path but he like brendan schaub claims that he's suing this guy for defamation it's actually just for copyright like this is like one of the big things that kind of destroyed brendan schaub's career but um i think Unique's kind of funny actually like how un, in this clip specifically how yeah. unbothered he is by it because he's like I think you, you could say a lot of things about Unique, right? Originally Say and Z, by the way. Yeah, he started I don't think, as that. I don't think he lies about how much money he makes. Like, I don't think he's out there. No, going. he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. Like, he's, he's, like, yeah. His whole, his whole like, uh, stream from when I was watching him, I haven't yeah. seen him in a while, though, but it would be the same thing every night. It would be, he'd start out very coherent, then about 10 minutes, 15 minutes in, yeah, he starts to slur his speech yeah. until he's literally just drooling and going yeah into the microphone he takes, and i'm like is he a great actor or is that seriously always happening on cue every time i, I tuned in one time and, and screen recorded him like drooling at the mic oh i yeah like, i've got it yeah, i've got so it too like, somewhere. Like, it's just like this happened once it was like i happened to click this light i'm it's like one of my oh, I'm watching this guy like <laughs> like we were joking about i'm like if, if somebody died on a live stream how long would it take for like <laughs> i passed out from drugs on a live stream go viral you showed me um yeah exactly it's like it, you wouldn't like <laughs> And then in fairness happened. i no, have yeah. to be fair though because i made this comparison i like unique more way more than right. jim renam yeah. but yeah. the way they do things is they're the same person as far as content like they do the so same thing happened. yeah but i will say this clip chimping with minimal commentary correct he 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 leeches off the subreddit but he at least goes he goes i think he hits record and just kind of gives a summary he's like all right so this is what happened Jim Renam literally, and I didn't realize it at first because I was listening to some of these videos. I'm like, oh, that shit's pretty funny. And then I was like, wait a second. Oh, he's literally just reading the comments. And I think at some point he started crediting. He goes, you know, like Toe Rogan says this or whatever. You know, so he'd say the username because I think he was probably like bullied into that with like, yo, dude, like someone's going to report you if you keep doing this. And so they like, 
He probably like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge that I'm that I'm reading the comment section of a read you, but he didn't do that before. He used to just act as if he wrote the script. So I was like, man, that's impressive that he like came up with all these jokes. But what he does is look in the biggest subreddit in subreddit in podcasting, fucking the TFAK subreddit, and just read the funniest jokes. There's a, there's a lot of clever people in the subreddit. You know, you can you can. It's hard to define in any one category. There's a lot of guys who have come after me, but there's also a lot of cool people. There's a lot of people who make really funny content. It's this huge mixed bag. But if you tell 150,000 people, write the funniest joke you can to this content that Brendan Schaub provides, you're going to get some fucking zingers. And he made a living just reading the funniest comments. The most low effort content you can make, right? Yeah. And uh, I remember him telling, one of the things that always got under my skin when Luana and I started talking and he was like, yeah, Mark just doesn't have what it takes like to make it because he doesn't work hard enough. Like said something about my work ethic. I was like, oh, interesting. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, this is, so did he say that on a stream or something too? Or like, but he, but he, he's at least said it privately to Luana. That is something they talked about where like, she was like, oh yeah. He said like, you don't have what it takes to be a YouTuber. I'm like, first of all, like I, like, I'm already working on my, like one step at a time. Like I'm going to start making more long form content for my YouTube. But it was like, I didn't know, I don't know what I wanted to do with the YouTube at that point yet. So it was like, sorry, yes, I don't have a grift like this guy who's been fucking, you know, trying to be a broadcaster for 15 years and landed on reading TVAK comments. Yes, I quite, I don't have it nailed down to a science like this guy, but, um, you know. No, I have a clip where he basically talks about the origins of his whole thing. It was like, he's, ta he's whining that, him making original content wasn't making him any money. And then he says, yeah, no, well, I, so I learned that the basic way to do it on YouTube is you got to find things that are trending. You got to get the information out there first. And basically hinting at that he's just going to go and take something that's trending, get the yeah. information that other people came up with, and yeah. utilize it to create videos. So he's just going yeah. to the Reddit and he sees the top voted funniest comments and he just reads them verbatim. And now, after he's been called out, now he's saying, oh, these are comments that are from the Reddit, like giving credit, but, but not, not names. Perfect. He's not giving names. He just says it's from the Reddit. That's all he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he, so first, we're making a difference in his yeah. life. <laughs> Minor yeah. differences. He took the Playboys down and now he's not trying to talk to exactly. kids as far as we know and uh yeah, now guy. he's giving okay. some credit good job pull it into admitting at least what he's doing but um now honestly honest question what do you think ethically because i this is a conversation i have a lot with myself about kind of like just as a as a you know because you're an og broadcaster and i know a little bit about your history from what you've told me and i think it might be interesting for for viewers to know too because you're someone who stepped away from the game for a while but you're by no means a novice at content creation in fact you know some of the things you've told me and, and can verify because one thing i will say about you any claim that you've made so far to me that seems even like one percent outlandish maybe to be like oh yeah this guy like was sued in this year and then you like immediately have sent me court documents like anything you've ever said to me that seems like a claim that would make you look good or like maybe a person could have a reason to lie about you've immediately backed up right so oh, you yeah. know I, I would, no exaggerations. No right. exaggerations. Like, like you and I kind of operate from the same place. It's like I don't need to exaggerate because that would kill everything that you know I had built up as far as talking. I can't talk about myself if I exaggerate about myself. But um, you initially met Jim and Am because you had a you broadcasted live to like thirty thousand people at once apparently back in like the late two thousand. So, yeah. So uh, the shortest synopsis I can give. So it kind of makes me a hypocrite. I'm going to fully admit that in my, the beginning is where yeah. I started. And this is when I was super young. So this is a long guy. This is back in two, the early 2000s, right? Yeah. Um, I started a Howard Stern website because I was like a super fan of Howard Stern. I used to work construction at uh, the 30... seven, I think. I fucking forget how old I am, honestly. It's weird. You know, back when this happened. Um. So wait, I just turned yeah i just turned 37 uh last technically last year so you so, were in 20 let me see 37 2023 sorry i'm doing math i'm not uh asian hold on 2023 <laughs> minus 2000 let's say it was like seven that's 16 years ago minus 16 you're 21 uh, 37 minus 16 yeah 21 
So about 21 years old and I started like a, uh, I was doing like construction work where I was like a blue glazier it's called. Um, blue collar guy here. Yeah, blue collar guy. Yeah, and people wouldn't believe it, but I was, uh, I'd carry like 200 uh, pound sheets of glass. Yeah. Because the way you do it, you have like a method of carrying it that you're not yeah. bearing the weight. And um, we drove most of the day in like New York and New York City and we'd be in a van all day. And yeah. so I'd listen to Howard Stern from like 6 a.m. Because these are long ass days. Yeah. Like a normal week was always overtime. So it was like 60 hours a week. Yeah. So Howard in the morning, Bubba the Love Sponge to get us through the afternoon. And by the time Howard was relooping, the replay was coming on. We were just about done with the day and we'd be going home. So that was my life every single day. And that got me through work days. And so yeah. then at one point I had an idea, hey, I should like make a community because um, I saw some torrents, torrent files of people like sharing Stern content. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can do this. So I bought like a, you know, the serious radios that were like the indoor versions. Mm -hmm. You know, they had ones on the car with the magnet or whatever, but then they would sell ones you could put in your house. So yeah. I had, it was called the stiletto and, uh, I put it up and I hooked it up into my computer and I started recording the shows for my brother initially. Cause he wanted to hear them yeah. like the old ones. Cause there was no way to go back in the archives once the show yeah. aired. That's so funny. Uh, I was sending them to him and then long story short, it turned into me building this, uh, giant like message board where people could share the files and talk about the show. Like it was yeah. like Stern fan network, but with piracy. But I'm going to say words. that doesn't make you a hypocrite. That makes you somebody who had a somewhat original idea to create a community based on a common interest that's sincere. Because at the end of the day, what I've noticed about Jim Renam is he doesn't give a fuck about any of the things that he's doing. Like he doesn't care about Brendan Schaub or TFAK K or the true crime or even Disney outside of putting his dick in plush dolls. He just wants to make money off things that he thinks are trending and popular, right? Yeah. So you actually had an interest in something. And especially like, I've also worked a lot of shitty, like manual labor jobs in my early, you get out of college, like, I don't know what the fuck I want to do yet. All my friends are going to fucking, law school and medical school and i'm trying to figure it out you know where i fit in entertainment maybe and outside of the teaching that i've done and i've also done like setting up fucking red carpet premieres like with like a crew of like mexican laborers you know in la it's like i've done crazy overnight shit and all this stuff so i relate to that it's like you know how you fucking get through those shitty ass manual labor packing boxes and shit all day like you fucking you put the radio in um get yeah. the head in and listen to something man so that really because it it like those things saved your life and i think every like blue collar worker it's like you can get through the day it, it, as long as you get your favorite podcasts in and shit like that, like the real lifesavers and truck drivers and people like that. That's why I was like, I've met so many people like that who are like, oh, I became a fan of this through like, like this helps me get through the day. So it's like, it's such a cool thing to hear. You know what I mean? And like when people take interest of like, you help me get through my shitty ass job and then I'm in turn sharing this. I don't know. There's something like organic, cool, and very much the opposite of what I perceive Jim Renan to be doing. To, well, to it was also a way to provide because Howard's website was garbage. And I always was telling people that he should have made a website where you could sign up, pay a monthly fee, whatever it is, and access the whole archive of his career, like back to the yeah. 80s. So that's yeah. what we had on there. We had like preserved and organized and had like the synopsis and the set yeah. list of every show from like yeah, yeah, the 1980s yeah. to the current show posting the daily shows and then i had like uh it was called shoutcast and it was like this uh thing where you could stream live audio to the internet you ran your own server to to broadcast on the internet and it started out as where i was broadcasting the live howard 100 satellite radio feed so people who couldn't get it could listen because he had fans in Australia and Germany and yeah. all those places. And the only place that had Howard was America and, and Canada didn't even get it till a while later. That's so wild. essentially it was giving him more viewers, honestly, because no, people who weren't going to pay anyway and people who couldn't even if they wanted to in other countries. No, I mean, that's so cool. Like, for example, like, you know, um, Christopher Lilly, the Australian comedian, like I remember like my Australian friend putting me onto this. I'm like, I would have never fucking heard about this guy who made Summer Heights High, his original Australian series with We Can Be Heroes. He plays all these different characters in a fake Australian of the Year award competition. Um, he's made all these incredible edgy series, um, but I would have, it's, had somebody not fucking like sent me a DVD and a fucking Australian DVD player, you know what I mean? It's like, I never would have been had access to this shit. Um, so similar to what I'm hearing from you, it's like there are people around the world who, who wouldn't have access to the to a thing they wanted, 
without you figuring out how to do. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and so I had those those streams up where I was showing the uh, playing the Howard show, and then after the show would end, it started with me like going, "Hey, I can actually just turn my mic on, and after the Howard Stern show ends, I can jump on and start talking." And it yeah. sort of became the first kind of wrap up show of the Stern show. So yeah. I would do my own wrap up show to the people who were on my website, and I would just like talk to them, like, "Hey, that was a good episode," and like kind of recap it and shoot the shit. Yeah. And I was like, "Hey, I kind of like doing this." Fast forward, this is like in 2009, 2010. I still, I'm still doing that. So that's when I started, and then I started Pod Trash, where I was like, "I want to do something original. I want to make my own content and have that same feeling where I can bring a community together." based on what I'm doing and what I'm saying, not taking Howard Stern content, right? And yeah. uh, so I had a huge launch pad because I already had like all these people from the Stern site. Now I had a huge head start to start uh, Pod Trash, which was the first radio network. And that started in about 2014. And this is what just makes me so angry because you're like, it's so stupid. All the people who know me know it's so dumb that I'm defending this, but like, Jim Renam's claims that I learned from him and I wanted to be him. And it's like, he didn't show up until like 2018. This is like four years later. Right, he, and I, and I and saw he's claiming that, I learned from him. I didn't even know him. And he tried to be a part of what I was doing. That's yeah, so that, so that was my point. Date him as a broadcaster. Why lie? Almost a decade. And, um, he, and I saw this, this combat that happened because you, you basically stepped away from all this for many years, it sounds like. And then you got word that he was talking shit about you or making grandiose lies uh, about you learning from him so it's like he sort of summoned the devil right um he said fucking candy man's name three times in the mirror and your ass appeared and fucking ate him alive in this fucking video jesus christ and his he was using every single tactic i've ever seen by a manipulative narcissist oh there we go there we go someone sent that to me just to verify you know we're not yeah. making it up here we go okay. here's the playboy so he down he removed it. Where yeah, probably just probably just sold, right? Probably just been sitting there for months at a dollar ninety nine. What the no, because there's multiples. I'm only showing one of the pictures. Right. He sent yeah, me this yeah. guy sent me three. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe somebody snapped up all the Playboys at once. Yeah, they were oh, like, yeah. "Damn, I really need these vintage two dollar Playboys from Jimmer Nam store." <laughs> at that Boy, point, I guess is that, so how is that even worth it? Is that worth it for you to get off your couch and like even go to the mailbox for two bucks? Because that's like something I wouldn't want to do. For two dollars you know <laughs> like I go, like something has to, there has to be something else at play i go because this isn't a profitable endeavor you can't go get me to check the mail for two bucks you can go get me to check the mail because i just you know got some shit off the dark web but if we're talking to make two dollars no i'm good dude <laughs> like <laughs> i'll let someone else do that um so i have to think either he's like well he is crazy broke but also he probably came in these magazines and then has a psychological as many like you know who else has that in common right you find out a lot of times um like serial killer rapists like have this power dynamic thing where it's like it's about the power and control for them and doing these sick things you know with their little micro penis while they hold a you know gun to a girl's head or whatever it's always this pattern right and i'm like why do why do i get similar vibes from this like this psychological you know sadistic kind of behavior like ah, i came in these fucking vintage playboys and sold them to somebody because <laughs> like two by the way yeah. here's a proof that jimmer nam was directly texted the link to this panel and he knows oh, he hasn't shown up and oh. he has not shown up yet he That's, has not shown up this you know, is it, so hold on yeah. this you are such a fucking pussy jimmer nam you called me out after seven years. I don't know this guy, by the way. You called me. You remember me seven years later. And what did I do? I came up on your panel on fucking camera and I talked to you directly. You're this fucking Bro. afraid to Bro, just I like get on here and just just fucking talk to the guy. Maybe you'll become friends at the end of it. Yeah, no, maybe I'm, you can I'm get like, maybe you can beat him verbally, whatever you think you yeah, can do. You're I'm, smarter. This is, this is Show us. Man. Fucking if, show us. You know, you'll be a good referee. Like if you if you see, you, you're not going to come to my defense, right? You're not going like, to. No, I'm not going to be a fucking bitch. Like I'm not. Or I go. Yeah, this is my. If he's pit owning me. Like if he's owning, we'll, we'll, we'll you because I. One of the things I noticed when he was live streaming with you. I'm not going to lower your mic, you little right, bitch. You're not going to play any tricks. Make me you, sound like shit. I'm yeah, going to give you a fair square shot to yeah. come at him and give it your best yeah. shot. Yeah, whatever you want. And also, 
I'll let him finish all of his sentences too, because one of the things that's very annoying that narcissistic uh, types will use, it's a manipulation tactic to frustrate their interlocuture, uh, is to talk over that person, right? So he wouldn't let you finish a sentence until he had to pee, and then he immediately comes back after 90 seconds and goes, everything you just said is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. Because he that. thought, he thought he's like, oh, this, because that's what he's used to doing is like, yeah. oh, I could just walk away and be like, well, the floor is yours and watch you choke. And yeah. like, this is what I and fucking yeah, do. Yeah. I could he sit here for 20 hours. Him and body yeah. him, and yeah. body him, and body him. It was You like, heard him running back. He's like, no, no, no. He's, he's you just he's lied to my right. audience. Yeah. Everything you said was a lie. He was, he's so bad at debate. And I always like, you know, this is a politically neutral statement. I think there are great debaters like Noam Chomsky in his prime. Did you ever see Noam Chomsky against, um, oh God, the name's escaping me right now, but there's this, this famous debate um, where it's the guy who used to talk like this, uh, Gore versus, uh, I know I'm, I'm choking on the fucking name, um, Vidal, it was Gore Vidal versus who was his famous, um, like Talks right out of the side of his mouth, you mean? Like, Yes, and it's it's this famous black and white clip of like Noam Chomsky just eating this dude's fucking lunch. That's one like where I go Chomsky in its prime was a fucking masterful debater. Um, and I want to say it's William something, but he's like he sort of talked in this twentieth century mid Atlantic accent, you know, to make it sound pompous. Even though he's really from the south, but he sort of talks like this to make it seem like it's an intellectual. Um, and Chomsky was it was like this uh, like. He was like correcting my, he's like, oh, I think you're confused. Like you, you actually that happened in this year. Like Chomsky was so mentally on top of it and knew every single thing. Like he was trying to be tricked by this guy. Right. Um, but he knew we're all like, like Ch you can't fool Chomsky as far as like timelines or history. So it was like watching this guy get outwitted in real time was reminiscent. And I give that same credit to like, I remember Ben Shapiro came on Bill Maher and Bill Maher thought he was going to like own him. I'm like, oh bro, Ben Shapiro just ate you alive, dude. Like, cause that's the guy who's like, may, some of what he says is maybe disingenuous, but he knows how to debate. You know what I mean? Like, and he has good tactics. There's a synthesis there somewhere. Some people like Hitchens or Sam Harris, or, you know, even Jordan Peterson, like people try to, you know, catch Jordan Peterson, like on these gotcha things. And he eats some of these journals alive. It's like, bro, like you brought a fucking squirt gun to a knife fight. Like this, you just got fucking, you just got sliced open. So my impression after watching you stream yeah, it, and him being really F you, about it. you work, you what does he say? F you, you woke moralists. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's got a funny voice, but right, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, he's um, different though. Like, I know like older Jordan Peterson is way different than newer one. Yeah. I think he had kind of like a that whole episode with the benzo addiction, and then he kind of went to like a rehab and they tried to get I'm him off of it. You know what I'll, he I'll almost I'll died from it. drinking apple cider. Because his, yeah, his, his uh, daughter got him on this crazy meat carnivore diet. Remember that? Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying this is a Jordan Peterson fanboy. What I am saying is, number one, he knows his shit about I'm psychology. Indifferent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm of course. Like, I go like, he has, like, he I, has I, the I, knowledge. I was fascinated by him because I noticed my left-wing friends were telling me he was like basically like a crypto-Nazi. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking I'm like, send me the quote where you think. He's like, you can see where he's signaling anti-Semitism here. I'm like, I don't really perceive that from what you're saying. Like, could is there something I'm missing? And they're like, you don't get it. Like, that was like one of my first encounters where I'm like, I feel like you're you you're going like me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Like, what is wrong with Jordan Peterson where you can't debate him with logic? You're automatically censoring him because a lot of the stuff he says, especially as far as like his psychological insights, he is truly a master of that field. When you get into politics, I think he makes some mistakes. He's been criticized by people for making like a lobster analogy that's like biologically inaccurate. He's like hierarchy, you know, right? It happens at the level of the crustacean and the mammals do that. And it's like, you know, bio, it's like, okay, outside of your area of expertise, you're not good. However, I've seen the man change his mind in real time. Do you remember there, that, uh, who's the Australian comedian named Jim something? He was on his show. He had a Comedy Central show and he had this gotcha moment with, with Jordan Peterson where he's trying to explain to him like something about um, that controversy about the bakeries, like where it's like the gay bakery shop, or like this gay couple, like you know, it turns out they're kind of like kind of, they like sought it out. Was that? Was it the one where they refused to make them the cake or something? Yes. Yeah, and the I actually changed my mind about that. First. I'm like, I'm like, it's refusing to sell a pre-made cake to somebody is one thing, but if you're like, I'm not gonna make you like, you know, it's like, hey, draw me a dildo like squirting on butt cheeks. Yeah, it's like, it's ah, a private yeah. business. Yeah. This so I was like, business. actually. But I, I was initially on the side of like, yeah, like that's 
homophobic. And then you're like, but wait, the guys like sought this guy out specifically to like in order to kind of like make this lawsuit. The, the whole thing kind of unraveled for me. And I'm like, I got to admit, like, this is kind of BS. And uh, but it was he was talking about something with regards to that on that that gym guy again, the Aussie comedian whose whose last name I'm failing to remember right now. But the guy made like kind of a gotcha point, and Jordan's like, Yeah, that might be true. I never thought about it that way. And I was like, Oh my god, did I just witness a, a guy like change his mind in real life? Like that's because you never fucking see that. You know? No, that is yeah, that's legit. That is very rare. There is not I don't know, 99.9% .9 of the time when you're in an argument with someone or debating with them, yeah. there is, I've never seen someone go, ah, oh, you're actually right. I'm going to absorb that information you just told me and I'm going to change yeah. my thoughts on it. No, everyone sticks to their beliefs and they're just like to the ground, even if they're wrong, confirmation bias. Right. No one it, ever it admits takes, when they're wrong. It takes so much sort of like self-awareness. And I'm not saying he's always like this. I'm just saying, that's one of the very few examples I can think of. And I've listened to multiple hours of him and Sam Harris, for example, their first two podcasts together. I used to be a more avid Sam Harris listener. I still like a lot of what he says, but I do think he kind of has that like Trump derangement syndrome is not always appropriate to say to people, but I do think like he's, he's kind of had a little bit of audience capture. I used to really like his intellectual stuff, but he, he got bogged down discussing the definition of truth with Jordan Peterson on their, on their first podcast together for like two hours. It was like, Oh my God, like guys, like <laughs> you can't, but you do need to hash that out because like, if we're gonna talk about whether or not God is true or religion is true, it's like, first we have to define true, you know? So, but I, I appreciate stuff like that, but it might bore other people to tears. Um, but I think Jordan Peterson, if anything, he's a very, he can be a very polite conversationalist. The reason that it could go on that long and there's no insults or whatever where you can see him like escalate when, when one of these girls tries to do like a gotcha, like, isn't it true that you're a misogynist? Isn't it true that you want women to have no rights? He's like, well, I don't think that's quite the case. You know, he'll, but he'll snap at them and sort of like he'll own them, not even in a mean way, but he'll go, you're absolutely wrong about that. You couldn't be further from the truth. You know, he'll do it in a polite Canadian way, but like I've seen him like intellectually snap some women in half and he's, like, I guess I don't have anything to say to that. Like, have you seen that moment, you know, what I'm talking about where it's like, some uh, British woman who interviews him, I believe, and she, he he literally leaves her speechless. Like he breaks her point in half, and she's like, uh, "Well, I I I, I guess," I, 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 and she couldn't admit, like, "I'm just wrong." She had to be like, "I well, I'm I'm not quite sure what to say." It's like, eh, eh, short circuit. So I got to give him that. And to me, I just set that up because I feel like you're the kind of guy who, like, as you're presenting everything to me, you're like evidence, 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 evidence. And you're very careful to be like, okay, we made this claim. Look, there's not, that's just speculation. This is just a joke, whatever. You're very careful to clarify all these things. And listening to Jimmerman discuss you, it was like, lie, 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 lie. Like he was talking over you while lying, while interrupting you, while changing the subject, while diverting, while deflecting, like using every bad faith debate tactic in the book that I've ever witnessed in one I watched it at double speed over the course of an hour, but it was like, you ate this fucking dude's lunch. And I hope somebody can, we can link to that because it's really like, if yeah, you're the, up, the funny part is the girl that posted, the girl yeah. who posted that clip is kind of a weirdo that was uh, being kind of negative towards his ex-girlfriend and supportive of morbid Jimmernam, TFAC, yeah. whatever you want to call him. But stupid. in fairness, yeah. she clipped the, the whole thing in a 2x speed. So I appreciate that. And she didn't edit it or manipulate it. So I'm yeah. happy. She, yeah, that I'm video sorry. is cool. cool. The rest of them, I don't know what the hell. Let me read some of the chats because I normally I can put, pull them up at the bottom, yeah, but because it. of the method I did this, so just seeing showing here, I have the chat open. I've been reading them all, guys. I'm just uh, um, Germanicus says Jordan Peterson's a good dude. I dig I dig his plaid suits. Uh, um, inquisitive archivist says Jimmer probably crying into his crusty pillow right now. Yeah. He's currently not live anymore, by the way. So he has no Ooh, excuse not even to be good. on. You know what he kept saying to me? He was like, I know you've got nothing going on. When I was at the gym, I was actually like on the phone with Chappelle Lacey on my way to the gym. He's leaving voicemails on my phone going, I know you've got nothing to do. And I'm like, <laughs> right, right. I'm about to hit chest. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, and then he's calling his ex-girlfriend, leaving voicemails too. Like he was saying, I have weird. a new beautiful girlfriend, by the way. And he's like, spending yeah. time calling his ex-girlfriend go i'm gonna let you read some of these chats yeah. but also, like, i have um multiple uh 
like voicemails that I just thought were fucking hilarious. Yeah, we could play that out. I got some here. Staticomatic says Jesse Lee Peterson is the greatest political pundit. Two Master says amazing. Yeah. That's Jesse Lee Peterson, my Alpha, friend. Alpha Beta. Yeah, not beta. Jordan Peterson. That's the other Peterson. I like him too, Jordan Lee Peterson. Yeah, Beta. Beta. Mr. Kister says not being to change your perspective is a sign of pure ignorance. Uh, Laura Lee says um, using his tears for lube. Yes. <laughs> Arbor fan, Dr. Peterson and Shapiro are really sharp debaters. Yeah. I also, I don't know if you guys know that guy Destiny. He's like a, he used oh, to be a dude, Twitch streamer and he's on like, uh, yeah. YouTube. I've seen him eat some fucking people's lunch that came in. This one guy, I remember it was like, his name's he's like very Saint good. something, but the guy A lot can, of people don't like him, but he's good. Oh, I think he's great. And and I think he's willing to like, because he'll go into these spaces where like, I pay attention to like the male self-help red pill community a lot, but a lot of it's like, you're like Andrew Tate, his whole business model is pimping out whoever the fuck will listen to him. And it is a great job in it. It's like he's he's a fantastic manipulator. And also oh, I got a video on Andrew Tate coming, yeah, by the way. He's he's a fantastic That's one of my next ones. Like he's also a pathological liar. He lied about like being a chess champion as a kid. I'm like, once you get caught with that, I know everything coming out of your mouth is bullshit because he's the one bringing it up. He's like, I was running test chess tournaments at the age of 12. And then someone was like, That's interesting. It says you placed 11th here, was the highest you ever did at this age. And there's no tournament you ever won. And you lied about the, the level that your dad was at. You said he was some a grandmaster. But he's like, I don't know the intricacies of chess, but it was like, it's like saying you're an NCAA champion swimmer. It's like, well, you were good. Like you got like 20th in the country, which is awesome, but you're not a champion. Uh, I can't read what that says. Actually. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be uh, readable. Someone said, uh, Destiny is a cuck, sorry to say. Well, yeah, so he re he it's recently got divorced. Or not he's a cuck. He has an open relationship with his I wife know, and all that. But that's that's like a red pill thing to say. It's like he doesn't like being a cuck is a specific thing where that no, he, that's like he's humiliated. Yeah, he, both he's are consenting. And, then his and he's not in the room. Him. Yeah, so it's like that's to me, that's a totally different negotiation. And I hate that people. It's not something I would do, but I mean, it's not something I care about someone yeah, doing. It doesn't uh, just also, take away from their ability to debate. To debate it. Whether, whether you agree with them politically, he had gone into the red pill space for a while and he was debating with those guys, but then he's also uh pretty con conservative he has some conservative views himself no, that's what I like about it. he heterodox right because yeah. he's often liberal and i would consider myself heterodox it's like i want everyone to have health care but at the same time like i think everyone should have guns and, and, it, and you cannot put a box on me politically i'm gonna and i majored in poli sci from own college uh, 2015 forbes number one college in america even over harvard stanford uh princeton etc humble humble brag uh but i'm just saying i've i've been studying politics since 2001 I have right? a question for you then. Yeah. And this I'm not an cool. expert. I'm saying I read it. No, no, not a, it's not yeah. anything crazy. It's a, yeah. just a kind of a thing I've noticed. So um, I'll try to phrase it the right way. So I'm thinking back to, I don't know, maybe like thinking of things as like a pendulum, like political spectrum swings. Yeah. Oh, and then I think about prior to like Trump or even like a decade ago, I was being a liberal. liberal yeah. Being liberal and it ties into Howard Stern, right? meant freedom of speech mm -hmm. you fought you were fighting the religious right remember yeah. howard yeah. stern was yeah. fighting the fcc which was a conservative group right yes so and being liberal I mean, meant you were for freedom, freedom of speech it was uh it was i remember bringing an eminem song to this this church youth group and they were yeah. like why the fuck yeah. would you do that i'm like they said bring your favorite song i said dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 don't you want to grow up to be just like me? I tell yeah, you, drug ballad or uh, and the and the youth pastor who like ran the thing was like, oh, he's like, why would you bring that song? I'm like, you said to bring any song you want. This is my favorite song. Like, blow me, you know. Um, so at that time, it was like, you know who's on the side of like free speech, and also the Iraq War comes out. You know who's on the, the anti this stupid trillion dollar wasted million lives destroyed war liberals were against that you know who's against gay marriage conservatives if you were just okay with gay marriage that made you a liberal now it's like unless you allow chicks who started taking estrogen six months ago and have a penis to compete with NCAA women or you want to let you know like if you think it's okay to um not inform a uh, uh the other combatant that the person that they're going to face in an octagon was a woman or was a man last year and is now uh transitioned to becoming a woman if you think it's it's not up to the organization to disclose that information that's what makes you a liberal these days right there's many things that have isolated the left into this kind of weird corner where i go i can no longer call myself this thing 
I may have the view that there should be more. Yeah. We should have certain things like, you know, as basic human rights, like I can say, like people go broke over healthcare in America. It's like, it, that's fucked up to me, right? But there's many things where it's like, I gotta give it to you, man. Conservatives won this one. Turns out you were kind of lying about the vaccine and its side effects and concealing like, you know, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but it's like, why did you cover up the fact that it had side effects then? Like, and people were kind of like some, a small percentage, but you go, even if it's just a little one, okay, 0.01% of people get myocarditis from it. and. Maybe they die of a large heart. Who knows? Why'd you just why'd you keep that secret? Because my friend who worked at the CDC. One was second, Kenny. I see you. Oh, we got a guy uh, wait in there. But I just want to finish the point. So my th my think was like, okay, so Trump was originally a Democrat, and then he went as Republican. Yes. Uh, so it was this weird dynamic where everything shifted. Where now being yeah. Republican, they're saying, "Oh, censorship, censorship," and it's like, "Wait a minute!" It was being liberal that was for free speech, yeah. and it's this weird dynamic now where now everyone's being pushed to the center if they're not well, and one, and one on these I two have, extremes. Yeah. One one thing that I have because I'll, uh, for example, I've been a big fan of Christopher Hitchens for many years. I loved his books on. Um, uh the clintons i love his books on mother Teresa. so i love that he takes this contrarian subversive approach but it's like if you call donald trump a rapist you got to call bill clinton a rapist because he's got a long history of that shit, right so people have yeah. a time did you see the epstein list just came out right trump likes him young he's, but i knew the they're book. both I on the there they're both on there. Like, bill, bro, christopher hitchens just demolished these people and like that's why i wasn't for hillary clinton in 2016 i'm like you realize she she was she's not just standing by this guy who cheated on her she actively went out and tried to destroy the lives of women who accused Bill Clinton accurately of sexually assaulting them. That's the person, mm -hmm. that's the first woman president that you want, right? So that's where I started to lose friends. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah. We got a uh, Kenny is here. Kenny, how are you? You're muted, sir. You got to fix your mic there. Hello, hello. There we go. Hey. I can hear you. How you doing? What do you got to say? You were talking about a guy I used to work with for a while. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, so that? actually, Kenny. Uh, then I decided not to work with him anymore because, you know, he's a creepy fuck and a piece of shit. Right. One of the, so let me explain, one of the videos where, I don't know if I played it in the intro, is a video of him playing a tape of a convo that Jim Renam is having with to this gentleman here, Kenny, about a sexual experience. Well, they, they in, in front of little kids. No, he never yeah. worked with Jordy Pace. <laughs> no. yeah. He worked I, uh, I, with Jim Renan. Yeah, I wasn't there for when he was working with the kids. No, but he played the clip of you yeah. talking with him to them. Yeah. And wasn't like Kitty there standing by him for some reason? Yeah. Here, I'll make your mic a little bit. Her louder. voice is there. I find that also disturbing that her voice is there. And I'm like, is she participating in this? Really? Wow. Yeah, you hear the little kids in the background giggling at the story and then writing in the Discord like, ha, 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 LMAO, and it's like, what the, what possesses you to think it's funny to play that for kids? What was know. the story that you were playing? Or what was he, what was he presenting to these kids? He was playing, we this is just one of many, but he was, this guy, Kenny, had a sexual experience. I don't know, I don't know the full details, Kenny, but it's very explicit and goes into detail of like cum in the mouth and effing in the a and all this stuff very graphic detail sexual story and he's playing the interview he does with this guy kenny who's on panel with us to the audience of little kids that go from ages eight to nine and then there's a clip of him bragging about how his new audience is ages zero to thirty He's like, our audience has changed recently, folks. It's become uh, anywhere from 8 to 30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I got it here so I can play it. Yikes, like, indeed. Hardest fucking yikes I think I've ever heard. I know, Kenny, I don't, I don't know if you want to remind people of like just why that conversation happened. Was it even a true story or was it? It was definitely true. It right. was. I've done on podcasts before that are about sex. It's like, look, I've done an adult podcast and told stories mm -hmm. about sex. It's like everyone's talking about sex. That's the normal thing. If someone would go, I'm going to take that and then play it for an eight year old, I'd be like, you're a, you going have, to jail. Right. It's like that. It, is, no, it's a crime. It, it is a fucking crime. People don't get yeah. it. They think it's like, oh, you're just, it's just a weird, wacky thing. No, 
you would go to jail if someone were to call the police. Obviously, right. this is so long ago now. Nobody did. They should have back then. But yeah, yeah you would have went to jail for that shit. Yeah, because that could be said. I'm waiting right for right for children. I bet. Okay, let's not start the story at all. <laughs> right. Right. That's why I won't say. Is that the reason you stopped talking to him? No. Well, that's a big reason, and he destroyed his Discord. That was another thing he did. Right, so the Discord got taken down because it was found that there was children in it and porn. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I don't think we were in that Discord. He reinvented oh. himself later at something else. But that, but that Discord he played your clip in with the kids in it got taken down because they found there was kids in it. I I'm guess sure. somebody reported it, yeah. Down a different Discord himself, then explain why he destroyed it. He said he was blaming uh, Kyle or Sayan's Entertainment. I'm looking for this clip where he starts talking about. Okay, I got it. So I have the video here of him talking about how his audience is from ages zero to 30. If you need to look for any clips, by the way, I have all his voicemails at the ready too, because that could be a fun way to fill time if we ever need to, if you need to search for anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's called Potato <laughs> Cult. So these kids, he called them the Potato Cult. So the, what he would do is he groomed them, funneled them into the Discord, made them moderators, and then he would send them out to troll people because kids obviously have all the time in the world, you know? and uh he would use them as his trolls to like screw with people and then he would say things like oh i love you little boy i don't I want you to be a that. bad boy and it's like i love, hey. you. I love you man i would never say the that. kid and it would be fun. one thing if the kid was like uh i love you too whatever but the kid's like ill stop saying this shit to me and he keeps doing it Jesus christ that's uh. something wrong. i've like i've worked with kids from a very young age who have developed like you know, special relationships in the sense of like, I work with them one on one tutoring for like five days out of the week over the course of years. And like, well, like, and even in that case, I wouldn't say I love, like, I feel it would be inappropriate for me to say I love you, even though I've I'm like, I want nothing for the best for you. I, like, I've seen you grow up and I've, I've right. mentored you. I would never say I love you to another kid. Like, it would feel so bizarre coming out of my mouth. It's like, ooh, like, even though you might mean it, you're like, I love you. Like, I love you like my own kid. But to say that, you would be like, yeah. I'm are you graduating from high school right now? And I've known you since you were 12 or like, what, like what circumstances would you be provoked to say, I love you to a child you've never met who is under the age of 12? By the way, um, I have I the StreamYards link uh, pinned. Anybody's welcome to come up on panel here because I'm sure Jimmernam's never going to show up. He's such a fucking yeah, he's such a, he's such, Yeah, he's... He's such a coward. He's never going to show up. He's afraid of me. He's afraid of me and wow. Mark. You already murdered him. I don't know why a murder victim would go back. I'm sure he's afraid of me a little bit. Yeah, he yeah. used to be like balls to the wall. Like, I'll fight anyone. I will confront anyone. And we're giving him an open you panel see, to come on here Mark, and fight. Mark, and he, you went, he's afraid. You went, you went to the man's house. If I were him, I would have come out with a baseball bat. Even if you can. Exactly. Ask, anybody. anybody at, least, at least I was right there. Right there and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I, I I I sprained his ankle. Good. Right. I'm in the hospital now. But you know, at yeah. least I put up a fight. You can't call oh, me. Wait, we got we got someone here. So let's, you're not uh, a guy let's who add him here. Violence either, right, Kenny? Like you're just saying, like if somebody came to my house looking for me, like yeah. fucking put up or show up. Especially after if you talked all that shit too and said you're a pussy, you're a bitch, and then yeah. it's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. at least have a gun. You know what I mean? At least have something. But okay, like, let's I see mean, how this goes. Uh, I'm up with like an axe and be like, yeah. Exactly. I, I so think we got a, like at least I be Bapa Bing uh, ready to remove from stage here. But hi, introduce yourself. Who are you? Oh, Mark, is it true that you sent? Uh huh. Uh, Speak up, sir. Of a loved one to Jimanom. Say it one more time. Speak up, sir. Did you send nudes of a loved one? To Jim and Nam. No, I've never said true. No, that's not true. A love. No. What does a loved one mean? Are you referring to family? What is it? Oh, he's gone. Okay. Guess you can confirm that. Very interesting. Is he saying a loved one is in a family member, or is he? Is he saying he, he has naked pictures of Luana? Is that as you're referring to? 
Uh, I would assume so. Who else would I have? I don't have nude. I don't have nude photos of any of my family members. Yeah, because that's what he make. That's what he's making it sound like. Yeah. like. Did you send a photo of your dad naked to someone? Yeah, <laughs> right. no, I've never sent a photo of my dad naked, nor a photo of Luana naked uh, to oh. Jim Renan. Damn, Mark, you have, you apparently have so many haters. You would have thought they would have jumped up on here to have the chance no, to talk to no, you and say it. Too, it's like I nobody's I'll, saying I'll, shit. I'll, like, there's a lot of cool people in the subreddit, but there's so many dudes where I'm like, bro, like message me on like at least show your face you know what i mean or your voice uh, or will be like oh, some this is a, here's a deal you guys can come up here and you don't even have to show your face right. and you can still say shit. You can talk your shit. obviously yeah. jim or nam's gonna have to do that if he comes it, on it, he you, know, show his done, face. you know i would have done and i'm not saying that you should do it i would dox and squat it it's just me i might have accidentally done that oops i'm gonna post like a Wait, oh. what? You said docs and what? Squatted? <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, like, swatted. I think swatted. swatted. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's, then, then we'll see how... That would really how, be unfortunate if that happened. I honestly don't even know how to do that. I've watched Let me just lot. say this. I got so many messages from people who are crazy saying, like, give me this guy's number and his address and shit. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not looking to do that. But so many people were able to <laughs> Lots I got so of fucking crazy. With his address, because <laughs> his girlfriend gave it to me, but like, uh, because I just asked him, like, hey, do you mind? Because he's like calling me a pussy, say he's gonna break my like, let me just, I want to hit him. No, I know where he lives. He's pissed a lot of people off, she like, told me uh, exactly where he lived. But then, like, when I when I started posting about him a little bit, just showing the voicemails, they're like, yo, check out this. <laughs> I'm like, how is this dude so easy to fucking find? Like, yeah. but there are a lot, of, like, this isn't a ton of people. Let's say, like, 10 people were like, yo, here he is, here he is, here he is, go get him. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Well, you, uh, uh, I got this uh, video here ready, actually. Uh, it's been a long time. And our audience has changed since then. Clearly. Yes. Um, and we're talking about from zero to 30 years old now. Before it was probably 30 years old <laughs> to 60 to <laughs> five. <laughs> but uh, oh, we, yeah. we're kind of like the majority of the audience listening now, tuning in, zero to 30. Um, so it's, it's a different demographic, but okay. So I'll leave. Who is it that's causing this echo? I went to one of the kids. Wendy, is that you? That's Wendy. That is Wendy. Yeah, it is. The entire time it was Wendy. Wendy, you got to turn off your uh, speaker. What do you mean you don't know? Did you did you fondle it? Did you touch it? Did you tickle the balls? A little bit. Did you let it slap you around a bit in the face? Did you no. ever? Uh, actually, did you ever go down on him or any of them? Yeah, I'm assuming that went down. Um, no, that one cock. How many cocks went in your mouth? One. Was it the white one or the black one? I thought it was more than that. It's a black one. Wow. Were you, were you, you know how many inches it was? Ken? How many inches were that black cock? I don't remember. It was more than six. Okay. Were you able to deep throat it? I don't remember. Small time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we. What happened to you? Whoosh. Any minute, Jimmernam. Is this Jimmernam now? Jimmer. What are you looking for? Porn to porn bomb or something? You pussy. Just get on fucking mic and talk. Hello, this is Jim and Nam. What the fuck are you talking about? Being so oh, <laughs> we got Static. Him. We fucking got him. <laughs> what, what do you need from me? This Jim and Nam. Fuck you guys. You suck, Jim and Nam. What took you so long? I, I would be like, I'm an Asian guy. That's why I was there. All right. I'm sitting here with my shirt off, too. I'm a tough guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think you're so fucking tough? Why didn't you come out the other night when I was outside your apartment, huh? 
Because oh, I was fucking so shit. Because you beat the shit. What'd you say? I'm Don't so scared. I, dude, you you fucking knew that I would armbar the shit out of you. You're trying to armbar me, bro. It's the fucking opposite, dude. I would break your arm, and then you'd call the cops. You know that for a no fact. No way. I would yeah. spear you double leg takedown real hard. No. Dude, dude, you want to talk about double leg takedowns? Marin County, high school wrestling champion, year 2001, Marin County Athletic League. Wow. Who's that? Jim or Nam? You, oh. What's that? Crickets? Thought so. Hold on. What? Hold on. I'm thinking of something to say here. Sorry. Okay, I'll give you some time. I'm not gonna be a dick about it. I just I'm pouring myself a glass of wine, so you know what? Yeah. Us, what, do you, what do you got to say? That I'm the best, and you're not the best. You're saying you're the best, and I'm not the best? Are you fucking delusional, dude? Did oh, I'm sorry. Did you win Marin County High, high School Athletic League championships in 2001? What's that? You I was, didn't. I was so good at high school. I just I just skip it. Oh, you stole oh, <laughs> this dude. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Why don't you send some proof right now that you skipped all of high school? I know some Asian kids actually do that. I don't believe that you did. I don't think you're the right kind of uh, man. Ma Mark, yeah. you're still coming on my show next week, right? I'm the guy that messaged you on IG. Yeah, dude, I'll come on your show. All right. Hold on, let me read an angry message from chat. Wu Tang says, LOL, so racism is okay. Y'all weird. Oh. What are you talking about? That was that, I thought that was Jim and him. Was that <laughs> what, what's racist about? What did I say that was racist? I said I'd, I'd fucking beat his ass in a wrestling comedy. That might as well have been Jim Renan, but no, it was not actual Jim. Oh, oh that's a fucking well, letdown. Why'd you say maybe, it was maybe, maybe they they fought as racist? <laughs> you twice couldn't indeed. tell from him going hi, <laughs> hey, Jim on it. I thought that was Jim Renan. It's a friend of mine. Okay. I know who it is. You're losing right. credibility to me because you made it's me a guy in the chat too. <laughs> was, it, it's somebody in the chat. If you I was see like, the name, he fucking static and, up and actually had the audacity to tell me he was going to. That was static. Play. I'm like, bro, double right. like my ass. Double like, like maybe they thought it's racist why I said that line CEO came up with. I'm an Asian guy, but you know that's just a line somebody came up with. Is it's the word Asian again. racist? I wonder. Can you not, no longer call people like you can't? Like, well, no, I know you know. can't make the voice. I guess. It's, oh, well, but see, I, 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 I didn't just, make the voice. I just said it uh, the way I heard guys, it. I guess. Let me just say this: like it, you can tell if someone's actually racist. They would be going out trying to kill people of another race, causing hate crimes and stuff. If somebody makes jokes, yeah, it's not coming right. from a place of hatred. It's called that busting was balls. Like a pedophile, I think, was just like, the joke, right? He was yeah, like, like if you heard all the things that Jim Renam has done and said, and he said heinous uh, things about hoping yeah. the kid dies of yeah, AIDS yeah, and have cancer and it's all this stuff. Yeah. And he's used racist right. terms. He calls himself right. racist terms. When he's not even a, uh, like Chinese or Japanese, it's like La Laotian or something, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's made Chinese jokes and all that. So it's like, it, nobody, if it offends you, uh, too bad. It's not right. really meant as like yeah. this scathing but, uh, comment. It, was, it sounded the same. It sounded like he was trying to, like he sounded like. Jimmy it was Nick. believable, yeah. Confused, yeah. Well, thank you for having me on. And hey, Mark, no problem, Kenny. Thank you for Mark, sharing. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Yeah, I'll yes. see you soon, buddy. Thank you. All yes, right. this is just the beginning. Thank <laughs> you, right. Kenny. So, yeah, Kenny was the guy that was in that tape that I was playing where they were talking it, about... It's uh, been a long time. And our audience has changed since then. Clearly. Yes. Um, and we're talking about from zero to 30 years old now. Zero Before, it was probably 30 years old <laughs> to 60. <laughs> five <laughs> but uh oh we, we're kind of like the majority of the audience listening now tuning in zero to 30 um so it's it's a different demographic but okay so i'll leave who is it that's causing this echo by the way ironically wendy the, wendy is that you that's wendy, wendy is there that is Wendy. Yeah, it is. The entire time it was Wendy. Wendy, you got to turn off your uh, speaker. What do you mean you don't know? Did you did you fondle it? Did you touch it? Did you tickle the balls? A little bit. Did you let it slap you around a bit? In the face? 
Did you no. ever uh, actually? Did you ever go down on him or any of them? Yeah, I'm assuming that went down. I went down on one cock. How many cocks went in your one. mouth? One. Was it the white one or the black one? I thought it was more than that. It's the black one. Wow. Were well, you? Well, were you? Else. You know how many inches it was, Ken? How many inches were that black cock? I don't remember. It was more than six. Okay. Were you able to deep throat it? I don't remember. It's a long time ago. Um, how long were you sucking on it? I don't know, maybe like 10 minutes. That's it. 10 minutes? That's, that's it? All right. Uh, I think that's enough. That's all you need to hear. I mean, you could hear the little kid in the background, by the way. Here we go. We got uh, Rest in Peace George. Let's see who this is. Rest in peace. Up of us. Say that again, sir. Shall we enter the bop of us? The bop of us. <laughs> That's a deep, dark, dangerous place. So you can enter it if you want. Mark, would you like to explain what happened to George recently? Well, so um, recently, George was fired from TFAT K after being brought on as a sort of a charity case. This is what Brendan likes to do. I'll frame it this way. Brendan likes to publicly make pronouncements that he's doing good for other people. And I have several instances of this that like that are publicly available and also privately available to me that I can't that I can't recount just yet because uh, I don't have permission from the people that he's told me about. But let's just say this. He will make grand public gestures. I'm donating something. I'm paying for Ray Borg's medical bills as a public example of something that he promised and then didn't follow through with because there's evidence to the company. He said, I'll pay all of your medical bills. Well, then you're still raising money for it. You know, a year later, why would you need that if if Brendan Shop covered your entire bills as he said he would? Now, while crying to Ray Borg, um, he said, you know, I bought this person a car. I bought this person a, a this. I got them. That. Like, he'll, he'll make these things where, like, he goes, I did this to help this person. He, it's one of his favorite ways to paint the narrative that he's not, in fact, the guy that everybody in the TFAC case server that makes him out to be. He is, in fact, a good, giving, generous person. Now, one thing you might notice about narcissistic people uh, that I've noticed over the years is they often are very generous if it can give them narcissistic supply, right? If I'm having a good time at the bar, then everybody's getting drinks. If I were to call you up and be like, yo, man, I need some fucking drinks, right? You'd be like, what the fuck are you begging me for money for? Like, go fuck yourself, right? So it has to be contextual. It has to be able to, to provide a direct source of narcissistic supply, such as being able to brag about donating something or being able to brag about getting this kid from bumfuck Illinois who wrote in and was on a weight loss journey and said, well, if you make it down to under 200 pounds, you can come wrestle Stevie Weaver. They brought him on the show. They put him up in the hotel. They didn't just do that, which is one thing. They made content out of it, right? So then it kind of becomes a different, but it's also still cool because like for this kid, he's a nobody who has a, a family history that, you know, isn't so bright. He's There's some mental illness issues. There's some drug addiction issues. Something that I think a lot of people in America uh, have, have either dealt with directly or know somebody in their family. You know, mental illness and drug addiction is a very common thing these days with the opioid crisis. Um, so I'm not saying that to put him down. I'm saying this is where he came from and, and, Brendan wanted to be like, he overcame this to come here. He hired him on for a month was the initial agreement, then hired him on for 12, like for like a year, basically, I think at this point, maybe more. Um, but I'm just going to say this. George did anything, everything, worked his ass off, learned a bunch of new skills, like went from doing nothing to kind of doing something. And also was just like putting more hours than anybody because you move to LA, like you don't really have a lot going. It's hard to make friends, you know? So it's like, I have my relationship. I've got my social life, got all those things. He, um, he could devote his life to Brendan. And so that's the perfect type of employee for Brendan because I'm an adult man and he was harassing me at all hours of the night to send him screenshots of his social media, you know, to fill him in on the, how socials, how socials, how socials 12 times a day. I was basically on call for him 24 seven. And he doesn't like to not like, if you don't get back to him in a certain amount of time, he hates that. So George is the perfect person to have on hand. And make a story about and bring them on stage and numerous events and and uh you know one little interjection here i'm gonna have is he came to a, a live stream where bert kreischer comes in the building and by the way i'm not dissing on bert kreischer or whatever i'm just gonna say a more of a general statement because he was super nice to me he was cool he was good on the live stream he's doing brendan a big up because like bert kreischer does have a big fan base so coming in and being on his show it's like 
he didn't have to do that. He took time out of his day to come visit the studio and it was perfectly nice to me. But at some point they go, uh, they introduce George and go, oh, he's on this weight loss journey. Um, he still has a bunch of loose skin because he lost like 200 plus pounds, like 250 pounds. It's a lot of weight to lose, you know? So you have remaining loose skin. You have to get it removed surgically. Um, and Bert goes, I'll put, I'll put a third of that down. Like if you, if you like, we all want to raise the money here and I'm going, and then Brendan was like, yeah, I'll put a third down too. And it's like, there wasn't anyone else in the room who like is a self-proclaimed millionaire. So it's kind of like, what am I supposed to be like? I'll raise it, go fund, you know, like, like, I don't think I can just promise someone 3000 bucks right now, like just like flippantly. But also I feel like, don't you guys like, aren't you like driving Ferraris and shit? Like what, like just as a statement of like, if you're going to make this charitable effort and kind of speak like, yeah, I'll help you out there. At the, uh, if you get the rest of the money and then somebody else does. And then if we all go in, it's like, if you are who you say you are, shouldn't you be able to write a check right now? Right. 10 K I'm a million. I drive a Ferrari. I have a studio. I, I'm a super, I make, you know, quadruple that in one weekend doing stand-up. Okay. I'm going to have a check. Right. Like it's no problem if you can't, but just don't go around pretending that you are. So he was recently, that all leads up to, he's doing his job, everything asked, putting in the hours, working way more hours for way less money than anyone there. They offered, they made a spectacle out of paying for his flight home. And last year when I was there, I remember on the holidays, actually, I remember this little anecdote that'll set up this. Brendan made sure to gather everyone around. He's like, watch this, guys. You know, let's bring in all eight employees that I have to make podcasts. Um, you know, outside of even the talent that comes in or, or Nick, the guy who produces uh, The King of the Sting and Golden Hour. He's like, all right, well, gather around, gather around. We're all here? Okay. George, you want to go home for the holidays? He's like, well, I don't really have the money to do that, so unfortunately I can't. He's like, now you do. I'm buying you a, t I'm buying you a ticket to go home. And he's like, wow, thank you so much. And it was like this tearful moment where he's like, really, like, this kid's really sweet, really genuine. He tears up and, and hugs him and we all, fuck yeah, dude. Like, the kid's flown twice in his life. You know what I mean? So it was like, fuck yeah, man, that's a great gesture. Like, you're paying for his Spirit Airlines, you know, ticket home. Then a few days later, right before the flight was supposed to happen, it gets canceled because airlines are all fucked up and there's weather. He's got to fly into O'Hare Airport, right? So he texts uh, Jay Shaw, Brendan's brother, in the middle of the, middle of the night. It was like 11 p.m., right? And he's like, hey, man, my flight just got canceled. And in order to get a new one, like, I need 200 more bucks. Like, is there any way... And instead of being like, like if, he, if someone woke me up with a, you know, my, a friend of this to me the other day, like, hey man, I'm at the gas station, like my debit cards are negative. Do you have a hundred bucks? I'm like, boom, go, Happy, Merry Christmas, right? I'm not rich, but I go, I would, I would, I want friends who can do that for me. If I'm in a bind, help me out, and then I never mention it again. If I needed the money, I'll tell you, right? But to J, if I was Jay, I'd be like, what? Like you need money? Yeah, two hundred bucks Venmo, done, right? Jay has a, a job and gets money from Brendan's career too as his manager. Instead, what Jay did was bitch to Brendan about it. And then instead of fixing the problem and and, that, and just forgetting about it, Brendan comes in Monday morning. He's like, bro, can you fucking believe this George kid? He's fucking, he's hitting up Jay and fucking blowing him up in the middle of the night because his flight got canceled and he fucking wants more money. to risk. I'm like, yes, I can believe that the 21-year-old kid who's flown twice in his life had a little bit of anxiety about his flight suddenly being canceled and not having any money to get a new one. I can imagine that, yeah. And I can imagine fixing the problem immediately and not telling anyone else because that's shaming somebody for not having money. Can you believe he hit up Jay, the guy who booked his flight? What is he, his travel agent? Yes, he's your travel agent. He's my travel agent too. He booked all the travel for me. I'd always get confirmations and emails and flights from Jay Shaw, right? So the fact that he comes in to have publicly have this charity move to get, oh, we're flying him home. Yeah, we're flying him home. And then privately turn around and go, you fucking believe this kid is 200 bucks? Like, what am I fucking ATM? I'm like, ugh, that's fucking gross. Maybe keep that to yourself, huh? Like, maybe just maybe just send him the money and then just keep that to yourself. Um, they did a similar thing this year, like on air. They're like, we're flying you home for Christmas. Like, chin, look up flights. Like, oh, it's only 150 bucks. Like, okay, yeah, I'll fucking send it you right now. And they're like, oh shit, that was for uh, March of next year. Uh, Flights right now are 600 bucks. I'm like, oh, like they made a joke about it, but they legitimately were like, ooh, hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh my fucking God. So they sent him home, having hired this other chick who he's also trying to bang because I talked to the ex-boyfriend of the new girl who they have on the show. And apparently Brendan Schaub was causing problems in their relationship before they broke up because he was constantly texting her at all hours. What the fuck could she possibly be doing for him as the intern on a show for two episodes a week where she's basically required to appear 
They have a separate editor. They have a guy who does Photoshop. Like all the jobs are covered. You don't need to be talking to Brendan Schaub and having like giggly secret phone calls. You're like, ha ha ha. Like, what are you laughing about? Nothing. Just talking to Brendan. It's work, babe. That's how he made it seem to me. And I believe this guy because he's a highly credible source. Um, so Brendan Schaub is obviously either fuck this girl or trying to fuck her. So you bring this girl in, start paying her, and then go, oh, George, sorry. Mm. And all that training and mentoring and leadership, I prepared you to, we don't need you anymore. Sorry. And instead of doing that before you went home from the holidays, so you can make the decision to bring all your shit home and make that the move, you let him fly home, have the holidays, and then the day after Christmas say, hey, um, I don't want to have this conversation with you. I'm going to let my lawyer, Lex, call you up and tell you that you're fired. Instead of me, because I, I brought you on, I got all the attention. When it comes to the uncomfortable stuff, ugh. and trust me, I've gotten a, that call from his lawyer before. For example, when um, I it came time to invoice him for running the Tiger Thick Whiskey social media pages, suddenly the the offer of oh hey I got you three thousand bucks a month to run the, the Tiger Thick social media. I'm like cool, gonna post every day. I'm on top of it. I'm traveling with you. I'm I'm doing photo shoots. I'm making content for him. I'm doing edits. Blah blah. blah. I'm earning the three thousand bucks. In other words. Um, I'm not just like doing it remotely. I'm, like, I'm traveling in order to get like shots of tiger thick whiskey bottles in different cities and landmarks. I'm doing like physical work to earn this 3000 bucks along with other payments from different entities. Um, but I was promised 3000 bucks. And then when it came time to invoice, it's like, Hey, Hey Lex, what's up? He's like, Oh, Hey man, I guess there was a misunderstanding. Um, Jay, uh, you said the three K was to be split between you and Jay. I'm like, what does Jay have to do with social media pages? Like, I mean, you know, you're gonna have to ask Brandon. I'm like, cool. So I have to now like pick a fight with my boss to get him to pay me what he agreed to pay and never discuss Jay splitting, you know. He, and he he did that like a number of times where he'd like, like, oh, actually, psych, you know, but he had his moment of like, Mark, in person, I'm gonna tell you, hey, dude, I got you all this money for running. I'm like, that's amazing. You just bumped my income up 3K a month. That's awesome. I really need that. I'm gonna be able to, you know, go on this vacation that I wanted, ball, you know. Mentally, you're going like, oh, three, 10 months. So at the end of the year, I can save that, you know, 30 Gs and put that away for savings. And then he's like, oh, it's like half. He did that like three different times. And it was always like in person. And then it was like, have your accountant tell me something was up. You know, it's like, why am I getting an email? When the accountant says he can't pay me. What the fuck? Like, so fast forward to now, George gets fired. His mom DMs me. Because he he's he had messaged Luana something. We have hashed it out. He like said, like, it's amazing how good you look when you get rid of the toxic piece of shit in your life or something like that. To her, she told me, like, it's not a big deal. Like, it's honestly like he was like, from George's perspective, he was being supportive. I'm not even saying he was trying to hit on her. It was like, it was like, hey, you look you like you look good. Like, that's the kind of guy he is. And I know that he wasn't trying to fuck her. Um, but I was just like, hey, dude, don't do that. Like, don't, you know, I because I was nice to you. Like, when when I heard that story, I was like, I went to George after hearing the story of like, can you believe this guy with 200 bucks? I went to George's office or his workspace and I said, hey, 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 look, if you ever need anything, any money, any clothes, any food, anything, I will give you the shirt off my back. I will, I will give you all the money in my bank account if you say you need it, right? And it's a real emergency because I figure if, you know, in the worst case scenario, I can at least get reimbursed by Brendan or something, but like, we're all here to take care of you. So anybody that's even acting remotely like, we're not a support network for you. Like, please know that at least me will tr instantly transfer you any money if you're ever in a financial bind. So to hear that he was like saying negative things, I was like, I just said something on Reddit, like, hey, like this fucking kid, like, you know, maybe don't do that, right? This is a lesson to like, hey, girl, up. he got fired. His mom DM me and said, well, like, cause she DM me before like, hey, stop talking about my son. I'm like, hey, I don't think you know the context of the story. Like it's a little much to explain, but like, I don't have a problem with George. I just, you know, I, I just said something that was true, but George texted me that same day that his mom DM me and he was like, Hey man, I just wanted to apologize. I'm like, dude, don't worry, man. I didn't, I didn't think twice about that. Really. It's just like, and I'm so forgiving. It takes, I didn't expect you to reach out. It takes a real man to actually apologize and take accountability. So from my perspective, George is 10 times the man, man that Brendan is because I've never heard Brendan take actual accountability. He'll take fake accountability and deflect to something else. He'll be like, oh yeah, I might have done that, but the real issue is you. Like he does, he's a master at like, you know. I mean, just watch the Tiger Belly episode. Like <laughs> the entire thing's a lie. He said the FBI got involved and told him that Bobby Lee's running the TFAK subreddit. What the fuck are you talking about? In reality, he hired a bunch of fake hackers to take the subreddit down. 
and then outed himself by accusing Bobby Lee. So that story, um, that part of the whole story is where I know a lot about it because where I was following it. It's insane. Oh, yeah, dude. Fa- we could do a whole other podcast about all of this shit, we, we too. Really could. Yeah. So, so that's all just to get to this point where I go, I wanted to make sure because I knew they'd come up with some bullshit because I've had other people who I know who have left the podcast where Brendan has either publicly or private. Like Malik was the first one. I, I had a beef with Malik recently. And we squashed it like men. We we I was baiting him and trolling him a little bit, but he rang the he answered the bell. I was uh, posting shit because he talked shit on my page, and then I come back to his page, and it's like we had a little back and forth. And then guess what? It ended with he texted me back. We're like, okay, so we had a misunderstanding. You're right. Like that was you know I should have just kept my mouth shut about this situation. I didn't know the full side of the story. I, and he was like, that's cool, man. I know you were just like riding with somebody who you thought was your friend at the time. Like we fucking you know said good luck, and I wish him the best. Right. Cause that's what men do. You can have a disagreement. You can call someone a pussy online. You know, it's okay. Like I wasn't trying to fight Malik. I was just like, yo bro, like the thing that you said wasn't true. And he's like, well, the thing you said wasn't true. I'm like, okay, so clear it up for me then, you know? And we did that. And that's what I did with George and we hashed it out and I'd be totally cool with both of them. I wasn't cool with Brendan because I knew all I did from the get go was tell the truth about my encounters with him first at red bar radio. Cause he's the first person to cordially invite me out. So I said, I know this will press Brendan off. So I want to bring that up uh, yeah, after this yeah. too. That was very not for that. me. That was, I held back a lot. I didn't talk about his cheating. I didn't talk about his, like any of the things that I could have done that other people then revealed that I confirmed once I found out that he was making up insane shit behind my back. Like, you know, that's, that's a whole different podcast in itself. Like he didn't, he fired me for not texting him back for three hours as I worked. And then that turned into like, a, B, C, D, E. I'm like, where the fuck did these reasons? Why, why would you put in an official statement like that when it's so easy to debunk? But that's par for the course with him. He's a pathological liar. So I wanted to do the same thing with George. I wanted to put out, I emailed, when I the moment I found out from his mom that he was fired, I emailed a screenshot of the DMs to Brendan and CC Brian. Just, I like Brian. Okay. I have no problem, Brian. We've talked to we actually, he, he actually answered the email. I was like, Hey man, I didn't have anything to do with this. Like, and I believe him because he gets a paycheck from TFK. He doesn't run the business of it. Okay. He is, he's actually just an entertainer who started the podcast, but his role is to come in and be funny on camera for two hours, twice a week. That's it. I believe him. And Brian and I are totally cordial and we hashed it out. We had some jokes, but I just wanted to make sure that he saw that I was calling Brendan Schaub a pussy in email because he has me blocked on text. And I said, you couldn't even call him yourself? Pussy. And so even if he didn't answer, I wanted Brendan to know that Brian saw me call him a pussy and did fuck nothing. And of course, that's I posted that story to my um, Instagram page and tagged them in it. Like I tagged Brendan and Brian on IG so they both saw it. And then he probably blocked me after that. But like... I put it out to the world like, hey, guess what? This is what Brendan did. He fucking is too pussy to fire George himself after getting all this clout, right? For like the charity clout. And he, I knew immediately from my inside sources uh, who who have, you know, connections to people who still work at Thick Boy that Brendan was freaking the fuck out. Like he's like, oh my God, this is on Reddit. Like, oh, it looks so bad. Uh, you know, and they weren't putting on an episode for like a week. So like he was just, all I wanted for his Christmas was to make him go, <gasps> And I think I accomplished that. I also sent him a, a cash app request for the dark web Adderall money that he, he stiffed me for. So I was just like, it's not that I need the money. I was just like, I just sent him like the request like on Christmas to be like, hey man, like you still owe me money. Remember, remember like, this? Remember this? Remember when you when I got you a bunch of drugs and you said you're gonna pay me? And like, and I was like, you're admitting a felony. I'm like, oh no, is the FBI gonna pop out of the bushes and Arrest me for getting fucking. Actually, <laughs> Mark, the FBI is actually waiting outside right now. That's what this whole thing was about. <laughs> but there's actually guys in the suburbs. They're like, "You're admitting to a felony." I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> "Totally, bro." Yeah. Wait, so, so R.P. George. Damn, you got quite a story from your question. Yes, yeah, well, I have a follow up. I have a yes, follow up. You have which a follow up question. They have mentioned that there have been some opportunities presented to George yeah from other people like I, who want to like no and i'll say this if i were an employer i'd fucking hire george he works his ass off dude like he's he's honestly he's an ideal he's an ideal employee he puts his head down he fucking work like he's focused he does well like he's an employee he's always nice to everyone like as an employee if i was looking for a guy who's like can you commit to these hours and show up on time and fucking like do whatever i ask you and you're not leaving the office so that happens like he did a to b a to z you know what i mean like this is a guy 
he was photoshopping, he's editing, he's looking through clips, he's cleaning up comments, he's cleaning up the studio. Like he did, he did, I'm telling you, A to Z responsibilities, right? Um, if I was hiring somebody, I would hire him. Do I think they made that happen for it? No. I think it's other people, like the guy who, a guy who used to work for Thick Boy, uh, who quit because Brendan is asshole. And then he went around saying like, oh no, I actually fired the creative director because uh, it was costing too much money. I'm like, first of all, He's working for below his rate to work for you like 24 seven, you know, and be like, he horribly mismanages people. You know, it's like the creative director shouldn't be like also deleting negative comments off Gringo Poppy. You know what I mean? That's a really shitty overlap of responsibilities. Um, so you drove this guy up the wall and I overheard this conversation on speakerphone and had to put my earphones on and pretend I wasn't listening because it was so awkward to listen to a guy uh, tell you, I'm leaving the job because you're a bad person. And Brendan's like, what's that? You don't want to work in podcasting because you want to go back to filmmaking? And he's like, no, you're a terrible boss and human being. What's that? I can't, we're breaking up. <laughs> so that guy who's an awesome dude, um, I think might be one of the people who like has some work for him, but it wouldn't, he's, he's employable. I'm just saying it's not like, but if Brendan's taking credit for that, <laughs> go fuck yourself, Brendan. Oh yes, he's taking credit for it. We saw that. Uh, yeah. So R.I.P. George, are you a guy who frequents the T Fact Reddit? The Bop of this. The yeah. Bop of this, baby. It's a deep dark scary. What is your uh, theory of how this thing has survived so long? Because I know, do you feel like it's kind of keeping Brendan alive? It's had this weird turn where it originally was to make fun of him, and now it's kind of yeah. giving him I, life. I, I, and you know, people like tune in. And I always said, like, look, if you were going to pay me to do something, just to use my brain, like for the best bang for your buck would be sitting in a room for eight hours a day and come up with outside of the box ideas to turn this sinking ship around. Instead of having me check your social media all day, maybe come up with an idea like each week, uh, every episode, I want you to go and find the funniest comment on this subreddit and I want you to fucking read it out loud and see if it makes either of you laugh. Because it'd be funny if Brian laughs and Brendan doesn't or Brendan laughs and Brian doesn't. Like Instead, they treat it like the boogeyman right? Instead of participating in, in a community, which is what a subreddit is, you actively ignore it and then demonize it while they're telling the truth about you and making fun of you, right? I used to do a segment on my Haters Will Say podcast called Hater of the Week, where I'd take somebody who was like, like I had a shit talking exchange with and I'd read it out loud. I'd also write a segment called Hey That Hurts, where I'd write a bunch of fake insults about me and say that people sent them to me, you know, like um, making fun That's of my- That's pretty funny, actually. You know, like I, I look like a circumcised penis looking for circumcised penises. Um, she, you know, just like stupid, but I'd be like, Hey, like I pretend like that one hurt, you know, that really hurt. Um, but it was just a chance for me to like do a monologue, but I'm like, Hey, Brendan, here's how you lean into something. If people are talking shit about you online, don't run away from it, lean into it and then do it yourself to Sell yourself. merchandise. What the fuck? Exactly. Like, yeah, it's such a stupid, it's like, Oh, and for like, Hey, wait a minute. Have you ever sold big gay lion merch? No, but I would in a sec. I mean, in a fucking heartbeat. Like, how could if I ever did sell merch, I'd be the first thing, like, and I I'd even that like, feel bad about it because I'd be R. like, R.I.P. George, would you buy a big gay lion merch? Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, it might be frowned upon by the Bapovists. They don't like the. Hey, you got to be a contrarian. You got to go be a rebel. Go against. That would be fun, actually. If wear it on, ironically. But um, Mark is a controversial figure in the Bop of this. He's a con you know what oh, I would I know. do? I, I would do say, know. I would say uh, if I put out a BGL shirt, I would donate it to literal homeless cats. Because, you know, I'm a homeless cat advocate in real life. I, I take cats off the street. I always have. Like, I, my, my oldest cat, Spider, is a, is a rescue. I literally took from a homeless guy. I bought it for 20 bucks. I, I was is that uh -huh. hard in my ignorance? But is, is that what it's named after? No, oh, I know reference. the P.F. Chang's reference. Yes. I'll tell you what homeless cats, people, I don't understand. When people criticize you on the internet, this is Bob speaking. He goes, when people criticize you on the internet. It's like, it's like, who the fuck cares about your opinion? It's like, it's like a homeless guy or a fucking cat. So the two lowest things to him in life are homeless people and cats. I didn't know about this. I didn't know the story of that originally, but like, I'm a lifelong cat lover. I've had cats ever since I was a kid. Like, cats are by far my favorite animal. If I had to pick one that I'd always have, it, oh, I've, Four cats currently in. So he hates cats, and so he's saying so they're yeah, saying so, we're the homeless cats that he hates. Correct. It's like uh, okay. you're insignificant, and that's why the phrase "we do not matter" because he said you guys just don't matter. You're like a homeless person or a cat. I go, man, that's crazy because like you back that up to when my cat spider went missing for eight days, and I talked about it on my podcast, not knowing if the cat would live or die. I was like, he escaped. I went to walk him at night. I usually walked him at four. Like he sprinted off after another cat. 
And then it started to rain really heavy. It was in January. It was like one of the most, like when you look for a lost cat, you know, if you, I know if you're into cats, if you're not, this will just seem like I'm a crying pussy or something. But like, you have to go out and look for a cat in the middle of the night, every single night, like, and go over the same route in the same holes and the same, like, cause cats can hide so well. So you're just like essentially driving yourself insane. And every moment you're not looking for it, like you, you feel guilty. So you're like running in shifts with your partner and you're like, like some of the videos that Luana put online were like fights, like from that period where it's like, we both haven't slept in fucking three days and we're like snapping at each other. Like it's your fault. It's your, you know, like shit like that happens. That's real life, you know? And we ended up, I ended up making the decision to be like, I'm just going to talk about what's going on in my life. Like my cat's missing. It could be next week. I'm going to tell you it's dead because we hired like an actual pet detective to like with bloodhounds and shit. And, and they were the, she was the person to give us hope to be like, no, I'm not finding any signs that it was like any signs it was eaten nearby by a Cody, you know? So like, she was actually like, keep going. This, the cat's probably alive. We ended up finding it like a block away, hiding deep in these bushes. And there's a video I made where we get him back in the house and I'm filming the video and you can hear me and my wife like crying. Like I'm like crying in the background because it was a super emotional moment. He played that on TFAT K and laughed at me and mocked my wife and claimed it. She was like, she's like, oh, oh, hell, hell. No, cause she's German. Like that was his idea of like, he's like, oh, spiders, man. I was like, that's <laughs> mind wiped. It was like, here's a man crying after losing his pet. Think like it's like being reunited with your kid after thinking your kid was like dead and rubble or something. Like, and he was like, ha, ah, I know, I can make a Hitler joke now. I'm like, dude, you got it down, man. You got this comedy shit down. But what I would do to answer that question is, if I made a, a BGL shirt, it'd be a cool thing to be like, all proceeds go to a specific. There are a few pages that I follow that are like cat rescue pages. You know, and the one I'm sitting to right now, Yoko is actually a cat that we got uh, and had a terminal illness when it was very young and there's no FDA approved medicine for this. So we had to like go to a black market source to get this FIP medicine. Like, but the doctors basically, the vets was like, yeah, your cat's going to die. We're like, no, that's not going to happen. And so we had to like inject this cat for 80 nights in a row, the super painful injection, you know, but it was like, that's a rescue cat. You know what I mean? And we, we, we cured it from a terminal illness and. So that would be something where I hope I'm not going to try to monetize this out because I don't believe in, you know, if I want to participate, then I have to abide by the rules of it. Um, but I would use any type of thing like that to raise money for actual homeless cats and let that irony sink in. Mark, do you miss working it? At Thick Boy? No, I don't at all because it was, it was the most miserable time of my life. Me and Isaiah, who I make skits with, will joke about this. He's like, oh, dude, I just saw this skit. I was like watching a skit from when you was like peak Brendan, like hated your life, depression. You're like, you know, you're lighter. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't working out. Like I looked pale. I looked fucking drawn out. Like I wasn't lifting. I was, I was like, this. like his, the job was like ruining my life, you know? So I don't miss it at all. He was, and that's what Brendan does. He gradually wears people down over time, you know? And if you're, if you're under his payroll, he thinks he owns your life. So he's like, and he explained what I did to the social media manager once, like this new, like guru of the month that he brought in. And he's like, whoa, 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 he's doing what? Like, that's like seven different people's jobs. You need to cut that in half immediately. Like at least, you know, like, and she's like, how is he even keeping afloat with all that shit? You know? And, but it had never occurred to him. And I have that in a recording by the way that I could put out, but it's like, cause he later fired me. It was like, oh yeah, Mark wasn't like doing his job. I'm like, that's so crazy. Cause you said I was actually doing seven people's jobs two months ago, you know? <laughs> like so um it's a just a weird lie to you know to to put out there but do i miss it no it was cool meeting fighter that's the coolest thing i got to meet sean strickland i got to meet alexander volkanovsky i got to meet fucking cheeto vera i got to meet so many cool guys and i was the guy that like would take them like when brendan was shooting the intro to food truck diaries i got to like hang out with them one-on-one -on -one. like the, mark bring the guy back to the studio that was me who like escorted like i would greet them i would escort them i would take them in and get to talk to them one-on-one -on -one. like so many mma fighters are such cool dudes they're just like chill you know what i mean it's like they fight for a living like they're not you know arrogant douchebags like for the most part um it sean strickland made fun of me when i first met him he's like what do you do around here besides having nuts the size of raisins i was like it's a little interesting for a first comment you know a little spicy but knowing him now i'm like it's hilarious that he just opens up with that because he was like that the whole time to everyone and it made us all uncomfortable because he started roasting Brendan to his face. Like there was, if you look at the Sean Strickland food truck diaries episode, know that there's about 30 minutes of on the editing floor where he's ripping on Brendan 
he was going, one of the lines was, I remember he was like, because he'd, he knows how to fucking cut a promo, so he'd like see the head on camera. Instead of facing Brennan, when he wanted to go on a rant, he'd be like, look, motherfucker, like, I'm talking to you right here. Like, he's so good at this shit, and he was so funny, but he was like, this motherfucker, like, he's, a, he's like, I'm trying to put motherfuckers to sleep in an octagon. This guy's putting the people to sleep at a fucking comedy store, you know? Like, <laughs> so he was like, he like made this joke about Brennan, like, sucking at stand up like a dozen times, and they cut it all out. <laughs> It was fucking like later, and Brendan was like, "Dude, I was fucking, I was like ready to fight this guy." It's like, good thing you didn't, because he would have whooped your fucking ass. Like that day, you didn't know it, because like, oh, is this like Sean Strickland would have beat the brakes off of Brendan? I guarantee it. But he was like, so you know, the the interview ends up being really good because he gets super open about his childhood and like it was a cool thing to witness and witness things like that. And like meet Volkanovsky on, that was the first day I ever worked there. I got to meet Volkanovsky and he did a couple of videos with me that I posted. Like he was like in on the joke, you know what I mean? He was cool. And he was like a super down to earth chill guy. I'm like, man, all these guys are cool. Like way cooler than Brandon, you know, Tim Kennedy, Michael Chandler. So that's the only part I missed was cool people come into that place. And even like Dalia, like whatever his personal issues are, my memory of Chris Dalia is he was always fucking nice to me. He would like repost my shit. He like cut an ad for me for this clothing brand that was sponsoring me. Like he like went out of his way to be nice to me. So I'm like, I can't, what can I say about him as far as my personal experience? It was the opposite of what Brendan did. Brendan never promoted me or like shared my podcast. Like, so Chris D'Elia promoted me to his followers more than <laughs> Brendan Schaub did as far as my own comedy podcast, you know, or my own like fitness comedy podcast. So uh, did you see that George posted a selfie with a cop? And do you think he will turn against Papa. I don't think he'll turn against Papa. Uh, no, because I think I am fundamentally have a different personality type than George. I'm much more um, prone to relishing in certain kinds of confrontation, especially like online that can go back and forth. You know, it's like we can meet up in line. We can talk in person. I, I will confront you physically. I'll confront you verbally. I'll confront you like in a debate online. This is all like and, uh, uh, you know, Chris, you know what I'm talking about. As an ENTP, we tend to see debate as sport, right? We tend to see, like, like it's cool, man. Just name the rules, right? It's like, what's, what are the rules? Are we sticking to one topic or are we doing all, like, but the vast majority of people aren't like that. And George is very geared towards wanting harmony. So he'll never go bad on Brennan because he probably doesn't even see himself as wrong. I just had the wherewithal to meditate on it and go, you know what? Like, maybe I'm the asshole here or maybe I'm not. And then I have Lana telling me what she thought and she hated Brendan for a long, long time. And it missed my job there. And the stress he put on me caused a lot of friction in our relationship. It caused a lot of the fights um, because he was taking up so much time and energy from me. And she was like, you're not, you're being a, a worse partner because of this job, which is a, it, you know, it's a fair and accurate statement. Um, but George, I don't think feels aggrieved. We can look at the outside and say like, you got done dirty, but he probably looks at it as still as a good opportunity. And there's a, there's an argument for that. It's just the tact of what Brendan did. It's not his obligation to hire this person forever. However, you would expect somebody to at least call you or, or, or get you back in person or have the wherewithal to go, hey, before the holidays, just because this is going to help you logistically. But in his mind, he's like, oh, I don't want to ruin his Christmas. Well, you did. You did ruin his Christmas time because you fired him after he went home. Now he has to fly back and move all his shit out or find another job. Like, you fucked the guy, right? And, and bought a car with a quarter million dollars. I mean, that sums it all up, right? You you go, oh man, we can't afford, to, but what I can do is trick out a car for a quarter million dollars for content on the dude. I know you didn't put it on TV, but what was it? What's the new car, the Dodge? What is it? Uh, Venom or Satan or Demon? Dodge Demon, is that what it is? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So. Super expensive car. It's a nice car. I got the the Dodge Charger. I want yeah. the Demon. The Demon's dope. Yeah. So it looks like everybody wants a car. So he was really like, but again, he's making content out of this. It isn't like, you know, I get it. He's into cars, but it's just people have pointed out this funny mismatch um, where it's like, he likes the appearance of cars. He liked the appearance of me. He likes seeing, oh, who's this ripped guy? Because like at the time that Chappelle introduced me to him, I was like 8% body fat. I was running every day. Like I, even I looked different. It was like, I had the abs that he wanted. I'm not saying I'm super ripped now, but it's like, like he he goes, I like the way that thing looks. Give it to me. I like the way that car looks. Give it to me. Do you know anything about mach machinery or or motors or combustion engines or can you can you actually change your own oil? Yes, I, I I do all that shit. I I I would I'm bet into a, cars. I bet a hundred bucks. I bet five hundred bucks. He doesn't know how to change his own oil. 
I'd go as far as to say that. I don't know for a fact, but I'd bet 500. Mark, would you be willing to answer some hard hitting questions? Hard-hitting you questions. don't have to answer them, but I'm I'm gonna yeah. ask you one of them because this is funny. Uh Swendig from the chat says, Did Brendan hook up with Kalila? No. I definitely no. would have known about that, that. He tried to. He came at her heart. Like, so what she said on Trash Tuesday, here's my 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 the only trug, the trug walk was towards uh the blonde. Correct. Any other woman. And that's also true. His defense, Andy, yeah. Andy you know, his defense, like he basically said he owned up to the Kalila thing because that was messages. Like what she said was true. I just feel like it was like it was a little bit inappropriate to me to be like they like named him out. He's got you know it's like it's a little bit ethically like because I didn't name him for cheating by the way. Like somebody else, I like a side chick of his was like was he just seeing me? And that's where I said all these addies and baddies screenshots to. Then they sent it to somebody who posted on Reddit. I didn't out Brendan for cheating or talk about it openly. So I'm like, that's your relationship. But then he also like, when he then had shit to say about me privately that I found out where I'm like, oh, you crossed a line where it's like, I'm going to burn the fucking bridge down now, bitch. Um, but initially, I think about these things. I think about whether it's appropriate or not to to out somebody. And um, now I'm forgetting the original question. <laughs> Could you remind me of it? <laughs> it was if uh, Brendan hooked oh, up yeah. with Kalila. He didn't hook up with her. He denied hitting on Annie Letterman, but I went in his DMs because I had access to his IG and saw that he'd sent her a peach emoji at some point in response to a photo of her in a bikini or something like that. So he flirted with her in the DMs. He tried. She told, like, I'm like, why would she just make that up, right? And then he, his excuse is basically like, it's like a rapist going like, would I rape her? She's too ugly. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't make, you know, he goes, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Why would I? I'm like, because I've seen the girls you've hooked up with and you're a sex addict, like, you know, and you also have a terrible memory. So it's possible, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, it's possible he doesn't remember doing it, but it's like, from my perspective, you would have fucked my wife if you could. Like, Luana will always talk about it. She's like, oh yeah, Brendan was staring this, like, giving me fuck eyes all night. Like, the first time we ever went, we saw him uh, perform at a club in Tacoma, and this is the first time that Luana was tipped off to his cheating, because, like, she's like, what is this chick doing in the green room? I'm like, I don't know. Like, ask, ask fucking Brendan. I've never met her before. And uh, so, but just kind of playing like, I'm like, I don't know what the, like, I, I honestly don't know who this person is. I don't know how she got there. I don't know what the relationship is. We haven't discussed that. That's an honest fact. She later befriends this girl and confirms it. Uh-huh. I got a positive comment here and you can continue. Uh, Adam, uh, BGL, there's a lot of us that got your back, B. A lot of cooks might not accept you as an employee at Chang's, but you've proven yourself. You put your work in here at the Kitchen Bro Fam. Much love. That's from Adam. That yeah, is I true. That is true. He has a lot of support. There's a, a there's lot a of... Big bag. That's, that's one of the things that Brennan has a hard time wrapping his mind around is the idea that the it was presented I'm as looking. Like a bunch of crazy people, right? When I in reality, it's too. like it's a diverse group of people. That 150,000, there's some people who are going to hate me for the rest of their life for whatever reason. There's people who reach out to me privately. There's people who are indifferent towards me. There's people like on all over the spectrum. And it's probably the same with Brendan too. Like there's guys who I think uh, started out, a lot of people probably started out as fans on the subreddit and then slowly saw him change and become like, I wouldn't say change, I would say reveal. I think he's always been like this and that like, Stories of him like throwing that guy through a glass door in college. It's like, you've always been a bully. You've always been a bully who sees himself as the victim or sees like, it, it's funny that I fucked with this guy and ate all his food and then and then threw him through a glass door. It's like, are you like writing a scene to be a dick in a high school movie? Like, what the fuck? How are you like sympathetic in that story? So you can see that for his entire life, he's had this pattern. He, he once told me the story or Jay told me, number one, what a shitty worker is. Yeah, the, they had some sort of manual labor job where they were like, it involved like trucks and moving, maybe it's like setting up for events or like moving or some shit like that. But it's like, you'd have to lift shit and put it in a truck. And like, you had some, you know, a hard shitty job like Chris and I have had before. And uh, those jobs suck. However, you show up and you do it, right? You don't fucking bitch. You don't try to like hide around the corner, do less work. You fucking just get your hands dirty and fucking do the job. The way Jay told it, and Jay's actually really honest. Um, I've never heard Jay tell a liar an exaggeration that I'm aware of. Um, Jay was like, yeah, Brendan would always fucking like pretend he's taking a shit to take time off work and like hide in the corner or like go like jerk off somewhere. Like, and he's kind of corroborated this shit with like other fuck off stuff he'd do at jobs to like get out of working. And I'm like, holy fuck, Mr. Like work ethic, right? You just can't even hold the job down. But he said they used to hate like the guy, the owner. They didn't say anything he did. They were just like, oh, he like told us what to do. So he's the bad guy. And 
Brendan, Jay said Brendan took his cigarettes because he'd smoked his cigarettes all day. He put the filter of the cigarette in his asshole and then put put it back into the cigarette case. So I'm like, the crime of this guy telling you to do your job was worthy enough to put his cigarettes on your butthole and then put them back in the pack so that he would have like your butthole juice on his mouth. Like, I, I get it again. It's like if we're in a fucking movie and you're the bully, like fucking with somebody or something, or that guy's like the evil villain. I get it, but like it just sounds like you're a shitty employee who doesn't like to do his job. You know what I mean? End of that story. <laughs> There's more here. Um, uh, Adam said that another guy told me to go back twice. Lossless, can you ask Mark why the only reason he knows Jimmer is because he willingly tried to weaponize him against his wife? Oh, he Lossless. was already making videos against me. He was already making videos about me. So I just, I just, I commented on his page. Uh, the only reason I know Jimmer is because he. he always- wait, he continues. He says, "Who was airing him out because he busted him cheating?" This is Wu Tang saying this. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of old news. It's like he was making drama content about me before this. He would mock me and make negative videos, including me, refer to me as BGL and look at this fucking idiot, redact blah blah. And then he took advantage of my situation. Luana did put uh, videos to make me look in a bad light. And the whole, even the whole cheating thing, it's like, yeah, guess what? Like, we had a relationship that was just toxic. We stepped out of outside of the relationship at multiple points. We both did. We've owned up to that. We've gone to therapy about it. And we're now, uh, you know, back together and looking towards a, a future. It's just like it's been uh, a renegotiation of our relationship uh, for the past, you know, six months, let's say. But... Um, it's not like if he's like going, Oh my God, like, well, you brought it on yourself. Cause you're like, yeah, if you see a video about yourself and you're seeing one side of the story and you make a comment on it, like, Hey, uh, there's more to the story than you, you know, anybody reading this, like I can provide evidence to the contrary. It was that sort of thing. Then he reaches out to me on IG and is like, what else do you, you I could help you out with the video. I'm like, well, that sounds good. Sure. So it's not like, it's like, I was, I looked at him. I'm like, oh, thanks. You're helping me out. Like by telling the other side of the story, because like, I'm not in a mental space to do this right now. Like, and this feels I'm getting, you got to remember, I'm getting like thousands of messages a day telling me I'm a piece of shit. Like, and I should kill myself and all this stuff. Like it was a really low time to it, it, at the moment. Like I experienced what people feel like in like on a very small scale, but you like, if you have some sort of controversy and you have even a hundred people DM you in a day saying, you're a piece of shit, kill yourself. You feel kind of like the whole world is looking at you and like you want to disappear. You know what I mean? So you're, you're really, it's a low point. You don't feel like you want to go outside and have to drag my out. I was like, at least I have to work out. I'd wait till the fucking gym was just about to close and go and work out. Cause I'm like, fuck, you got to at least do one thing today. But I really had to put like one step in front of the other because it was such a low time for me. And I felt like I was being really unfairly portrayed. And again, a couple of moments that went viral, like me, like behind her car, it's like, well, the other side of that story is she's making it seem like I was trying to trap her. She took my keys and wallet and cell phone and locked me out of the apartment. So I was just trying to get that, right? So it's like these little things like that where I'm like, this is a funny viral moment. I get it. But like, also, what would you do if somebody stole your shit and locked you out of your apartment? Would you just be like, see ya? And she's also going to go to the you know Sequoia National Forest for three days. So that I, I thought she was disappearing for the entire weekend to go on a trip. Um uh-huh. I've got uh so here I got a positive and not a negative, but kind of a weird question. So Adam says BGL was just another sacrifice Brendan does every day to people. Fortunately, BGL was able to hold his own and speak his mind. In a few years, George will be will feel very similar to this. That's from Adam. And then yeah. the other one was Wu Tang says. Ask Mark why he keeps so many recordings and messages of people for leverage. Oh, yeah, that's not a leverage thing. That's a safety thing. I, I would encourage anybody if you feel like. What's he referring to, though? Oh, I have because anytime I'd have an encounter with Luana, like, uh, for example. Oh, like that? If we have a dust up or something. It's like if, if I'm with somebody and things are getting dangerous and I have to be like, I just like this might lead to a situation where I have to prove that yeah, I domestic. Violence. Yeah, this is like. I would never, yeah, I, I, th- these are for my own safety. Cause if you walk into a room and you see me and a hundred pound girl and she goes, he hit me, you know, like whatever it is, like, but you don't even have to say anything. Please don't even believe walk, her. Yeah. I walk into a situation and have to assume there's a large man here. We have to like, so I have to like, when, if, if you ever are in a situation with the police and you look like me, you have to be extremely 
um, deferential, right? Like there, I, you cannot risk doing anything, but I never want to interact with the police, right? So I have to defend myself by recording and, and uh, you know, and that goes for any situation. I, I was going to tell you a story earlier about almost getting in a fight with a guy because he, like he came swing, he at like 7 a.m., he came, he, he check swung me with a golf club from the back of his trunk after like initiating a fight with me. That's one where like, I also recorded that, you know, like, but there was no space on my phone. I was trying to I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, there's security cameras back here. Cause this guy looks like he's getting a gun from the back of his car. Um, but that's the similar, you know, theme is film yourself and film the situation. If you feel like you may need that evidence uh, later, you know, to save yourself, not to leverage. Cause I never leverage anything over her. There maybe one time after, like, you know, I was like, hey, are we going to fucking behave ourselves? Like, she has some recording of me being like, can we, can we behave? Can we not do this? Otherwise, like, you know, like. Dude, the, way, the way he make he's making it sound like you have videos of everybody you speak to that you just record oh. them privately for oh, leverage. I, yeah. For example, I recorded. That's the insinuation. I, I recorded a conversation where the after i was almost fired with brendan i'm like i know he's about to say a bunch of bullshit to my face and the oh, line, business stuff, business stuff i would too yeah exactly so i have recordings of that any any situation where i go when it's money's possible, involved yeah, it's yeah. a possibility that somebody is going to misrepresent what happened here in the future i'm going to record that for my own safety to prove that i'm telling the truth and the other person is lying so brendan tell me why you fired me again say it out loud <laughs> say it with your chest brendan for and the guy said it in his comment for leverage that's the whole purpose yeah, to yeah, have leverage sure. in a business scenario or that. domestic violence scenario you need leverage right it's that's also not called, a negative term yeah yeah it's just it's called having evidence that the other person is lying oh yeah there's people who's been who've been fired and on just like false bullshit and if they wouldn't have had a recording to be like no this is not what happened yeah. I, rem I remember hearing a story about uh it was like the h3 podcast had this like big lawsuit with the it was called the bb something it was like a media corporation that was like handling all their sponsorships for it was a network for like multiple like podcasts yeah. and they found out that they were defrauding them out of like six hundred thousand yeah. dollars and so ethan got on a call with the owner of the company and recorded yeah. the fucking call without them knowing because it's a one-party consent state Right. And luckily that he had that call, he was able to play it on his show. And guess what happened? The next day they issued the 600 grand back to him in his bank account. And yeah. so leverage. If, that's all in the same situation where it's like, if you're dealing with potentially a bad faith actor, it's in your own best interest. Even if technically you're breaking the law, it's like, well, I wouldn't, I would never use any of this thing unless you made a false claim against me, unless you broke the law and defamed me, would I then break the law and release a private recording? right in response to your bad faith action so someone in the chat mentioned that it appears to me that Gemma preys on people who are vulnerable Correct. say for example someone going through a tough time single moms yep yeah i was at my lowest point in my life i like i'm not going to say ever say that i was suicidal but like i because I go like, what do I, what, what else do I want out of life to be, you know, alive today in this generation with this technology and, you know, to be someone who lives in America, I, I count my blessings every day. I really do. But so I go like, what, what would I get? You know, <laughs> even if I believe in, in God or reincarnation or whatever, it's like, I'm really, I'm really saying fuck you to, you know, whoever created me and put me in America in 2024 if I kill myself. So I don't really have those thoughts, but I have I know what it's like to suicidally ideate when you're going through a really tough time and be like, man, this would be easier to get through if I just wasn't here, you know? So in that state of mind, someone comes along and is like, hey man, how are you? It's like, oh, that's cool. Like someone's caring about me, you know? Like it's, it's, you, you seem like a nice guy. And that's what he went really out of his way to, again, manipulate me and make me think he was something that he wasn't, which of course I'm gonna be receptive to because like I, assume people like so many people are nice to me every day that it's like oh it's just another person being nice it just happened to be at a point where there were more people saying like fuck you fuck you fuck you and there was a, a couple you know a few voices going hey man i got your back and i was like cool i'm gonna remember that i'm you know and there are still a few people who i keep in contact with J uh jimmer nam is the only one who like turned out to be a psychopath you know yeah i would say that uh, befriending him was clearly a mistake on your part and i think it was a mistake yeah and i should have known the biggest red flag was he kept saying trust me you can trust me anybody that has to tell you you can trust me isn't worthy of your trust 
A lot of us homeless cats noticed you were in that state and we were pulling for you. And I think that some of the ways that you handled it, uh, I think maybe were regrettable. And, uh, yes. you know, it's an unfortunate situation. But, you know, a lot of us cats really like you, BGL. And don't worry, uh, you know, a lot of us have your back. I appreciate that. And yes, of course, um, in retrospect, there's a million you things. Are, in you, are, you are a hero. You are not a villain. Some cats think you're a villain. You are a hero. Thank you. And I tend to think like, yeah. So to me, it's like, I don't need to be the hero, but when people make me out to be a villain, I'm like, there's might be something off with how you're perceiving me. Cause I like, I've, I, to me, I feel like I try to live by at least principled behavior. And when I break those principles, I can own up to them in the past 12 months, there are a million mistakes that I would go back and correct. Right. Even just from when, when Luana caught me cheating, um, and she said, come back here and fix this right now. And I didn't because she was with her mom and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be berated and this is already over. And she just wants to like, you know, verbally abuse me for the next, uh, you know, few months. Like, so I made the decision to not return and fix the situation. I go, even, even just that one, right. That would have saved the whole thing from happening. But there's also like, when you're in a, an altered state, either depression or mania, or people are attacking you, it's like, it puts you into a position where you go, you know, you can easily look in retrospect and go, I mishandled that. If I could give advice to myself eight months ago, hey, do this instead of that, right? But there's there's too many things to count, <laughs> you know. Hello. But yeah, I do. Yeah. Of course, I take accountability. Like, if there's any specific thing that anybody points out to me, where like you fucked up on this, like I can take it item by item. I'm just saying there's too many items to go through off the top of my head. But it's like you know, it's like. If I had a fucking time machine, I would alter. Believe me, you know there there are many steps along this path that I would alter, but you don't. But I can if I've wronged anybody, you know I'm man enough to apologize to them personally, as I've done uh, repeatedly and profuse, profusely with Luana, and she vice versa. She's taken accountability for things that she's done, and we've worked with a therapist, and that's what I think adults do. You know, we've cleared the air. There's nothing that we don't know about each other anymore. You know, and and you know anyone trying to weaponize uh, no. like, yeah go ahead i i didn't want to cross the line but uh, i guess you said it yourself it seems like you guys are back together and have reconciled yes yes um and again things were kind of more like treating it like we're dating for a while you know and like not necessarily like committing to each other and kind of just like going okay we split we came back like let's take this step by step and let's not announce it to the world and kind of be like you know but by the time that I posted, it was like, she wanted me to post because she was like, I don't think you're taking this seriously. I think you're still talking to the girls. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, I'll, I'll post you right now if you want. So that's that's the origin. And then that's when, I think this was in October because that's when Jim and Nam started making videos about me again. I'm like, bro, like get the fuck off my, the last thing I texted you was no, in response to you asking me to come on your live stream after I found out that you were going behind my back. And now you keep making fucking content like about me and Luana getting back to you, like that's what you're desperate for clicks for to like, like berate me in a video because I'm like, I, I, I got over my differences with somebody like, and so I just, I texted him after that. I was like, yo bro, this is sociopathic shit. Like get off my fucking he nuts, was, man. I'm sorry. Well, he's something. probably jealous. He was pissed that you got back together. Cause he was trying to fuck her. He seemed like, so I can't, crazy. He yeah. thought he actually had a chance to it. it yeah, this shows the not, delusion it, levels of this guy. It's in, it's insane. I know that he definitely was like in, suggesting we should meet up in person. It's like, but then you're like, oh, she talks so much. She's so annoying. I'm like, then why would you try to meet her in person? I got a question her. here from the chat, by the way. I just want to keep yeah. people uh, involved. Silence da, da Good says, Mark, what comments specifically led to your Reddit ban and what are your thoughts on that? Plan on returning to Chang's? You already have, uh, right? I already oh. have. Yeah. And the Reddit ban, I believe, was it might have been for. So they give you a general thing. I couldn't see the specific thing that I posted, but somebody said it, the, the thing was for harassment. It might have been for posting a cash app request to Brendan because I guess, like, I don't know if I put the. <laughs> It's like, but it's just like dollar sign Brendan shop. So like, wait, that's the private info. <laughs> like, like, but they considered a doxing or something. Yeah, like maybe that or like it's a public I, I, cash app is a public. Yeah, I talk, you know, I get all these strikes. Reddit's actually pretty permissive because if you say the word like, like tonight, I was like, I posted a picture of myself in 2012 and said, uh, not gonna lie, I'd fuck 2012 me. It 
Instagram auto tells you, are you sure you want to post that? It looks like other captions that have been taken out. I'm like, I'm talking about fucking myself. What are you talking about? And then I had to put like an asterisk in the middle and post it. But I've taken, I've had so many things taken down off IG for using like fuck, pussy, bitch, saying like, you know, someone's like, hey, you're a bitch. You're like, no, you're a bitch. It's like your comment has been removed and you're restricted from, you know, I'm like, like you don't have free speech on tech. And Reddit's actually relatively permissive. And I, I appealed my permanent ban because I was going on there going, I, I can't comment anywhere. And people are mocking me like, how'd Reddit go? How'd Reddit go? It's like, I would have been okay either fucking way. Like, I don't live my life on Reddit like you fucking dorks. And not saying that's you. I'm just saying like, there's a, a small percentage of the subreddit where it's like, dude, you seriously need to get a life. If you're obsessing well, that, over- That is me. And I will say- <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, are you, uh, was- is Rip George, are you a, a guy- no one reason. on the Reddit, or would you? Or you don't no, want to share that? No, I lurk. I lurk, but okay. I'm, lurk. I'm very well versed. Okay. Lur- lurkers are totally different. What I realize is, commenters, people who even comment on any post, hey, that's a small percentage. Um, lots of people lurk. Lots of people laugh, and those are the guys who like reach out to me and like you're doing right now. I said you'll talk to me. We'll have a normal conversation. Guys DM me all the time. I'll shoot this shit with them. People hit me up for fitness advice. I'm like, dude, I love this shit. I love helping people out. Like, actually, like, I go like, you want to come to me and go like, hey, let me get a source. Let me get some advice. Where should I start? Oh, I'm doing this. Like, that's that's a fun game for me to like do while I'm like doing my cardio in the morning. You know what I mean? So to make me out to be a villain, it's like, or like, instead of talking shit to me, like, ask me some fitness advice because you sound unhappy. You know what I mean? When a guy's talking shit to me anonymously on a Reddit page, like after like two years, it's like, oh my God, dude. Like, what, what, honestly, what is going on in life that you feel the need to obsess over me, who's a fucking nobody, you know? Well, also, uh, BGL, and I say that as a term of endearment, BGL, oh, yeah. I, I, be- I believe that you might have gotten banned before maybe accidentally leaving in the personal information or the tag of George's mother. You might want to be Oh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, that could be it, that could be it. Um, so be I, I got, we, we don't want you to be, get banned. No, so no, we got, I, um, I don't follow the rules, yeah. So we yeah. got uh, May in the backstage, uh, Jimmer's ex-girlfriend. But first, I want to go through some more comments here. So Adam says, I'm going to go through all of them and you can answer. And if you want me to repeat one, uh, Adam says, how can he afford all of this, including a friggin' CFO for a YouTube channel? He has three kids to support and he's buying expensive cars. He has to be using all of his podcast ones payout. Um, Wu-Tang says, lossless, like, why did it matter? Why get your mom involved and screenshot you ask her to help you win an online argument? Um, Wooting says, or you can ask him about why he DMs kids with instructions how to buy steroids on the dark web. Uh, again, asking on behalf of my underage brother. Bullshit. Uh, lossless. Also, he was he was doing this on Reddit with specific instructions. Probably a reason he was banned. No, that's not true. Everybody uh, knows how to get anybody, on the dark anybody web. Told that, anybody told me, hey, I'm 16 and going on Sarah, that's if my first advice is talk to me in 10 Can years. I see Adam in chat? Yes, I see Adam in but chat. If you, want to, if you want to prove any of that. And Nobody's say, you know, banned. Again, make a ridiculous statement like I give, you know, people have said this shit before. It's like, you harassing a kid. I'm like, either put up or shut up. If you're going to say I was harassing a kid, like I've heard this type of shit from trolls before. It's like, you better post the fucking screenshots or shut the entire fuck up. Because if you're an adult, who wants to procure performance enhancing drugs safely and and you're in a you're a consenting adult who understands the risks of this i can go yeah somebody like me has maybe done it like this mm. um you can explain the method of how to it get to it and yeah, do it you just dealer, obviously like, can't right. show you doing it or like you can't yeah. Incriminate because yourself I, I of doing that. it. That's, I believe. And I don't still, believe. then they'd have to find out and prove that yeah, they did it. Yeah, it's like it's like teaching is. It's like saying like you need Google. a Google. Yeah, it's like you need a medication. Okay, what if you needed insulin, but it costs a thousand bucks a month and you couldn't afford that? Would it be unethical for me to go like, here's how you get it from a cheaper source in India? You know, you're like, is that is that something? I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, that's how I look at it. It's like these are people who want this for their life. Often these are guys in their 30s, 40s, 50s who come to me. Says ask, just because you like the guy, it's not BS. No, it's BS because I feel like this idea that sharing information on how to get on tour when it's public, publicly yeah. accessible. A lot of people are confused. Also, it's like on Google and like gives a shit. And I also feel like it's disingenuous because I feel like you don't actually care about yeah. that. But it's yeah, like a point, I also know, it's a point example, to contend him about. I know something. how sixteen-year-olds talk. For example, I know how sixteen-year-old types. 
a 16 year old who can talk at the eight, like at, 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 a, at a level um, that mimics a 30 year old isn't the same kid who's trying to get on testosterone, right? So it's like, I can already vet you just by the manner in which you discuss things with me. I can tell which, which, that you're you know, of legal age. If you ever told me your age, and I've talked to many teenagers who go, I was thinking about taking SARMs and I'm gonna go, let me tell you why that's the opposite thing that you need right now. Let me help you with your diet, your training, your uh, your mesocycles of, of uh, training blocks. You know, let me see some form of you deadlifting. Maybe I can help you there. But like, if you're thinking about hopping on steroids at, 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 as a teenager, first step is do not do that and fix everything else. Unless you want to be an IFBB pro by the age of 25, that's a different conversation. And I would talk to another IFBB pro about how to go about that. But I'm talking about guys in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s who go, I want a little, you know, like, hey, can I get something like you do? And I tell them what I take and I say, here's how I get it, you know? Um, uh, here says, Adam says, all good, bro. You're helping us at Chang's with this. We don't discriminate. Brenda does. Oh, That's except true. Brenda. Yeah. Um, Matt says, I, no, you added yourself on accident. You still want to come up, Matt? I'll be glad to have you up here. Let's see if he wants to join. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but, uh, let me know. You can type. In oh chat. no, um, I do. I just I didn't mean to add myself. Uh, I forgot we we're like <laughs> that. I could do that. I went to go adjust my audio, and I just added myself to the stage. Mm -hmm. So this is Jim Renam's, uh recent ex girlfriend that he filmed yes. all the videos about, yes. for yeah, yeah, and which, is, which is really weird because he made such a big deal about me filming um, Luana when I was doing that for my safety and also for her safety because there was times when like you know there were other people involved in the in the filming yeah. that I thought. I needed to do this like for everyone's safety involved and um myself included but it's like i trust me i didn't want i didn't want anybody to see some of these videos the fact that he filmed you and and put that online in the way he did i mean i was watching that and really like it it, it struck me emotionally you know that uh that, it, that he would treat another human being like that but i think it's just par for the course but i i'll just say that i really sympathized with how callously he was treating you thank you so much i appreciate hearing that because I feel like worse some days because I feel like a lot of people were triggered by seeing that and that that's what he does to people he he like he people get uh traumatized by this man all over the place yeah. whether they just witness something he's doing or or something that he does to someone else like I've never seen anything like it yeah there are there are definitely moral consequences to the actions that he takes yeah. liberally and I go and you're doing this for like what does that have like 600 something views last time I checked? I'm like, so you exploited this person, humiliated them and put them on the internet against their consent for less than a thousand views. Like you're not even like, how cheaply can you be bought off that this is something you thought because again, I didn't put these things on the internet and unless I needed to defend myself. Right. And then I would, I'd share them privately just to go, Hey, look, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't even want this to be in public, but there's another side to the story. He right. put that out sheerly, sheerly to exploit you and almost flaunt the callousness that he has inside of him. Because as I was watching that, I was like, this poor woman who who was misled and he just didn't even have the decency to just say, and I've been in situations before where I wanted someone to leave, but it's like, you can always negotiate. And it's like, if he didn't want you to be there, you'd right. be like, sleep on the couch, I'll sleep in the room, I'll see you in the morning. Like, there's so many easy ways to do this. Like. Like if you're not yeah, actively that was a plan, yeah. Originally yeah. that was a plan. Yeah. And so I just, you know, my heart goes out to you. I felt really like I felt like mm. there was a lot of problems like this, but I go like this is a, this is such a sick person. To like mm -hmm. they have things up so, like Brendan, it's like you have hero and villain mixed up in your head, you know. Exactly. Exactly. It's like they're the only ones that see themselves though as the hero and Correct. everyone else sees them as the villain and I just want to say, by the way, I'm. I felt the same way seeing videos with you and Luana, and I'm really sorry he did the same thing to you guys. It's awesome. Yeah, you know what's funny is I, I actually I clicked on some of his live stream. Like somebody sent it to me, and I'm like, let me just randomly see where he's talking about me so I can get it like privacy struck. And I heard, or I heard it. Sorry, a reaction video that you were doing, and there's a. I'm like, oh, I, this person doesn't know me, but you were already intuiting the truth about the situation, so I could tell that you have a high emotional intelligence because you're like, I can see what's going on here. Is he's he's filming her like like this, he felt that he doesn't want to do this. Like he's not like, yeah. I didn't want to see these things happen. I didn't want any of this to happen. I didn't call the police. For example, I didn't like, 
want any that's, hitting anybody. Yeah, like like that's it's like, right. and I never I never would have wanted that video to go public ever. I just felt like mm -hmm. I, like I always said it privately to somebody to be like, I'm I feel like I'm being unfairly portrayed, so I have to now. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And, and I and I feel terrible that any human being has seen that video, and I you know I would love for it to be scrubbed off the internet. And it's just funny, like, but because it, it's like. He made this threat to me, like, I'm going to share everything again. It's like, do it. Then. He already did that to you. He already like, did it. Yeah. Anybody who gives By the way, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, rest in peace, George. Do you feel like you got all your questions? Just because I want to um, maybe yeah, talk a little bit about this situation. I well, I'm here for the Bapaverse. I'm not, I'm not here for the Jimiverse. If you are, we are re-entering the Jimiverse, then... Yes, <laughs> for a little bit. Because I want to uh, bait this motherfucker to get on here. Because yeah. there is, he ties into, because I mean, he's actually part of that. You realize, does he, do you know that, George, SP George? He's the villain. Uh, <laughs> that the TFAC uh, yes, channel I'm, I'm is familiar. Really my, okay. my, understand, my understanding is that they first crossed paths when some, well, we know Mark BGL is part of the BAP of this, and there were some videos posted during a tumultuous time, uh, maybe a couple months ago, about a year ago. Yeah. When there was some dispute in BGL's relationship and some cuts took an interest to that, Tifat K, Jim and Nam started to cover that. Oh, and, he, um, but the whole Reddit, he's been covering it for a long time, stealing all yeah. the content, top voted. Oh, yes, uh, but it crossed his radar it. because it was. It, Mark right. crossed yeah. the radar of Jim and Nam because he was on the subreddit and then so Mark making, yeah. joined and the. Point, it's like, now it's that's just one facet of his video fuckery. About this is everything to do with the subreddit yeah. or like. Me, it's in like any facet about me and my relationship and my wife, you know. Um, all right, well, we appreciate you coming on and you asked some good questions. We got good information. Yeah. We will maybe Mark go do another episode, we can talk like fully about this stuff because there's stuff I don't even know yet. But yeah, rest in peace, George. It. Thank you for coming on. Atrocious, atrocious. I don't know what that means. Goodbye. No, I'm just gonna kick him. <laughs> Uh, Matt, if you want to come on camera, you can. If you don't, that's okay. Oh, am I being requested to go on camera? Well, so sure. You, if you, want. Want. you don't have to, but it just, I don't know. It's cool to have all the cameras on. All right. Hold on. Let me, I got to plug it back in. It's all good. Um, I took it out. I took out my camera to charge my vape. <laughs> what was I going to say here? Uh, Wu Tang seems to have it out. I'm not Mark. I'm not a creator. I value privacy. Listen to how he explains everything. No, I have no need to send you or anyone else the weird DMs he has sent people I know personally. Um, sure. Mark knows the shitty stuff he does to people. <laughs> Adam well, says, yeah. does Brenda... Name one. Name one. Name one. Send, yeah, name send one. Sounds then... triggered. Adam says he's you got two guys fighting for you against you and for you. Adam says, Does Brenda really live as obliviously as we can assume? Do you know or believe that his perception of being a boss carries his motivation every day? Yes. Uh, well, I perceive that. So, yeah, that's what I always say. I'm like, he, like, comedy is like tertiary to him, or actually, like, it's it's like the fourth thing on the tour of like, I have to appear to be a rich, I uh, see boss man. I have to get drugs and I have to fuck chicks, like drugs and alcohol. Um, I also have to have sex. I don't know what order those are in, but it's like those are all above comedy. You know what I mean? I go, he tours stand up comedy so he can have sex with girls on the road and drink like 40, you know, equivalent shots of Tiger Thick. Because he goes on stage with like a full, like, like this equivalent of like filled with ice Daddy. and whiskey. Right. So it's like, it's at least like eight shots per show. And by his second show, he's like slurring worse than he normally does. So it's like, he can take the Addies. He can drink the, you know, fucking. He takes Kratom, nicotine. He's drinking caffeine all. He starts the day with an eight shot espresso, and then keeps drinking coffee all day on top of popping Adderall, on top of popping Kratom, on top of drinking. Like it's the craziest mix of substances that I've ever seen from somebody who claims to like. It's like you know you have kids, right? Like my dad died at fifty nine. You know you have. Kids, right? You can you can you can pass away at any moment, like from mm -hmm. from all the shit you're putting in your body. So, hmm, yeah. dad of the year. One second. Um, I'll be right back. I just got to mess with my camera. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I got to fix this real quick. I'll be right back. So also, yeah, he came out me a bit too. He says, lossless. I'm not Mark. I'm not a creator, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, uh, wait, no, he said something about like, you blame the kid. Um, where is it? Where's his message? 
Um, oh, here. Lossless, come on, man. Rather than apologize, admit teaching people how to buy drugs online, roids, whatever, sometimes children, you blame the kid. No, I don't. And blame I, the kid. My, my response was, I no, I don't blame the kid. I, if he was advertising the advice to kids, parents are responsible. I mean, he was if he was advertising, if he wasn't advertising the, the advice to kids, parents are responsible. If he said, hey, kid, here's how you get it and, and you know, targeted a kid. Yeah. Then it's a different story, but no, you weren't saying, "Hey, kids, here's how you get it." You were saying, "If you're, if you tell me you age, get it, and a kid found it." Yeah, so. if, essentially, if you're below thirty, I would advise you against steroids, unless you have like uh, bodybuilding ambitions, and that's a totally different course. But it's like it's it's and like you can't just start injecting it with no gym routine or any, and just right. get I big. Always, I always no. give people. I go. I go before we even it's have a miracle stuff, drug. I I check people's. I go. Is your training, diet, rest, nutrition, all this stuff? Um. Yeah, it won't do anything otherwise. Correct. Right. Because people, for example, like, you know, maybe I have this look where, like, you look at me and go, oh, he's on juice. Trust me, I can point out 10 fucking dudes on the street taking more shit than me who don't look like that because, they, and I've seen this since high school, in college, and after college. I've known guys who've taken massive amounts of steroids and don't look like they do because they don't train correctly. They don't eat uh, properly. They still drink a shit ton. They part, you know, like, so there's many ways to fuck up juice. I don't know why I'm going on this rant other than to say, like, like I would never promote steroids to a kid. I made the mistake of taking them in my teens, but then took a very long break from them until my mid thirties where I started TRT again. And I've experimented with different compounds since then. And I only would speak on like, what is this like? I can speak from personal experience. It's like this, I'd advise you against this. But most of the time I spend telling people to not do that. I go, eh, there's many, it looks like you could fix eight other things before you hop on gear, you know? That's my typical conversation. I always thought that whole liver king situation was hilarious. I yeah, mean, it's so it's, long. I'm not on roids. I'm not on roids, and it's like uh, the guy who added him, you know, the, uh, vigorous Steve, who I met up with. Yeah, in person. he's been and, on my uh, more more place, place more dates. Yeah, yeah. With the information, vigorous Steve gave him the information. So vigorous Steve is a Dutch bodybuilder. Right, he's right. A, I remember that. A fucking guy. Um, he's just a, like we trained at Zoo Culture together. Uh, he took me and my wife out to dinner. Um, with his Zoo wife, cultures, uh, Bradley Martin's gym, right? Bradley Martin's gym in Encino. Oh, right. So, uh, he and, uh, they both had like Joe Statics, who like rest in peace was a guy I never met, but I was like, he's this German influencer who died, uh, prematurely super sad because he was like, you know, he had this crazy physique, but then when I started seeing him on camera, I'm like, oh, this dude's so funny and fucking like, he just has this like charisma about him. Where I'm like, this dude's such a superstar, man. Um, but he, uh, he, he uh bradley had him on his podcast and vigorous steve was good friends with him from thailand so they kind of like i saw them talk about joe a little bit um at zoo culture that was a cool moment and um and yeah vigorous steve is just like he's uh look him up on youtube if you want the best this is the link that i send more than anybody or more than any other link people go hey i'm thinking about hopping on gear and they pass the smell test in other words like are you of age are you fixing this are you fixing that do you know how to train are you good you have a gym routine okay here is your homework assignment. Watch this 10 minute video by Vigorous Steve called Best Steroids for Beginners. And he goes. Uh oh, that I think Mark froze a bit there. It's not that just me, right? Pretty producing. So he Thought has it. Cut out. You were cutting out a little bit. You're coming back a bit okay. now. Oh, there you go. You're back now. Nice. Um, I can so, bring May back up, by the way. She's ready. Vigorous. I'm just giving Vigorous Steve a shout out. I've done some pods with him, and he's just been a great, helpful guy. If you want actual expertise, this is the number one anabolic expert on YouTube right now is Vigorous Steve. Not more plates, more dates. Not um, the anabolic doc. Not um, – and these guys are really good, I, you know, what they do. But, like, Vigorous Steve is the guy I would trust my life with. Okay, uh, Adam says, Lossus, what do you think of the time Mike Tyson put his foot up on the table and just grilled Brenda at that event? What do you know or can assume that was all about? Dude, fucking Brendan and Mike Tyson have some sort of weird... I assume it's all one-sided on Brendan's part, but he definitely has an issue privately with Mike Tyson. I remember going to this money line event and that was like the fateful like thing that he, he like was caught on camera, like sipping some girl's number that he lied to me about at the time. I was like, Oh, that's crazy. That they're making this thing out. Like, cause he was like, 
Oh no, I was talking to some uh, like production company oh. employee. Uh -huh. You talking about what, where they had the weird drone footage? Yes, exactly. We got caught on camera sipping his number. Dude, he who fucking captures that? Who is flying the drone? <laughs> and who's zooming in and going, "Here's Brendan." Like, that's imagine? crazy. <laughs> next it was level. Like, it was like he was on the couch the whole time. There's a, a joke in the suburb, like Mark Whiskey. Because like I went to his event, he's stuck on the couch the whole time. Like any friend that I have, I would have gotten drinks for. And I like there's this famous moment where like I knock over like a tree like this. Like I'm like trying to hand him a whiskey, and like I knock something over. So I'm like, they go, you're hiding in the bushes. I'm like, no, I was trying to fix the fucking set that I just knocked over. Um, but I own up to that. Like it's like it's an embarrassing moment. I wish it wasn't caught on camera. But ultimately, I was just going to like my friend was working on a couch, and I'm like, hey, he's like, hey, do you mind getting me a drink? I'm like. Yes, person who invited me to this fucking Super Bowl party with a bunch of fucking cool celebrities and shit. Like, I got to talk to Daniel Cormier and a bunch of oh, Yuri Prohaska, who's super cool in person. So I was like, I was at a star shuttered event, and my only cost of admission was bringing Brendan Schaub a few whiskeys. Like, I don't know. That seems like a pretty good fucking price point to me. Um, Mike Tyson was somebody who was there in the live stream, and it, it was like, because I used to work with 50 Cent. I did a sketch show with him called 50 Central where I was one of the you know five leads. And so I got to spend a lot of time with him privately and in public and see how like, it's like put 50 Cent anywhere on the planet, a crowd will swarm him. You know what I mean? It's like people are like, oh my God. Like, and he yeah. also, like unlike other people who maybe like Eminem is more like, I don't want all that. 50 Cent handles it impeccably. And I'm not going to say about the same thing about Mike Tyson, other than like it doesn't bother him. But I, like from a distance, you're like you can see wherever Mike Tyson is walking around because there's like like a swarm of people like trying to get closer to Mike Tyson, right? So I think Brendan's probably jealous of that. Um, he'll say things like, "Brent, uh, oh Mike Tyson's not even my top five all time favorite boxers." I'm like, "Have you seen his highlight reel?" Like I brought people. I remember bringing my girlfriend to this remember that Tyson uh, documentary just called Tyson by James Toback in 2008. Remember, because I saw the this movie, The Informants, um, which is based on a novel by the same guy who wrote American Psycho. So you're like, this has got to be good, right? Terrible movie. And then we saw a double feature after that, which was the Tyson documentary. One of the best documentaries I've ever seen. My girlfriend knew nothing about Mike Tyson. She watched this and she was like, I've never seen a human being fucking slaughter people like that in the ring. Like, it's absolutely incredible what he did just from an athletic perspective. And so, of course, Brendan, the awkward, weird looking like he doesn't even look athletic when he's being athletic. He's going to be jealous of Mike and thinks he can take him in a fight. He's like nothing the double leg can't fix. He also constantly retells the story of how hard he is to work with because he's like, oh, he takes he like microdoses mushrooms. Who gives a fuck, dude? Like, I've never seen that guy be in a bad mood. Like, he seems like like Mike Tyson to me at his core seems sweet and goofy. He raised pigeons, motherfucker, and then like snapped on some kids who like killed the pigeons. Right. I'm like. That's an animal lover with a temper. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> um, so I always felt this connection to Mike Tyson ever since I saw this like MTV documentary about like how he had a love for pigeons. It's like that is a person who's highly capable of affection and love who was traumatized in an early age and, and draws upon that to fight his opponents and he wants to murder people. But it's like, who? What? what athlete can't relate to that? I've broken people's bones before in football games and been like, I, I have no remorse for it because you entered combat with me and you talked shit to me the whole game. I'm sorry that you got your leg broken, you know, but like, you know, we also, you, like, you could have done that to me. I, the, I had my ACL torn and had to replace it from a guy putting his helmet into my knee. I don't hold that guy accountable. I was playing a football game. So um, I think Mike Tyson to me is like a, such an interesting person and so much more fascinating than Brendan that he has to like narrativize this thing where like, oh, Mike Tyson's crazy and hard to work with. And he said he didn't want any carbs on the food truck diaries, but then he said he wanted potatoes and I called him out on it. And he like got mad at me. Like he has this whole narrative of like why Mike Tyson isn't actually as good as he was. Also, Mike Tyson's funnier than Brendan is. Have you seen his like, he does that like live show. Do you remember that? Where he's like touring, like, it's like, guess what I heard when I watched that on YouTube? A lot of fucking people laughing. What was it? Uh, hot box, hot boxing with. Well, it was Mike like a, Tyson? He did like a live show. Like I'm not talking about hot boxing. Like I'm talking about he had like a touring show with like oh, a oh. telling his life story live with like jokes and everything. And the clips that I saw, I'm like this really? is fucking funny. Yeah, you should. Look. I don't know what it's called, but like it was, it was some sort of live event. Like, but I go, it's like a little bit like because like I guess when Steve-O performs, he kind of has like he'll like show clips from Jackass and stuff. So it's like it's a multimedia presentation. And guys like Brandon will be like, oh, whatever, like, good nuts. You know, like, he, like, dismisses Steve-O in private. 
like he has a fucking leg to stand on. It's like, I don't know, man. If you're signing up for a fucking Steve-O live show, I think you know what you're getting into. And you know why you like you want to see Steve-O talk about Steve-O and Jackass, you know, like you're not you're not going to see Louis C.K. Um, and similarly with Mike Tyson, it's like I would have fucking loved to see that live show. Um, and I'll probably watch the, you know, see if I can find it. By the YouTube. way, I'm I'm starting to question this uh Wu Tang guy here because now he's saying <laughs> Lossless ask Mark why he documents showing up and doxing someone's home. Again, Jim Ram is a piece of shit, but Mark doesn't have that same energy for Bapa. Like Oh, that's so stupid. Because first of all, Brendan does ever threaten me. How Jim Ram? Yeah. <laughs> that's Jim Ram. <laughs> why like why would he be so concerned about Jim or now? I go, I go, this Brendan. Brendan, yeah. Brendan Saab, fight me anytime. I will I will return all the money to you and apologize to you um and say that you never cheated on anybody and actually you're the best boss ever if you fight me in the octagon. Oh Dude, I, I'm seriously like Again, Jim like, Nam, all this shit talk, all this posturing, all this, I'm going to break your arm, I'm going to yeah. do this, I, I would kill right. you and go to jail, I'm and you fucking right. pussied out. You are such a bitch. You had an opportunity to come on here and actually get views for you. You know what? In in one fucking stream, I haven't posted on this channel in a year, and I've already had, it's the same thing in one day as your fucking shit stream, actually more. It, it was peaking at more and like you could have came on here and got more attention your show's over now you had no excuse and even when you were live you had a perfect opportunity to stream snipe and still join in confront this fucking guy he just can't face to face me. make you're supposed to be the best broadcaster ever you ever heard of entertainment this is entertainment to, to confront him like what the fuck and i know you guys would intuitively you know such a Fucking I know you guys would intuitively if he came on, you would probably you wouldn't interrupt, you would just let us go. No, right? no, I'm I would be the best mod that that Mr. G Brooks, as much as I uh don't have anything against him, he was not a good moderator. Uh Jim Ranam lowered my mic. You know how it sounds now, and then go listen to that clip. You hear I'm very muffled yeah. and low. He fucked it up on purpose. What do you say? Did he use compression to make his voice sound lower? Is that what yeah? He has like uh yeah. like on That's a mixer, cool. there's like settings on the knob where you can like increase the presence of your voice so it makes you sound yeah. like this. This, like very close to the mic. Leave that case up, yeah. but Does he sound like that in real life? Um, no, no, he doesn't. No, no, not at all. He's actually girl, really whiny, and he sounds like, like "Hey guys, oh. yes." Does he? Yeah, okay, do, yeah but do an imitation of him. Oh, um, let's see. He's like, "Oh, babe, I don't really sound like that morbid character." Just so you know, I don't really sound like that in real life. Interesting. Like, so he, he owns up to it. Because he's like, I'm preparing you for the fact that this exactly. is exactly. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm doing yes. um, yeah. Order the darkness. That's exactly what freaking happened. Yeah, Mark he's is just dark. afraid of me. Yeah, yeah, Mark's afraid yeah, of me. He's he's not never going to so come after me. And he does I'm not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but it's as oh, if I'm doing that. Does Tom Hardy sound like Bane walking around in real life? I know? have the opposite problem. Like yeah. in real life, my like. Like Robin's always telling me I can't understand you, and then I have to speak louder because like my mm. voice is deep, and this wow. is just mimicking what my voice sounds like. He has uh yeah. like some mixers have the compression, or you can get a separate yeah. thing. So you're just cranking it all the way up to give you that like broadcaster yeah. voice, but he's forcing it. The, like and I hate when he loud. goes, it says "Okay," altered. he says it "Okay." It is, yeah, it's altered for sure. Uh, yeah, you go. Okay, okay, okay. By the way, I just want to say you look great. Thank you. So do you. you. you do. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, mean, I think now, it was a good. I have to disappear story. now. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, let's happy. all Jimmer Nam up. Let's get in our Jimmer Nam. Yeah. Now I feel bashful. Mark, you I got any sunglasses handy? So now, oh I'm shit! No, I don't know if I do one. Hold on. Sorry, hold on. Let's all turn in Jimmy. Hey, Mark, can you can you ask if he's seen your beach ball? <laughs> you see my beach ball? It's about this round, and I think it went that way. <laughs> God damn, Jimmer Nam, you such a pussy boy. <laughs> what was that lady's oh, name? Yeah. Shorty. Yeah, yeah. Oh god damn it. Yeah, I ain't the one, Wush. I ain't the one to mess with. 
I'm the greatest broadcaster of all time. Just Did you see that part, went, Mark? The 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 crazy well, lady he brought up? No, I didn't. Who's the crazy lady? Oh my god, you didn't see that? No, I didn't. Is this you know you because you were actually the person who was like, hey guys, let's stop bombarding Mark with stuff. Like he needs to focus on this. Yeah, he There's it was the during the you know the video I showed that I was like the whole yeah. interview I did with yeah. Jimmer Nam. Mm -hmm. At one point he can't oh. handle me by himself, so he brings up this. That That's the only thing. I just like I, I saw enough to be like this guy's getting murdered. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to. Yeah. He brings up this crazy old lady and he calls her his pit bull. And uh, it would have been funny because I would have been like, here's my pit bull, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how you handle that. Yeah. Like he couldn't handle me by myself. He, he first had me and then he's panicking. Then he brought that woman on who just screams and I don't know her. And then I find out that she's a little person. So I'm not going to like argue oh, right. with a little yeah, person. I you meant reference that we like the moment I found and out. Then he brings on this other guy, Mr. G Brooks. He couldn't handle me by himself. It's just pretty pathetic. Yeah. Cause you now know he's scared and you have, actual, you have actual debate skills, right? My, my, the main thing, do you might you guys mind if I play some of these voicemails he left me? Cause I was like, on the phone with Chappelle Lacey, and I go, man, like this is this shit talk is so pathetic. You're baiting me is so bad that I'm like on the phone with Chappelle, like laughing at it. I'm like, this dude, is, he's not even good at talking shit when he has all the time in the world. He no, could he could have written not, down I, if he was I can play the this really quick because I got it open here. Uh, and she's Google scary looking, itself. Mark. You're gonna see. Hold on. Oh. Let me go. Uh, wants to show us voicemails. Oh, no, no. I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to just do this real quick. It's really quick. Smashing traitor. Stupid. Yeah, she called me a, a hussy. She called me a whore. She said that all I did was sit on my couch and talk shit. It's she funny because I'm arguing night, it at, at first. And she's like, whale. do you want me to get on camera? And I'm kind of like, Eesh. Okay, so here's where she, first she's not on camera. Ugly bitch. You want to talk about bitch? Bitch. Go get your government assistance. Pitbull, go ahead. Oh, you know I'm a government, government motherfucker. You motherfucker. Oh wait, here's the moment where she's like, "Do you want me to get on camera?" Hey, you're not allowed to get on Facebook. You're not allowed to get on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And you can Google it. All right, Pitbull, that's fact. good, bro. That's good. That's go, good. Ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Run that train. Run All that right, Pitbull. Hair, you pull that him. hair, pull that hair, the hair that you ain't got. Ooh, 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 ooh. Run, that train, that run that train, run that train. Pitbull, ooh, thank you, Pitbull. I think Remember, you back in two days. Here's the moment. Oh, oh that cop put you to bed. Uh, oh, shit, I ain't yeah, shy. Sure. <laughs> I look good, just as good as you do, there motherfucker. Go. How <laughs> you doing? I mean, hi. Pull that hair, pull that hair. Now you know who the fuck you see. What's up, bitch? What's up? You got a problem, pussy? <laughs> what's up, pussy? Oh you traitor. Run that train. Run what? that what's train. What's the matter? She's better <laughs> than you, bitch. At least, at least she doesn't run away to Canada, you dummy. <laughs> Look, I oh, just married yeah. my sister. Oh, I got a swollen face. You got a problem? Uh, and I still can no, put you down. He's got a swollen right? pussy. You all that you two bags in a flip? You look great. Oh, my God. Oh, don't lie to me, bitch. You're going to lie to me. You just got to keep your enemies at arm link distance. She's better looking than Robin. Don't apologize to me. I don't need a sympathy fucking wah, 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 bitch. She's looking better than Robin, though. Let's put that. I look better than your woman. Robin looked like Harry Potter and shit. He believes it. By the way, that whole fucking joke makes no sense. He's calling... Like normally I've heard in the past, like they go, you're Harry Potter to me, but he's saying Robin is Harry Potter. And then he realizes his joke makes no sense. And then he's like, yeah, like Harry Potter, 500 pounds, Harry you know what's Potter. Funny like, is when your wife came into the stream, I was like, oh, wow, she's really beautiful. Like that was my yeah. first time. She reminded, I'm like, oh, she reminds me of this really beautiful woman I dated in my early 20s. I was like, that was my yeah, first Yeah, and that's a, she's coming in on a side angle from the camera, like, yeah, and on, I was her, like, on her Instagram. Like, yeah, she's beautiful. Really? I was like, that's, that's clear, clearly a very beautiful woman. That's all, like, like I, literally my first thought. I was like, oh, that's a beautiful debatable, woman. right? It's not even debatable. It's not even a preference. Oh, in this I mean, no, no, no. I was like, and I'm, the person who I thought of that I thought of was like, like this, the person who she reminded me of that I dated in my early twenties. I'm like that person is just like objectively beautiful. 
You know what I mean? Like, where I'm like, it's not even like, oh, it's my type. I'm like, <laughs> well, this <laughs> so, woman believes that she's, <laughs> this woman said she's <laughs> more beautiful than Robin without makeup. And Robin needs all the makeup and she's naturally beautiful. <laughs> now, here we go. Like Harry Potter eating something. Imagine having this shit in your face when you wake up in the morning. Bugles. Robin had a lot of makeup on when Every she fucking no. night of the it's week. Triggering. No, she did. Yeah. Robin doesn't even wear a lot of makeup. Jimmy Fallon. Oh, yeah, happening? you look like a dumb. Yeah, look at this thing. Is, it it reminds me of the times you traitor. He wouldn't be on the streets. You, you need to Google your need a woman motherfucker. Don't all oh, so don't even go. You. This is my pit bull, you motherfucker. Go ahead don't talk and Google your facts. Because don't talk shit. Don't talk shit about my pit bull. Google your face. Yeah, you're afraid of the pit bull. Who's bigger than your face? Look at your legs, goddamn it! Go ahead and Google it. Yeah. 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 You get smashed. You get smashed left and right, dude. No, I'm not yeah, backing right. up. I'm not the one. I'm not Stand the one. Yeah, that's that's my favorite part. I'm going to slap the stupid out of you. Damn. I'll slap the yeah, shit out of him, too, girl. I'm the one. I don't think that's what he's, that, I don't think that's what he's going to do. Hey, Shorty, calm down. Oh, but I Shorty, think he's going to suck your ass. <laughs> he's going to apologize. Right out of your he's going to apologize. <laughs> Shorty, calm down. Oh, you're saying, you know, apologize It's intensifying. He's going to come down and apologize. Lomar. Oh, yeah, he's going to slap the stupid out of you, and then he's going to go slap Robin, He's waving too. the, he's waving, he's waving the white flag. He's racist, but, you know, he's waving, no, waving not, that I, Jewish flag. I have flag. no interest in arguing with uh, Oh, well, I guess not, because I come up here now. All right, Pitbull, he's all yours. He's all you? yours. He's well, all well, well, what I don't even fuck? know you. You got the right I don't know one. You. you don't know me, and I don't know you. I, you ain't got to know me, motherfucker. I don't want to know, wanna know you. It's funny. It, yeah, I know enough. And she's like, God's going to come down and, and slap you the shit out of you. And I was like, nah, God's going to come down and just apologize. Chris, <laughs> I want to say, before you played the clip, if you would have been like, I'm playing, a, like, this clip's going to be funny and involves a crazy woman who came to Jim Ram's defense, like, I thought it would be good. This 10 x to that expectation. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> when she was off camera, she sounded crazy, but then she's like, you want me to get on camera? And I was like, yeah, part of me is like, no, and this seems... Yeah, but I mean... Uh, but I got to see for curiosity. This is one of the most entertaining things I've seen in quite some time. No like, more okay, than you so want to know me. But right. dear for God, let's argue right. with more of it. Damn, though. you get and fucked up, bro. And all of a sudden, yeah. you don't uh, want to argue. Yeah, I got to say, hey, Chris, I got to say... This is I'd rather watch her YouTube channel than yours. Oh, oh, you poor little <laughs> pussy. You can't. You poor little pussy. Little pussy. You look like that I don't know who fucked up worse, Jim or Dam or this crazy woman. It's up for debate, huh? Uh, who, we're, Robin? We're not going to all that. Jesus if you want Christ. me to be a witch, I'll be your worst fucking nightmare. Yeah. I'll come in your fucking you dreams. Are. Damn, bro. So this woman, I'm, I'm more scared of this woman than Jim or Nam. I know, Jesus she is way more better she's she's way better at talking shit i'll say that like as far as her off the cuff shit talking i'm like i'm genuinely more afraid of this woman than i have of M, genuinely yeah i mean it's at the point where it's like okay so at first i didn't know and then yeah. someone messaged me and said hey she's a little person and then i kind of like backed off yeah you can't tell from the video yeah tell. and so then like i wasn't really engaging after that but it's just like dude you can't fucking right. attack me yourself you can't handle it uh morbid jim or nam t fact i don't know who sliced you up worse to you jim or nam or, or this little person here yeah so. god damn i was waving the white flag apparently no it's just like, like come on man. Give up. You here we got uh jason no sack jason no sack that's an interesting name let's see what it what it turns out to be jason no sack how you doing they're all jays i noticed oh yeah. he jumped right off once i put him up he got scared you scared me Wait, are we? Who's saying that? Is that you, man? Yeah, it's me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound super high, bitch. High, bitch? <laughs> you sound really like you're in a Mickey Mouse voice. <laughs> what the hell are you saying? Well, let's try this again. Jason Nosack. Hey, my bad. I got booted. No, I just wanted to hop on real quick. No worries. Uh, this is Wu-Tang in the chat. I had to switch to my burner. I just needed to clear my name and let y'all know that I'm not Jimmer Man or Nam or however the fuck you say his name. I'm not mm -hmm. Jimmer affiliated. 
uh, Mark invited a bunch of homeless cats here from Reddit. Some of us yeah, just yeah. wanted to hop online and remind Mark that uh, we think he's kind of yeah, a piece of shit. Sucks. Yeah, you think I'm a piece of shit. Sounds good. Yeah, this was the guy leaving the comments about uh, you're, you're, teaching you're, uh, steroids. I know, yeah. I, I would implore you, if, if you think I've done that, do you have a screenshot of it? No, Mark, not all of us keep screenshots of every conversation that we have online. Conversation would just be like, do you have that evidence that someone presented to you? Because somebody showed it to you. Yes, but it's my little brother's account. I'm not going to give you his screen name yet again. I'm not going to give you his information yet again. Like it's not that up. big of a deal. Like I just wanted to hop on and let you know that just because people talk shit about you doesn't mean that we sympathize with Jimmerman or that we are Jimmerman. Some of us just think you're a redacted butthole, and, and that's all that it is, big bro. Yeah, I would say if you're going to make a claim like that, prove it. Yeah. That's your answer to everything, buddy. That's your answer to everything. Yes. That's how a court of law works, you fucking retard. Well, you want my tax info, too, to prove that I paid my taxes? You like, what are we doing here, buddy? From what I just said, which is provide any sort of evidence that I reached yeah. out to a minor to instruct them to get drugs. Why would I send it to you? If I was going to do anything with said evidence, I would do something legally. Why would I do? Why would I give you the evidence? Can I repeat it again? Because you're making the claim. What benefit does it serve me or my family to send that to you? If we cared enough to do anything to take legal action, why would we send it to you? Rub the name off in the benefit. Do you want to hear it? The benefit is making you not seem like you made the entire story up. Period. That's fine. Okay. Bye bye. You know you have the history, bro. Bodied. Damn, that was it. Yeah, right. It's always tough when you go, hey, here's all. Here's all. You're making a claim. Give me one piece of evidence. He goes, oh, I don't have to do that because, well, you do because you made the claim, right? Yeah, no, everything we've been doing here tonight, I can bring up any claim and I'll have the receipt yeah. for it, whether it's a legal document, a screenshot, audio, right, so video like, proof. Suddenly, I just notice these guys, when they make these grandiose claims, it's like, you know, whether it's That's what you need. I have breast implants or I'm teaching kids to get drugs. Why would it benefit me? Why would it benefit you to make a claim that defames me and proclaims that I'm doing something illegal to minors without having any, any sort of evidence to back that up? You could redact his uh, IG account, like show me the exchange, and then show me, redact everything, and, and send, it, send it to me privately, right? Yeah. Like show me, show me the, if I Yeah, there would be easy I, ways around it, yeah. Oh, well, of course. I made a mistake, but- It's but just it's sort of true. sound, I'm, I'm not saying if this is true. Oh, my little brother on this, where, it's a theory what? of mine that it's trying to say like, well, you're calling him out for grooming kid, but you sent the kid instructions on how to, and it's not true. Well, you got to have backup to your your yeah, claims but, like we have of these. If yes, indeed that so. is the case where you're trying to defend your man. I know right, it's, it's, so. it's like all you can say is that like. Well, that, Even like, if it was true, that's weak comparison. Yeah. No, so and it's what not. I'm saying, yeah. Also, the language, because again, if this happened, for example, if I felt like you did something to my younger brother, I'd be like, yo, bro, we have a fucking personal problem. What he was really saying is Mark's a bitch and he's a hoe and he's always like, it's like, mm -hmm. sounds like you've not liked me for a long time. And then conveniently, you also have a story about me that implicates me in a crime with minors, but you don't have any evidence for it. But you want to go on the live stream to prove that you're not, you wanted to prove that you're not Jimmernam. You wanted it, you wanted it, you wanted that evidence when it was evidence of time to prove that you're not Jim or Nam, That's when you had to, you felt compelled to suddenly stand up for your honor. You're, are you calling me a liar, boy? I'll get on the fucking live chat right now. I just won't present any evidence for the thing that I claim was true. Oopsies. Adam, uh, here's a message. Adam says, Brandon recently exposed Chin as his former drinking partner. I don't know if I read this one yet. After he stopped drinking in the AM, was Bapa telling lies or is it truth and letting uh, everyone know exploiting Chin? What, Chin? Did I ask that before? Like Chin gets drunk. I mean, like it's not like he doesn't drink. It's just like, who, does Chin have substance abuse issues? No. Does Brendan have substance abuse issues? A hundred percent. He's also a sex addict. Um, the, looking through here. Go ahead, May. You can. Substance abuse issues. Is that what I heard? Uh, Brendan has substance abuse issues. Chin does not, to me, that I know of, and I, I know him personally and multiple other people that I'm very close with. I've seen Chin drunk. Many people have seen me drunk too. Like that doesn't mean he has an alcohol abuse. Like for example, oh, me drunk um, night. I don't I don't drink in the morning typically because if I have shit to do afterwards, I'm like, I'm like, but when alcohol hits my lips, I'm not like I'm having some wine right now because guess what? I worked out today. I did my job. I wrote some skits. I do like I checked out my boxes and I'm relaxing with some wine. Right. Um, 
Brendan's somebody who takes eight shots of espresso and then drinks. It's like it's like you're setting your body mixed signals. You realize that, right? Like, so, like he'd be drinking whiskey, not him. And look, here's what addicts do, right? We all know this. And um, like I'm somebody like I don't try to do this to other people, but I've 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 done all the drugs into the fucking sun. I've smoked a shit ton of weed in my life, but I would like to do that privately. I used to like get high and I'd like to like sit at my computer and brainstorm. That's how I like to use weed. Other people need to be social with weed. And I've been pressured into smoking, for example, because nobody wants to smoke alone, right? They're like, well, just hit it, man, just hit it. It's like, oh shit, that's like, yeah, you're a fucking pothead with the you know highest potency fucking THC I've ever consumed and now I'm way too high and this sucks. This Alcoholics is- similarly will do that. Like, come on, man, you're not gonna have a drink with me? You're gonna make me drink alone? Yeah. So it's like, of course, Chin's gonna, you know, South Koreans are notorious for being deferential to hierarchy. Have you ever read the book, uh, Malcolm Gladwell book, Outliers? Anybody? Anybody? Yes. Uh, the 10,000 hours. Uh, no. Uh, I, okay. So Outl- outliers. Well, I believe, I believe it, this, this could be one. It, it's either like outliers or tipping point or something, but there's, there's an anecdote that I'm, cause I've read multiple books. So I might be confused. Because outliers is about the concept of that. Anybody can master anything if they yes. practice 10,000 yes. hours. Yes. yes. So the one where he talks about how South Korean airlines was having a disproportionate number of crashes and they realized it was because in South Korean culture, it's ext- there's there's such strict hierarchical um, rules on how you communicate with superiors that a co-pilot would see a pilot fucking up and not tell him. And so they implemented one change that drastically reduced the number of plane crashes per year back to a normal percentage, which was you guys can only talk in English. <laughs> because the South Korean language and culture, I sort of like, I, and I'm, I'm not remembering the exact book. I've read multiple Malcolm Gladwell books because I have many leather bound books. Um, I'm very important, but I forget what specific one, but I always kept that in mind because I'm like, Chin is a guy who was raised to be deferential to authority. So if your boss says, have a drink with me, you don't go, no. Maybe after mm-hmm. 10 years of working for him, you will, but you know. At first, I'm sure anytime he's like, you want to have a drink? He's like, sure, sounds good. Boss, person who tells me what to do, you know, mm-hmm. in that sense, he's, that's how he's lasted so long, right? He's an ideal employee. I'm the person who's like, hey, do you realize this is like, this is not right? <laughs> Shut up. What? Why, why did you just smack me for pointing out the chin? What do you, what do you, hey, uh, Mark, you're being a problem right now. I'm just pointing out the, the thing is unplugged, you know. <laughs> that's what it's <laughs> Yeah, that's got to be weird to sit there. That I, I know that feeling. You're just like you can't say anything. <laughs> Correct. Well, I mean, with with literally any any cluster B personality disorder, but especially narcissists, sociopaths, I assume there's an element of they very quickly let you know disagreeing with me. You can do it, but there's going to be consequences, right? Yeah. Present themselves. Sure, I, people can disagree with me. Sure, it's whatever. But when you do it, it's like, oh, cool. I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to insult you. I'm going to talk shit behind your back. I'm going to do any one of a number of social tactics to make it uncomfortable for you in the future to think about crossing my path, even if it's to disagree with an opinion, right? Does that sound relatable? Yes. It does. I, I know that type, um, you know, kind of like morbid. <laughs> well, morbid <laughs> gets like that because he, if he feels slighted by by shit that you would never expect him to be slighted by. And it's kind I'm of not scary. Lies for you. He turned against wow. me. He went from being my best friend and checking in on me every day. And I said no once to a live stream. And all of a sudden he's my worst enemy. And he also sent me a bunch of texts before he started making videos about me again. He was like, dude, honestly, I really don't care about the stuff. Like we can just fucking talk about it. Like men on the live stream, like let's fucking squash this beef, like blah, blah, Like men on a live stream, that's what he wants. I know, bro. I was like, you mean like a man in person? Like, what was that? I, did you want to call me a pussy to my face or did you want to apologize? Those are your two options. Because either one of those can happen in person, I'm fine. I won't attack you, but either you're apologizing or you're repeating. Yeah. And this time, say it with your chest, Jim and him. So... I have a question. Is there a reason why when you try to post links on the TFACT Reddit, it just, it, I don't know, it's giving me this thing saying auto deleted or something. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I tried yeah. to post this live stream. I will, see, I, I posted it to my own link. I posted a screenshot of it to the Reddit. Um, 
Oh, you did? Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Like I posted multiple links to my story. So it's like, if people want to come, they'll come. It's just, I think with specifically with YouTube links, because they're like, they might do an auto delete thing because if you post like a link to a like TFAT K show, they're like, don't give it the clicks. You know what I mean? Like, don't get, don't, don't put the link to the TFAT K episode here. Yeah, that's what it came back. So, how do you get them to see well, it? I, are you able to see my post? Because I put as a comment in my post about the. Um, I'm not really this, good at Reddit. What I have T fact in the search. So I type Mark Carley. No, go go to the T fact K Reddit. Uh, sort by it. um sort the post by newest. It should be within the last. No. You know, when did I post it? Um, Let's see. Tom Segura has completely lost touch with reality. It says three months ago. What the fuck is that? Are you sure? Yeah, I don't think you just post the link, but you, uh, you do, uh, what I did when I put it in the Reddit, the TFAT TK Reddit, I just said, look, this is his name and this it is the name be, of his screen. It should be reddit.com yeah, slash TFATK. Yeah, right? mine is still up there. Um, if you sort by newest, it's got 25 upvotes and 87. So, like, a lot of people will downvote shit like this because, like, don't fucking make put on your shit on here. But it's like, well, I just, all I said was, some of you may enjoy this. And I posted a screenshot. With a uh, the picture is of my story, so they don't like the link will be on my story, and then let's see if my comment is still there. This is so um, weird. Like yeah. I'm in it. Is it R slash T F A T K? Right? No, yeah. the fighter in that kid. Full spelled out as one Full word. Spelled. Oh, okay. So oh yes, yes. R slash the fighter and the kid. Oh, I got it. Okay, so sort by. By the way, I wanted to. Um, it's clear Jim Ram's never going to show up. He's a big pussy. He doesn't. He's not a man of his word. He's afraid of Mark Harley. He's a. He's afraid of me. He's afraid of Matt as well. He. Yes. I jumped on his panel and I faced him and I had. I went against all of his weird, creepy he friends. <laughs> And he couldn't show up here. Like, seriously, not even a joke. Like, you should be ashamed, Jim and I'm Like, you had a chance to join something and uh, get the views from it. And you uh, go have a back and forth. You love doing this. This is your whole thing. Isn't it the motto of your channel? Smash and repeat. Where's smash the smashing repeat. tonight? Where's the smashing tonight? Uh, you could have came here and, and smashed us, but... No, you pussied out as usual. Because this is the yeah. real guy. This is the well, real Jim Renam. He's a scared little fucking bitch. I, I wonder if he's yeah, just I have like, a question, yeah. uh, Mark. I have a question for Mark. I, I meant to ask. There was two questions. Uh, one was, James said the other day that he personally knows Bobby Lee. And that was news to my ear. Is that true? No. Come on. Didn't think so. That's what I said. I said, he's a fucking liar. <laughs> yeah. Weird thing to lie. I mean, I'd like, it's possible he's, has, does he go to comedy shows? He never said that to me. I just, I would think like if he, if he ever brought like, he just, he he's like, else. you know. Uh, here we go. Rip Tank. Uh, I'm hoping this, this is someone different. It's all J, it's all J names. No, this all is, J this is a link to my post. So click on that to show. Let's it'll see. Show you where I posted, uh, I can still see my link. Somebody commented, so it's like, if you want to, if says you want to, I can't unmute you, Tank. Wait, what? There's a guy uh, who joined uh, R.I.P. Tank now, and another J name, okay. Avatar, and I can't unmute him because it says he's refusing to let me. Uh, right, unmute it's it. off the stage. Are you gonna unmute? There. There you go. Yeah, now try it. Yes, I came to share the link of the post Thank that Mark you. made. I came to I came to moderate the discussion between uh, Mark and this other gentleman, but it seems that he is no longer here. But yeah, Fuck that he, guy. he didn't want to provide any evidence. I said, like, because I go, look, if Jesus. I did this by mistake, I can own up to it. But if you're going to make a claim that big, come with something, right? Because I don't believe I did that, and if I did, I'll own up to it. But but it sounds like uh, he had. He wanted to prove that he wasn't Jimmernam, but he didn't want to prove the thing that he wrote in initially to claim. Contradict yourself much? Yeah, it's like I, I recommend conversation. Mark, I recommend that you start with a clean slate in this year of 2024 and say that you are not you. Look, what is in the past is in the past, and clearly a lot of things are in the past. It's 2024. 
Yeah. I, I I recommend you do a little sage and just move on from here with a clear slate and say, I'm not uh, I'm not responsible for what has happened in the past. I'm accountable for what happens in the future, and I recommend you move on like that because BGL again. We love you. You are a hero, but there are some valid criticisms, and it's tough to. It, it must be tough in your yeah, position. I must. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to spend the rest of my life defending something I did a year ago. You're right, and and I think uh, honestly, your 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 advice and uh, the underpinning life philosophy that that would inform that advice, I think, is is sound. Um, so oh, I found I got the one. link here that you posted to the Reddit. I want to read one of these um, posts here. Most of them, a lot of positive stuff. But uh, this guy said, Drew Huang or Drew Huang. I don't know how to pronounce it. It says, I'm surprised all the problematic clips of Jimmernam. Not that I didn't know they happened. I just thought they were wiped from the net. Uh, I guess he's referring to the intro. He says, I feel like if you guys really want to shut him down, someone like Too Lazy to Try, Beige Frequency, Comedy Enforcement to make a doc detailing his background no one's gonna watch this stream it needs to be done professionally by the way over 100 people but it needs to be done professionally with narration and clips and uh, also it would help if someone else made the latest vids from the boppa verse because like it or not there's a market for shop drama blah 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 but regarding the first part no that's not the right answer because there have been multiple multiple people who have compiled all the evidence and everything and it just doesn't matter because like you need to be presenting it here. And the goal here was obviously Jeremy Nam's a pussy to get him on here to confront yeah, it all. This is, this is actually part of the evidence that the country, which is yeah. the fact and, that I'm and, the opportunity to com confront me right now digitally as he wants it. Is yeah. not, not on his terms on his stream, giving him clicks. So does he want to confront me or does he want to exploit for views? Right. And so, uh, Matt uh, may, may here, we've done two streams where I brought up all of his allegations with the proof right after, and I did it two different times. And yeah. yes, I uh, I do like uh, Too Lazy to Try, be Beige Frequency Comedy Enforcement. These guys are good at what they do, but I could have made a documentary about Gemini, but you're not understanding. It would do nothing. It would do nothing because this guy has gone through this multiple times He's had this done in the past. People expose him. Uh, there was a girl named Illuminati who was part of the true crime community that he was grifting from and then stealing all their stuff. Same thing as the TFAC stuff. And then he got exposed yeah. as Jim Renam and all the child stuff came out. And she made a really good video that got a shit ton of views. It was documentary style and it did nothing. So no, that's not the proper way to do it. I could have done that. I thought about it. And uh, I feel like it's way better because the other thing I want to get into after this, and then uh, I don't know how much longer we have. Can I but, just uh, make a comment really quick? I, to I go apologize. into the red bar, just sorry, just to go into the red bar connection to all of this, because there is a fun red bar connection. I think some of the red bar fans that may be watching will enjoy that segment, but go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying the back chat. <laughs> And I just find it, um, I just feel a little like him telling Wait, which, uh, which the, back the guy chat? that's up on panel right now. He wrote back chat that, uh, to walk away. And I just think it's weird when somebody like, I don't know. I just been having it happen to me a lot lately. People just say, just walk away. Just like, I will when I'm ready. No, honestly, the best ready. thing would be if there was no laws and Mark could just go run over to his house and break in this door down and beat the shit out of him live on camera. That would be the greatest thing. But yeah, what the other thing do? was a challenge. Accept the challenge, Jim Renam. He said he was going to break Mark's arm. Set something up. Even a boxing match. Whatever it is, let's see these two right. fight it out. And then that would be the end of it. With you, don't, you, you say when it ends, not them. They started yeah. it. You finished it. Yeah, exactly. Jim Renan, Jim Renan not showing up tonight. It, that's the end of him. Through. There's no reason covering him anymore after this. It just shows he's a pussy. He he can't yeah. confront his demons. He can't confront yeah. all the people that he threatens. Not like a small window. Fuck him. His history method. We've been going for hours. He's been anybody who's paying attention to anything would have. Would have he know you have proof that he was directly sent the link right after. Yeah, texted it to his personal time. number. In his chat, everywhere he could see it, he saw it, and he's refusing. And also, 
to me. Um, uh, tank, RIP Tank. I went on Jim Ram's panel and I confronted him face to face and I called him out on all this shit and still nothing. It's just kind of really pointless. So, but uh, thank you, uh, sir, uh, for joining up on the panel. I respect uh, you joining in and uh, helping us. But um, there is some red bar stuff that I thought was funny because I doing the digging. So Marcus had experience with red bar. And then I found out that Jimmernam had a whole thing with red bar saying he was going to beat up red bar too at one point. Really? Yeah. And I didn't know that. So let's Do look at, um, too? yeah, let's look at some of these <laughs> clips of, uh, out of there. Jimmernam versus red bar and, uh, Sheila aliens is a part of it. And it's kind of funny to, to watch. So this. weird. He just dabbles everywhere, doesn't he? Yeah, so this is um T Fact and Sheila Aliens discuss Red Bar and his wife Jules. And, and here is Brendan Shaw. And look at this. The voice of God. That's what uh Jim Renan refers to himself as. Ew, really? And she's beautiful. Yeah. That's all she's beautiful. Do we have she's a hot. picture of her? He's referring to Somebody Jules. Put her name in chat. Um Was this tonight? What's her name? Jules something. David. Jules David. Um, Jules Felker. F E L K E R. Felker. On Instagram. Mm -hmm. Jules. Oh, oh there she is. is. Where? Yep. <laughs> Jules. Share the screen. Okay, here we go. So dumb. I can't even. Concentrate. You gotta see. She's hot. There you go. All right, let's check it out. That's her? Let yeah. me see. These are old pictures. She's she still looks. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. How old is that? 131 weeks. What does that say? 131 weeks. What is that? I, I suck at math. What is that? She's super mysterious. So that's, that's her. Okay. Uh, Sven had some very nice things to she's say about abs, her. Right? Apparently. Yeah. Uh... She's not bad. <laughs> she's cute. She's well, okay. All right. I think she looks better now that she's uh, matured. Yeah, you think so? How come she doesn't show her uh, face ever? Because the whole show would be guys talking about how hot she is. It would be a distraction. Oh, no. give me a break! Come on. Because Mike's an ego yeah, maniac. It has to stretch. be about. It has to be about Mike. It's just how it is. You know. No, he it needs doesn't. her help. He needs her help because he can't run the show without her. He's lost. But he also doesn't want her to be the star. He's the star of the show. That's just how it is. Simple. Why is Sheila aliens on with? It's just odd. Show. I mean, they should be on Shimmer camera now. together. You know what I'm saying? I know, but he's he wouldn't allow that. <laughs> he's just not like. So that. he's a narcissist, is what you're saying? Of it's course. Like, it's all about me. I just want to know one, huh? Exactly. Yeah, that's why he's great. I think he's awesome. <laughs> Honestly, he he's better to, than Chris D'Elia. At least he's not fucking going after teens and shit. You know? Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he caught he caught one. He kept it. Oh, okay. He said it. God bless him for whatever state he was in at the time. Probably one of those yellow Canada. states that we saw. So this is him just kind of like communicating with these people. The Sheely Aliens is like a Red Bar fan. Yeah. Um, and was then there's an... like, was he trying to like shit on her looks? Because I'm like, as, again, again, like he was saying he, her younger was kind of weird, and she said when she how, got how older and more mature, she looked better as her. Is it, Red Bar is one year older than me. How old is Jules? Uh, 30 or something. Oh 31. I, uh, yeah. He's, she he's was dead. definitely pretty young when he met her. That's all I know. Okay. I don't know when he met her, but I'm like, you know, to, to me, like a 41 year old and a 30 year old sounds like a normal dynamic. Like, you know, in most like major cities in America, I don't know when he met her, but when like, they met, no, when they met, she was like, I don't know. There's this whole argument of whether yeah, she was 17 or 18 when they okay. met. And he was like in his late 20s or 30 or something. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess it's like it just, you know, how the later goes like, oh, a 60 year old and a seven year old. Like nobody bad an eye. But I guess it, it, I understand it's context dependent. But also, I, I have to assume that I've always been communicating with Jules on Instagram. So it's like this person has always been very nice to me. Whoever like writes me from Red Bar Radio. Um, mm hmm. I'm like, I assume it's Jules because this person is extremely polite. You know what I mean? So like, 
I would assume it's maybe it's Mike. I don't know, but I, I just it seems like the, the just the way the person writes and their cordiality reeks. Of I them. was happy when I heard you knew, like, because clearly the whole reason that Mike put you on FaceTime and faced like he did yeah. this with the camera, like facing this towards the screen. Yeah was because he was so afraid that you were going to see a close-up shot of his face and all the makeup he wears yeah and how ghoulish he looks and <laughs> that's interesting to think about because i didn't like i never really thought about that because i'm like oh he looks as you pointed out he has a tremendous production value of the show and i'm like oh that, that's a good looking guy like the lights and the sunglasses and all this stuff like yeah i think the aesthetic works for what he's mimicking but as you pointed out um it's sort of like yeah, Joel. It's like people spend all this money, kind of like Brendan. It's like he spent all this money on a fucking studio and employees and all shit. It's like, and how's like Jesse on fire making more money than you on YouTube broadcasting from his home? You know what I mean? Like, how does that work out? You know what I mean? You've got like fucking twenty k overhead a month. He was doing a weird shit during your interview. I don't know if you watched it back where he'd be yeah, like, he yeah. had you like this on the phone. And then like, while you're talking, he was just like making faces and stuff. And like, yeah, going, I, I, oh, I, I, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, I could tell his tone of voice was like, oh, you're kidding me. No, yeah. Man. Very tell patronizing. Yeah, exactly. Which is. But it, well, weirdly, it didn't result in any like major troll. Like nothing happened. You, you got your word out about Brendan and then right. you left. That was like mission accomplished. I was like, I know he would try to take me like to bait me into like saying something extravagant and super like controversial, but I'm like, I'm gonna stop short of saying anything. He was like, Is there any uh, does uh, Brian Callen and Brendan Chom touch their kids at night? You know, it's my best red worm kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty this? good. That was pretty good. Uh, that's, that's my grandma serving me coffee. <laughs> Let's get it started, folks. My name is Mike. Um that's you know, oh no we have hello Mark Harley here uh, known as B now I got Mark confused um you know at, at first at first I thought I, I really I thought Mark was some sort of meathead uh, some sort of crazy guy uh, some sort of rogue it out California I had you I had you all wrong now I just want to say my love affair with you hello Mark Harley started when we had an exchange and so one of my followers sent me this screenshot of them saying that Red Bar's watching and you said why would I care if a closeted gay man with a terminal illness is watching me. And I laughed at that. I chuckled. I said, this guy, you know what? Maybe there's more to it than it seems. Hmm. Hmm. So I put my feelers out. Mark <laughs> Harley's <laughs> watching. <laughs> so now you want to see how Jimmernam handled Red Bar. This is possibly the worst attempt at like going at red bar i've ever seen it's just so funny to me to see it because he's i don't know he has no look at this 34 this views him, by the way live or is this him reacting to red bar this was him live in back probably five years ago uh credit to ian ellis llc channel for this clip by the way um and he just goes on he's like Love, look at his tattoo oh he's showing off his tattoo he thinks he's cool and then he then he just takes his shirt off trying to show his tattoo that Ooh. he's as cool as this like, guy it's like with red bar i'm like you can't i don't really find a reason like i think you made some funny joke where it's like it looks like a teenager with a bunch of money like went to the mall or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah yeah but if someone because i haven't seen it in so long someone posted yeah. a screenshot yeah uh, been, like, i liked it back when it was like kind of just him and his unbleached or something right? Um, but to me, I'm like, I don't know this, like the setup look, I'm like, I, I wish that somebody would take the care to make me that look fucking good on camera. Cause I always felt like at this point, hey, when but, I well, it, this only cost me, I think this cost me like a hundred thousand dollars. This studio, I just built this like yesterday before we started the show. So <laughs> it's still under construction, but Bro, at TFAT K, I remember I'd be like, you guys have this whole professional production. The only lighting you have is overhead LED lights. What the fuck are we doing here? Like, you'd be yeah, like, look at it. Look at this. I can actually like yeah. the walls are like movable. Like, look at this shit. You can move the wall. It's crazy. You, this they, costs so much money. I, it, it, it was uh, it was worth it though for this. Brendan spends so much money to have such horrible sets. Uh, I will say the King of the Sting set was really good. The lighting, they have like professional lighting. And shit. This looks like there's a wall here. Yeah, that Nick's like that just looser than the other producers though. Chin's not a creative producer. Chin is just like, whatever you tell me to do, I will do. I will not do anything beyond the means of, you know, he's like a fucking Korean robot, truly, who can't name, name two countries in Europe. But I don't hold that against him. He's a good guy. But he is like, if you ask him to do anything outside of what he's you tell him to do, like, it's like, 
give me a creative task, he's not going to be able to do it. A guy who produces King of the Sting slash Golden Hour, that's the engine of the show. You know what I mean? Uh, the Golden Hour podcast, Chris Leo. Yes. My yeah. Th- yeah, my thinking of it is oh. like he Nick does a lot, a lot of, to make that show like run. A, no. a lot of guys in their mind they think, oh, when you start out, you got to have like this big crazy studio. And I kind of thought that at one point, but then like no. even the even the base is like putting Amazon foam on the wall and all that stuff. It's like it's not, not necessary. You don't yeah, even need that. Yeah. Don't make it but, shitty. And, like don't make it painful for your audience. But. Like I jumped on Jimmer's <laughs> thing and I'm just like streaming it from a uh, radiator and it had more views than normal. So it was like, right. okay, I mean, I, it, it doesn't really matter. Shot. I went live for 12 minutes and got more views than he did for like this fucking right. Just stand in your house. Like, so gonna, it, if you, if the money is there and it makes well, financial yeah. sense and it's consistent to where you're going to invest in a studio, then I would do that. Like I have this whole room to like turn into something, but I'm just like getting back into it now. Well, okay, let's watch Jimmer Nam's attempt to roast Red Bar. It's pretty oh, wow. bad. This is a like man that he has these ugly ass tattoos. It looks like Detroit fucking. Uh, what is that shit on his fucking tat? His left arm. It's ugly. You're fucking ugly. <laughs> You look fit. <laughs> Fuck you, you piece of shit wearing that stupid ass hat. And yeah. this looks so familiar. Stupid it looks like hat. that stupid shithead uh, <laughs> over there that basically he can't live stream anymore because he's got like a couple copyright strikes against him. One courtesy of me. You're welcome, you bitch. And then Wait, one what? courtesy of someone else. Who I don't- Wait, he's saying that he copy striked Red Bar and he's bragging about it? I don't give a fuck about it. I don't even know I, how he got that. But. Fucking what? fat man, it's an asshole. That's badass. Kenny, let it calm down. <laughs> you can see him when he gets. <laughs> All right, anyhow, let's go ahead and play this stupid ass. It's a video of Hate somebody his voice. Talked about this. calling into another show as Dante Nero, but kind of doing my impression of Dante Nero. I got- his impression of Dante Nero. Who the fuck is Dante Nero? Google never this. Heard of him. The fuck I've never is heard of him. him? Boring, they talk about shit that nobody cares about. Dante Nero. Who gives a that? fuck? Who gives a shit? He's an actor. <laughs> Imagine a guy with thirty-three live viewers. Probably half of them are him, saying, "Who gives the fuck about anybody?" Like Dante yeah. Nero. Sounds like a crackhead. He's so triggered so easily. It's Never crazy. heard of this guy. Who the fuck is a Dante Nero? What an idiot. <laughs> Let's continue. Go Google Dante Nero. Do you think anybody would know who the fuck Dante Nero is? Not me. I know who he is. I gotta let you know, he does it a lot better. It sounds... Um, I, when I first heard this clip, I thought this was a clip of Dante Nero calling into a radio show. Because you're a fucking idiot. You, 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 <laughs> stupid ass. He, he would fall for anything. Look at him. He looks, he looks like a retard. He would fall for anything. <laughs> Alright, anyhow, let's go. Found... The implications of this are great, too. So listen to this one. Sure. Okay, I'll tell you. This is Jessica Jade Live. Is this a porn star? Oh, yeah, it's a porn star, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, any girl that looks hot is a porn star to him because he, he has no clue. He has no clue about life. He has I no like clue about getting like, pussy. He's like, and if it, like if he, white knight. He's always like, like, oh, that's, oh, what are you, anti-LGBT? What are you, anti-women? What are you, anti, or what are you, racist? Yes. Like, and then he's the most oh, abusive yes. against all of those people. Yes. Yes. So, uh, jab, 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 jab. That's all he knows how to do. Whatever jab. works best for him in the moment, like, that's what he goes for. He he know anything. He's Probably. never seen a vagina in real life except his mom's when he was born. Uh, Is this a porn star? Oh, ho, ho, ho. What fucking idiot. What kind of question is that? Is this a porn star? Hmm. Man, shut the fuck up with your stupid ass. Look at that dumb tattoo right there on his fucking left arm. Oh my god. He's such a man. Is, can you? What about his dumb finger It's tattoo? probably a cock. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're about to see is a video of what looks like a cam girl. Her name is Jessica <laughs> Jade. Hans a French kiss double A at a comedy <laughs> show. All right. Good for you. Stupid ass. Disgusting. Um... <laughs> what looks like a cam girl. I hate the way he speaks. Is anyone else annoyed by his w- Come on. I mean, the guy sounds like fucking um a grandfather. 
like my grandpa, if, if my grandfather actually was alive and spoke English, uh, this was this is what he would tell. Uh-huh. There's a laugh track. You forgot the laugh track. Do you hear him? Yeah. God damn yeah. annoying piece of shit doing this for six years or longer, probably a decade in radio. He's been doing this and he's got a nice he's got a nice microphone, but a shitty. I mean, that's a shit setup. Yeah, you, try to so do what I do. He he's he, he can't do what I do. <laughs> These dudes have no taste when it comes to putting their sets together. Yeah. <laughs> stupid. Wait, what? Is that what they just did? did I hear that right? These you know idiots are saying that he Red Bar has no taste in his setups while this guy's <laughs> doing a green screen. Yeah, like he's a literal skeleton. Me of, um... This is an investment. Like he's obviously making enough money to make this investment. And you're calling him out? Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, $2 like, dollars like, from Hansy, by the way. Another whack packer. So, oh, it's just so cringy because this guy, like, a lot of the whack packers were on pod trash and he just kind of, like, manipulated a lot of them into coming into his thing. Not just even just for entertainment. He was trying to funnel money out of them. Like, he's swindling Wendy, swindled Hansy here. Like, I don't know. He he brings these people around not just to be like, oh, I want to be Howard Stern and have the whack pack, but more so I want them around and to donate to me. I couldn't imagine like accepting money from a woman who's mentally disabled, especially like yeah. especially so Wendy, I- who donated like hundreds of dollars. And he's just like, oh, I'll keep it like why not create a fake button just for Wendy where she can click and she thinks she's donating and it still shows the the message on the screen you could definitely do that he and, blocked her. but it doesn't actually charge any money that's what you do with someone who's mentally ill but instead wendy who's on government assistance is donating to jimmernam who's also on government assistance keeping our taxes uh in a loop yeah fuck it, you don't no, fuck you hey nero yeah. is that his bitch is his you didn't name? show up red bar he We're calls here. himself red bar that yeah. sounds ridiculous. He calls himself Red Bar. Oh, yeah. shit, man. It's we'll not as cool as Jimmer, man. Yeah, take off that hat. I bet you have bald spots everywhere, you fuck. You know Go you're ahead, not actually this. talking to him. Fuck. And then you, know, you also you hear off hear camera, you're going to hear her producer right? or boyfriend or whoever. It's like acting like he can hear him. Whoever's co hosting this show. Hey, yeah, fuck you. I'm going to fuck this piece. Oh, I want to. I want to. He is so dumb. Is it Dante Nico or Dante Nero? Dante oh, Nero. Yeah, Dante Happy Nero. He's a, he's a shit actor or comedian or something, but he's nobody. Just like this guy. He's Who was back fuck. here? Dude, I would kick his ass in like 10 seconds. Literally. Probably. <laughs> I can see he has a like receding hairline right there. Um, Major. He's he talking about a receding hairline? Baldness on the front receding of his head. Hairline. Stupid oh, ass. And then he grows out his fucking uh, facial hair that looks like Forget fucking a uh, bush. He's talking about Mike having a receding hairline? Dude, you see? Are you not seeing the same exact thing he says about everybody? It's pretty the same thing. Your I'm hair, just, your yes, beard. Say, say what you want about Mike. He's got a he's got some great fucking hair, all right? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I see nothing wrong with it. It's just funny to me hearing this like same like insult. He's been doing this since he forgot he's on Luke. He forgot he's on camera, Bush. He forgot he's on camera with that hairline. Bush yeah. fuck back, bro. His hairline Giant is like forehead, forehead, forehead and so pan face. Like, I mean, the just objectively speaking, five years ago, too. the distance between his eyebrows and the hairline is uh, double like a normal sized person's hair, right? We all, yeah, yes. and he doesn't have eyebrows. His eyebrows suck. He's got no lips. His lips <laughs> suck. They look like bird lips. Oh my god. And his nose looks like a hot pocket with two holes drilled in it. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> asshole. That's that was ass. Good out to you. Fuck good you bitch. They're gonna take a call like from pocket. what's supposed to be Dante Nero. Let's yeah, everybody this. knows him. Dante Nero. All right, 304, you're on with Jessica. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Dante. It's Dante. Dante. Right. Dante. What up, Dante? Dante Nero. Him sucking on that vape pen, thinking he's like, all oh, the shit. You're, you're, there you go again. He said the same you. thing. He said the same thing about me. It's the same uh, shit. Yeah, it, my you, you, can you confirm that Jimmernam takes uh, anxiety medication? 
Well, yeah. he, he claims he does. But um, when I was with him, he only said he only claimed that he took uh, a blood pressure medication. And then completely after we broke up, he, uh, he, now he's on anxiety meds. But before that, he was probably on it the whole time. It was a cope. He's like, yeah, it's a, it could be used for blood pressure. It's probably like Xanax, and then right, one yes, of the yeah, one of the things they can use it for is blood pressure. So he just says that. This is a guy who every morning has to take Xanax and then drink a bunch of alcohol just to get on camera and do a stream. And by the way, you know, so it's as obvious. a builder, it's like one of the things that I deal with is like mm -hmm. when you have excessive muscle mass, like blood pressure becomes an issue. So that's something I have to modulate. And they're like ARP inhibitors, I think they're called. But there's like you know certain classes of drugs that. I know a little bit about but it's like if you're an adult who doesn't take steroids who like doesn't take substances and you have high blood pressure fucking work out more like there's something yeah. going on where it's like i like i weigh 260 pounds and have a bunch of muscle that's why my blood and i'm taking testosterone and growth hormone right like you can point to these things and be like if we hey you want to reverse that lose 30 pounds bitch <laughs> like but if you're just an adult with high blood pressure like, why, don't, why aren't you exercising more yeah, Jimmer, why aren't you exercising more? <laughs> no, this is like this is literally, it's the solution to so many problems. And the thing that's gotten me out of, as I described earlier, the darkest points of my life, it's like you, I cling to exercise as the foundation of mental health. And I will, just like I direct people in certain directions of like, okay, you want to take SARMs or steroids and you're too young, I'm going to steer you over here. People are going like, man, I can't sleep. You came and you're like, I can't sleep. I go, bet you could if you ran 10 miles. Yeah. Bet you could if going when you wanted to quit <laughs> bet you would be really fucking relaxed at the end of the night if you went out and did something physical with your body until the point where you felt like you had to collapse i just you're so positive just a hunch i have right so any adult man who's like i'm anxious and i have high blood pressure it's like probably because you don't leave your house and you're a gigantic fucking pussy and you're a horrible Right. Hey, Mark, do you remember about what time period it was that you went on that you went on red bar Yes, it would have been three weeks after I was fired, I believe. So January, let's say 16th. Uh, by the way, I just looked at a meme I posted that said, I can't believe tomorrow's white people's Juneteenth. January 16th. You know what that means? Is it? Tomorrow's January 6th. White people's Juneteenth. What? Juneteenth. <laughs> what happened? The day of the fucking, they, 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 uh, they rioted the Capitol, whatever. It was February oh, 9th. Oh. Oh my god! Went right over my head. Yeah, within I, 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 my recollection is yes that I believe it would have been like early February because I remember I sat on it. He reached out to me. He's like, e -S 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 February 9th. Oh yeah, Hella Mark Harley calls in to talk about working with Brendan Schaub and Brian but, Talent. Yeah, but I my see memory's it. bad. Hmm. Say there what hitters? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Oh my god, this is great. Oh, I mean, it. You're a fucking loser, dude. Someone been doing that. this for six years on uh, YouTube or whatever on radio for probably a decade or longer. <laughs> radio? What is this? <laughs> radio? What? Dante Jessica, Negro. I'm seeing you. I yeah, Dante Negro. That's what he is. That's I, I, I can say it. No, you he can't. can say it. Okay. He, he has some kind it. of like it's oral fixation, and that's like his his like phallic symbol that he puts in his mouth Listen, his go-to thing he thinks he's so cool but he's a fucking loser he's a fucking loser I know, I'm curious. you know who else like, talks about, about credibility how many marbles do you have in your jar how many marbles do you have in your jar how many marbles do you have in your jar like why would you review this like why would you even um care about this dante nero uh voice and person it sounds like every black guy that i met mm. I'll take Negro, or, uh, hey. uh, <laughs> i said that that's my line i, that's hey, my, I, can I mean it that. sounds like every white also. person that tries tries to sound black pretty much and he's Listen, so impressed I'm black i can say it He's impressed what? by this guy's yeah, some I'm impersonation what are you talking about what part his cock it's purple about? I'm part of black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Genetically, I'm part black. Just some rando. Are you Jimmer? I suspect you're Jimmer. Can you what talk you what a lot like him? The value that you bring to a man as opposed to a different girl. It's like the worst ver a voice impersonation ever. 
That's so yeah, really. This guy is so uh, this stupid red bar. He calls himself a red bar because red he bar. doesn't want to give out his real name. Go. Oh, you know what? I'll find out your real name, bitch. You don't know who <laughs> I am. Oh, shit. You don't know who I am. You don't know who I am, you That's motherfucker. Right. And I'm going to find out everything about you. You know what? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know who I am. And once I find out who you are. Oh, all oh, yeah. Shit's what are you going to do? All hell's going to break you loose, you motherfucker. I, I think Talking shit about my people. A bar in Florida. I'm going to call the bar and find out if he's there or if he's been there. <laughs> Talking shit about my people. <laughs> Fuck you. Asshole. That is a spot. By the way, mute your computer in the back. Impression, yeah. Sven? That is spot he's on. Studied, he's studied. He's a, that is spot on, ladies and gentlemen. That is, that is spot, spot on. on. Ladies and gentlemen. This is how I do radio, ladies and gentlemen. That is spot on, look, ladies look and gentlemen. This, look at this Dante big, tough Nero. guy making fun of this little girl. Dante he's a, he's Nero. A big man. Look at my tattoos. I am Dante Nero's best friend. He's so my bad. name is Red Bar. He's Fuck so you. Bad. Jesus Christ. I found uh, the clip of your uh, interview on Red Bar. If you want oh, to nice. That. Um, so can, this is long. I want to see. Yeah, now. this is pretty long. We can see him making some faces at me. We this have how I'm our screen. He comments on different shit. He pops up there. That's all. Oh, wow. He cool says, fake vape with the pen, the bro. He comments on different shit. He pops up there. Because uh, drinking alcohol and taking Xanax is so much cooler than a vape. He's that's all he does. Too. Say that. You're juggling. Yeah, he just go and talk to him. Guzzling a bottle. He's right? and, he's and, he, and he shits on people who vape. Like he's got he the moral high ground. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah he sucks. So here, let me. Uh, weird, isn't it? Out of this. <laughs> and then uh, I got weird. the red bar thing here. Because this would be funny to go back to and you could see like how behind the camera. And that's the reason he doesn't want you to see a close up of his face. And he doesn't yeah. want you to be able to see like the studio from any angle. He's very anal about angles and lighting and how he looks. So, to yeah, by the way, I was, you it, I, was like, I had like 315 on the squat rack and they were like, hey, want to go live now? I'm like, cool. I'll step outside the 24 hour fitness and go on my phone. <laughs> when you when you first picked up the call, were you seeing him face to face? I'm. I honestly forget. I might. I think I was for a second. Yeah. Because I feel like it was. I don't know. I guess let's watch it here. I, feel like I remember seeing his face, and then he turned. He's like, "I'm going to turn you to the camera so everyone can see your face." Yeah, I'm going to turn. I, was, the, I didn't really think about it. But yeah, it makes sense if you don't have like a normal like guest call-in setup. Like this is kind of a. a it, it's an abnormal. Function. Guy has a what a hundred fifty thousand dollars studio, and he can't figure out how to pipe yeah, in a guest we, into the show. Weird. I don't believe that. I honestly think it's his paranoia. He doesn't want you to see him. Up You're close. right. I'm just saying at the moment, in the moment, I was like, yeah, that seems normal because you don't really don't have call and guess. You know, yeah. like to me, it was like this was a he really. Does. Low he does. Stuff. He does. He used to before this studio. Oh, okay. He, he, he used to way. have uh, in the old studio in his apartment. He always Wendy. had people calling in. I think look at what read Wendy's uh, comment. <laughs> well, I haven't been paying attention to this. Wendy She's Pack, sick. damn you are you are good look thin body sexies. <laughs> I think he's she's referring to you, Mark. Yeah, she does. Wait, wait, wait. Who's so saying that? Wendy, uh, Wendy, the special needs adult. Oh, she's in, she's in the chat right now. Yeah, she yeah. said, damn, she said, damn, you are good look thin body sexies. Yeah, that's for word. <laughs> Laura Lee, um, yeah, that's Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> she was checking out Wendy, more that's, that's nice. That's nice of you to say, Wendy. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's I go through this. That's funny, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Wendy, would she? You God, know, this could have been so smooth. <laughs> so smooth. <laughs> me mad at the person who's going to pick up eventually, unless you're taking oh my it. God. He's like annoyed at me for not picking. I'm like mid spot workout. Right on time too. Let's see if he turns it right right away. another way here. I've got multiple ways. Wendy, do, and do, do, he do, wants do. to no smack Timmer. So. Okay, let's try this version. 
We're going to copy that. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Let's try this version. Did he have, like, multiple Instagram numbers? Instagram or... Or iMessage would be the only way you can FaceTime me. But like, oh, okay. I was just like mid, I, like he like caught me off guard because he's like, he's saying like, oh, we're gonna go. They gave me a loose time frame, so it wasn't like I, I was, I was. I remember being like, well, I'm gonna like do this workout, and they kind of like, they couldn't give me a specific time. So it's not saying it wasn't saying right on time. I'm like, you gave me a loose time frame, you know. Right. <laughs> I left the gym to go meet him. By the way, so many Red Bar fans want to ask this question, and I asked it to you, I think, privately, but I yeah. People believe that your connection with Mike after the fact was the way he got access to some sort of oh my God. steroids or injections for testosterone or Adderall. So, so no. So you wanted to spell I think I was that. Happy that I have I've helped many people uh, procure any kind of substance that they, as a consenting adult, would want to take. I, I can be a, an advisor mm -hmm. and consultant in those dark arts. Mike Red from Red Bar or the person who I interact with on their Instagram account has never asked me for anything beyond an appearance on the show. Uh, they've occasionally asked me questions about current drama. We've had cordial, ex like like literally like a handful of cordial exchanges. No fitness uh, questions no, asking for help. Like, if he did, I would. But I, I like yeah. I, guess, I was like we've like bantered back and forth. Whoever's DMing me, like. I've had a few fun conversations with that's like people speculate after this phone call, he started to bulk up a bit. Um, but it might just be, he's wearing uh, wider clothing. I don't know. Yeah. Or like, but he also seemed like he was like, Oh, I'm on a workout kick. It's like, if you're, if you haven't worked out for a long time and then you start working out, like you can gain weight rapidly. You know what I mean? And like just eating healthy and working out like that. Like for, for example, eating more increases your appetite. So if he's having some sort of illness, but then like you increase your activity, there's a cycle of like that increases your hunger hormones, you know? So if he looks bigger, it's possible he gained weight just from, just from exercising more and making yourself hungry and eating and then want to do more, you know, like you have to get yourself out of that rut. So I, but I, <laughs> it's, it's, it was really funny to hear that speculation that I like got off the phone and was like, fucking, we start talking about steroids. <laughs> well, with Mike's history, he's, I don't know, he's got yeah, kind of a, about the substance There's abuse annoying, issues. You know, Oh, really? Oh, well, I did see that clip you sent of him, like, spazzing out after taking a whip it. Oh, dude, look on the fucking screen. He's got Jim Bean there. Oh, I just, you know, he seems, because throughout weed. the podcast, he seems very coherent. I, I didn't realize that he smoked weed, but he just seemed like someone who kind of, like, he's like, I have, I have a little whiskey, right? You know? Um, I One of the episodes, he was taking a handful of pills and, like, just eating them. And I remember he was saying, oh, look, these are my Oxycontins and stuff. That he's oh, taking yeah. Kratom. He's on all kinds okay. of stuff. What I will say, though, is that do you, I mean, to me, he seems coherent for somebody if he's on drugs, like, except for that, that clip you sent me where he's passing out on the whip and he's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. oh, what? yeah, we got to play that. Oh, huh, I'm live. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, 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 like, he's having like a seizure. I told you that. And the fucking the other one, who'd you send the Revenge of the Sis clip? The guy with the um passing out on the camera after thing. Uh that wasn't me that because I'm not really? fully familiar with oh, them. That, but I else. like I watched we joked about it where I was like, if that ever happens to me, like I just like I have to quit something. Either I'm quitting broadcasting, I'm quitting weed, like something is if I do this on camera while I'm live streaming, like somebody there has to be an intervention, right? To all anybody who's watching, like please message me go, Mark, hey. I'm not saying everything has to change right now, but something has to change in your life. If you're doing drugs and then passing out on a live stream, your life is headed in the wrong direction. Let's try to take one step in the right direction. Call me crazy, but you know I'm giving anyone permission right now. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens when you when you first pick up. Yeah, he was, he was frustrated within like ten seconds. Okay, he says he's in communication with me, the man. So this is big. The man says, hey, it's, and I'm waiting, a dot, dot, dot's going on here. Uh-oh, join? Could it work? Get nothing. Okay, we're waiting. I'm waiting on his dot, dot, dot. Trust me, this is going to be worth it, everybody. One of the funniest parts is that after the end of this whole thing, when he hangs up on you, uh -huh. You hang you hang up super quick and he still has the phone like this yeah. and it accidentally shows all of his te text messages. Oh, interesting. That's pretty funny. Contact at, okay. 
I'm waiting on his dot, dot, dot. He's uh, mentioning something right now. Okay, he was so frustrated. So we're just waiting. I mean, to me, again, every uh, second that goes by feels like a lifetime. Calling but not getting through for some reason. I'll call you. Hang tight. Okay, we're going to try this again. Yeah, he's like very perfectionist that if things are not yeah, going like perfectly, he freaks out. Boo -da -boo -da -boo. I mean, he's right there. He's saying, oh, connecting. Hell yeah. Are you there? Can you hear yeah, me here. okay? Do you remember that moment? Are you seeing yeah, yes, him at this I point? Do. I do. I remember seeing the POV, yeah. Quickly, just a quick glance of him. Can you hear me okay? Because his AirPods aren't great. Yeah, it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Hella Mark Harley. Instant turn. Yeah. Gentlemen. So you're on FaceTime. We're doing this. So I'm going to point you to the camera here. I'll turn around, you know, for important moments, but I want people to see your face. We don't have a whole Zoom nice. setup, like I said. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Hella Mark Harley from The Fighter and the Kid. Don't have a Zoom setup? Yeah. That's so oh, weird. I appreciate it. This is awesome. You know, I actually... So now I retract a bit of it. I don't think he yeah. was afraid of you to see a close-up of him, but he did want to point you forward so he can, like, make faces. Right, and... right, 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 yeah. Because you'll see him do that. I'm kind of obsessed with you now, to tell you the <laughs> truth. You know, when we when we first saw you, I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, I mean, look at yourself. You're the Hulk. I mean, the hair, the goatee, the everything. I couldn't believe you existed. <laughs> and I, like many others, took the easy route. And I just started making hella Mark Harley jokes until I realized you're actually not the guy I'm after. Which is true. I appreciate that. And I appreciate people who give me a second chance because I'm very yeah. aware that my appearance is divisive and, and people can, you know, you're, you're free to think whatever you want about me. Uh, I do appreciate when people you know, are able to reconsider. I think that shows a lot of mental dexterity. Yeah. You, know, so you can take a first impression of, and turn that into... And similarly to you, actually, because people have presented you to me as a hater. The first time I heard of you course. brought up, it was like, Red Bar, oh, he just hates on all the LA comics. And so that kind of stayed in my mind until recently I started yeah. watching some of your programming. And my takeaway was, you're kind of like... Uh, the truth detective of the LA comedy scene. Oh, thank you so much. You know, that's heartwarming. And you know what? I find a lot of heartwarming moments with you. Uh, and I tell people this all the time. I go, guys, you know, sometimes a guy can rule and don't mistake ruling for somebody <laughs> who sucks. You know, I'll tell you the first time, you know, uh, we, uh, somebody left a comment or something like red bars watching on your page and you said something it's like good. oh yeah is he ever even able to get out of his wheelchair this sick old man with no friends <laughs> <laughs> yes and that was me being hyperbolic no 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 that that's you, you, you get it you get it because i'm doing yeah. that like, it's like in response to people go like i'm i believe in kind of reciprocating in fun the tone that people give to my page so it's yeah. like that to Take me, that seriously. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. That to me ruled, and I found you know how exciting that was to hear. And I couldn't believe you knew me. <laughs> you know, to me, the fighter and the kid. That's a famous show. You're talking about Brian Callen, Brendan Schaub. This is fame. I didn't know they knew of me. Well, I did, but I mean, I can't <laughs> believe you knew of me. So I overlap, I'd say. From, yeah. From TFAC, I bet I bet a lot of fans of uh, of TFAC K who, who to will that talk closer. about you too. Yep. Oh, yeah. How did you hear about me, if you don't mind me asking? The first time I heard about you, actually, I think was AC <laughs> told me about you a, a couple of years ago. And then, Ooh. but it was, this was in reference, like, again, he wasn't even speaking negatively. He was just like, oh, somebody sent me this video. Who's that? Who said he's... that? Who's that, Brendan? Chappelle. Chappelle Lacey. Oh, Chappelle. I thought you meant Dave Chappelle. I was going to go, ooh. <laughs> Chappelle Lacey, that's the black Chappelle guy. Chappelle Lacey from... had brought you. Yes, yes. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. He's a really sweet guy. Um, yeah. And he just, he had I mentioned you, like somebody sent him a video. Like it, was, it wasn't about you. It was so much like somebody was sending him a video that was, I don't need to see like this guy, you know, shitting on Brendan or whatever. Um, but since then, a, 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 a fan of, of TFAT K that I met in Portland, she was really into you and kind of turned me on to like wow. what your content was actually about. So. So does Brendan and Brian, do they talk about me ever? 
I haven't heard. <laughs> oh. He sounded so desper you, desperate to hear that they did. Like, well, the truth, and to be honest, the truth is that like they're when when they heard I was going on, they were like, Brian freaked the fuck out. They but it's like it's kind of like the TFK subreddit where it's like they know of Mike David and Red Bar, they're scared of him. They see him as this boogeyman. It's like, oh no, he's gonna like like oh no, he got so about. funny. Like, so it's true when I said like I didn't hear him talk about it, but it was like it's like if I brought him up, I'd be like, "Hey, what do you think about Red Bar?" They'd be like, "Oh, like, oh shit, fuck that guy," you know. Like, so I knew they knew of him, but I was speaking honestly, saying like, "Do they sit and talk about you?" No. Do they fear you? Honestly, I yes, because Brian Callen had a meltdown trying to fucking, you, you know, keep me from going. Not, I'm not going to say like meltdown, but he was like, he vigorously attempted me, uh, he vigorously attempted to prevent me from going on Red Bar Radio, and I was like. What are you so afraid of? Like this guy wants to ask me some questions about my time. You're, you're on the spot. <laughs> what is, wait, what? I was like, you putting him on the spot. <laughs> Who putting me on the spot? No, Red Bar. Oh, I asked you to talk about you. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, but I was, but I answered honestly. I was like, do they sit yeah. and talk about you? No. So I don't know if, what I said after that, but like the truth is, they are aware of Red Bar because because Brian was like. He was like, Mark, hey, this is the worst person in the world. Don't do this, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, relax, dude. I'm going to talk about, like, I don't have anything negative to say about you. I'm going to the world. You. <laughs> I, no, you think I'm exaggerating? Brian said, he said verbatim, on my dead father, the worst person in the world, either worst people or worst person. But, like, he was, if he said people, it was in, in order to lump Mike David from Red Bar into the worst people on planet Earth. I was like, <laughs> have you ever talked to this person? Have you ever like, why haven't I heard you? Like, you know what I mean? So that was just the biggest indicator. I'm like, you, like, I'm going on an interview with a guy who's going to ask him about my time working at TFK and you're shitting your pants. What does that tell you about you? Right? Oh, he doesn't want people to know that he's really angry man in real life or something. Uh, I mean, they were clearly scared that I was going to say anything to this guy who would use yeah. that for content. But it's like, guess what, bitch? Like, as I probably covered, Brendan, since before he ever met me, was bringing me up and talking negatively about me and often misquoting me. For example, I made, before I ever met them, Chappelle asked me to make a diet and a workout program for them. So I spent like hours constructing a custom diet and workout program for them, along with like several other kind of like motivational instructions, like, hey, like, Here's how I do it. Here's a way you can do it. Here's other options. Like, and here's like some advice to keep in mind. So I like literally sat down and write that. Brendan brings it up in the middle of a TFK stream. He says, "Hey, hey, uh, can we talk about your uh, your buddy? Bro, he sent us a diet. Like, what the fuck? It's got 300 grams of carb. It's gonna make me fat. It's gonna do this." I'm like, and then Chappelle was like, "What? Like, we like Mark knows what he's talking about. Like, let's call him right now." All I know is I got a Facetime call from Chappelle. I'm like, "What's up?" Or like, you know, "Hey, what's up?" And he's like, "Hey, you're live." I'm like, "Cool." He's like, "Brendan asked some questions about the diet," and he's like. Hey man, you put too many carbs in my diet. I'm like, 222 grams for a, for a 270 pound person is not a lot. He's like, no, there's 300. I'm like, I think I put 220. And he's like, no, no. I'm like, yeah, we can also do a keto diet. Yeah, yeah, no keto. Okay, cool. I never realized. I never realized until like years later. I watched back the episode. I'm like, he brings me up, talks shit about me. He's like, that boy, that, that your friend with the body that won't quit. Man, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like his diet's all fucked up. I'm like interesting and then i made a video about that using that clip to be like and here's what i actually sent him and then guess who got copyright struck this guy yeah. no really? Brendan's a gigantic pussy who even if you call him out about exaggerating the amount of carbohydrates that a professional nutritionist sent him he's going to copyright strike you <laughs> like, i didn't know that's how you guys started off and that, that's how it's rough. And then, and then Chappelle actually tricked me he goes hey brendan wants to work out with you with duke culture i'm like yeah man i'm down like whatever and then I showed up, and Brendan, I, I found it after she was like, Brendan didn't know you were coming. That's a nice gym. <laughs> like, I've seen that gym. It like, no, it is. Zoo Coach is a dope gym. It's a dope uh, atmosphere, especially for a content creator. I've really seen a lot know. of live streams, uh, IRL live streams in there that I Yeah, enjoyed. especially like the new one. The old one is a little bit like, but it was cool because Bradley, like, I'll give Bradley credit for this. He, like, when the entire city of LA was trying to shut his ass down, he was like, fuck you. So yeah, he got generated. They kept cutting yeah, the power. Like, then he got generators. Yeah. He wasn't so, giving up. Whatever criticisms you have about Bradley Martin, keep this in mind. This dude said, fuck you to Los Angeles and the state of California to keep a gym open so people could keep generating content and working out. So, like, 
you know, he's he's and he's, paid he's, the just, fines. He paid just the fines. That alone, right? He like he like went to court, went into like f- severe financial deficit that would have ruined many people because they shut the electricity off of zoo culture. He got generators that cost him thousands of dollars, like whatever, like the operating cost of zoo culture in the pandemic created an enormous financial loss for him. However, that was how that was how I was able to work out in a gym during the pandemic. So like shout out Bradley Martin um for for keeping that gym open and again another guy who's like been nothing but helpful to brendan in my experience who he'll brendan will turn right around and talk shit about him say he's gay and stuff like that i'm like uh you realize like all he's done is help you like he gave you a free zoo culture membership and then like if you ever ask him about fitness advice i'm sure he'd tell you you know positive things and, and then all of a sudden it's like you look know, as gay right it's like or did he like be, is he stronger, better looking, and fuck the chick that you want? And now you're mad. <laughs> but, <laughs> what seems more like, you know? People get scary when they're slighted. Sometimes some people you just can't. Yeah, no, he like, and he like, I know for a fact he was like, like a girl that like I think Bradley had been dating. Like Brendan kind of tried to hit on her, and then was like, it's like, bro, you're hitting on. First of all, you're married. You're hitting on this girl, and then getting like upset that Bradley Martin is dating her when like. Like what? Like <laughs> unpack this whole thing. Like take three steps back. <laughs> then before you start calling Bradley Martin gay for fucking a chick that you're trying to fuck, why don't you think about where that accusation is coming from? Because you didn't see him hooking up with a dude. It's just your gut feeling. Projection maybe, or maybe because me? Yeah, maybe because you feel gay and you're you're going no, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay. Kind of like Jeremy, you're a pussy, 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 you're a pussy. You're a pussy. Exactly. Or am I a pussy? James called himself a pussy. Like when we first started dating, he's like, I'm a big pussy. <laughs> I mean, and a uh, seems nerd, like, right? Cause I don't go around calling guys pussies. Like I don't go like, like I don't go up to like guys who I think I can beat up and go, you're a pussy because you couldn't beat me up. It's like, if I ever do that, like you have permission to shoot me in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the accordion has won the international trophies at the American Association of Accordion Players for 10 years straight. Yep, I'm a nerd. Definitely oh, a nerd. squeeze box champion. That's a weird <laughs> squeeze box. That's a weird instrument to play. Because I played, for example, I played the baritone sax like Lisa Simpson in the high school Ooh. jazz band. <laughs> that was uh, quite mm-hmm. me to see that. Like Lisa Simpson. Did you like, see this, by the way? Can you explain why Brian Callen is doing this? It looks photoshopped to me. I don't think is is Are that you or sure. Not? I, I know I don't, I'm not sure at all, but his legs look bigger than his legs actually are. Miami yeah. Live, May 9th to 11th. Brian Count. A lot of guys have they'll have because like this is something that he might did he post this recently to his Instagram because. I was just searching when you were talking about Brian Cowling calling you like, whoa, wait, watch out for Red Bar. I was like looking for a picture of him to put up for reference. To be be clear, this is the first thing that came up. Brian has been nothing but sweet and supportive to me. He's been, he was one of my biggest advocates. He tried to intervene when me and Brendan would like have our dust ups. Yeah. Brian would call me and be like, hey, what's going on? I hear things are going bad. So, like, Brian, I will give him all the credit in the world for being nothing but nice, supportive. Uh, when he was advocating for me not to go on Red Bar, he saw that he like he was protecting his friend. You know what I mean? I don't think he thought I was going to say anything negative about him per se. But like, it is also it calls it. It's like if you think I'm going to like tell the truth about Brendan and that's going to incriminate him, like what does that say about Brendan, right? So my only issue with Brian is like, I wish that you would. And he, to be honest, he does. He has had difficult conversations with Brendan where he tries to get through to him. It's just. The power dynamic is such where even Rogan can't get through to him. I'm privy to conversations that, that Rogan's had with Brendan where it's like, if that can't turn your mind around mentally, where like he does a similar version of what he did live on the TFAK that they shot from Rogan's studio, where he's like, hey, dude, hey, time to stop fighting, right? And Brendan almost cried, you know, famously. Um, he's Rogan will have difficult conversations with Brendan. Um Brendan will in turn bitch to people like me and go, can you believe what an asshole he is? It's like, yeah, kind of sounds like he loves you and cares about you and wants the best for you. And it's telling you yeah. the truth, you know, um, he doesn't like, Hey, seem that bad. <laughs> no, Rogan's not a guy who goes out of his way. I think to bully people, I think, um, like he, he, he is an honestly well-intentioned person who, if you were like to pull him aside and be like, Hey, you're being a dick to this person for no reason. He'd be like, you know what? You're right. Like, I'm going to not do that. But like, 
is he competitive? Is he fucking like fuck weakness? Is he like yeah, you know, quote unquote alpha male in the sense of like he doesn't give a fuck to like tell you the truth to your face? Like he's not afraid to fight people. Like like he was like he you know his, his association with fighting predates the UFC, but like he was a competitive fighter. So like this is a guy who's clearly not afraid. He understands violence. You know what I mean? So people will always make fun of him, but it's like this is a guy who like went into a ring with people to try to knock them out in kickboxing and taekwondo. So like, you know, it's a guy who's faced the realities of combat. And I think lives in a much more, I know he's an ultra rich guy, but like, to me, he's so much more grounded in reality than Brendan. It's just like, it's not even a question or up for debate. And he's tried to get through to Brendan on many occasions, not many, I'm privy to a few, but it's like, he'll give Brendan very well-intentioned advice that Brendan will mistake for like, you're attacking me because you don't like me or so like, like find some like, yeah, oh yeah, well, you're, you're not even that funny. <laughs> the arena full of people that you sold out don't even like you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider Brendan more like a superficial friend? Like uh, somebody. He's the most superficial person I've ever met. Yes. Yeah. I get that vibe. <laughs> like, because again, why did he, so why did he like me? Because he saw my abs. Then he found out who I really am, and it's like, this doesn't make sense. How is there a buff guy who doesn't also want a Ferrari? Eh. You know, like, <laughs> guys like me short circuit Brendan, because it's like, wait, you can, like, be in good shape and, like, also take drugs and, like, also not give a fuck about, like, wealth, money, or fame, and, like, kind of just be, like, not have grandiose ambitions to, like, be in the NFL, because, like, you know, like, was Brendan better at football than me? I'll give, like, <laughs> I, was, I was a four-year starter at D3 school. He started out at Whittier, and was like a starter at Whittier. He scraped by to get a scholarship at a D1 school at Colorado, you know, like a 50 50, a 500 team at the D1 level. He played like a handful of plays his senior year and thought he was going to the NFL. If I consistently overestimated my end goal capabilities and fell, up and fell that short, he's like, maybe I'll get drafted, but you didn't. And you couldn't even make like a, an Arena League football team. You also thought you were going to be heavyweight champion of the world as a UFC fighter and failed to do that at heavyweight. Then you said you were going to drop down to light heavyweight, then you couldn't do that because you can't diet. And like so, and then you think you're gonna be selling out theaters to me, quote, I thought I was gonna be selling out theaters after the Game of Poppy released. And now my ticket sales are going down. I don't know what's wrong. Hmm, maybe it's because you put no effort into examining your own work to see if there's ways you can improve it. <laughs> so I just want to read some. So there's actually a comment aimed at uh, me and one of these. I want yeah, to read that some. Of... Fuck yeah, that hole. So nah, I'm up. gonna. Oh, no, off top. If you say some shit about Chris, I'll come at you, dog. Nah, I'm gonna call him out and I'm gonna respond to it. Um, I let I let nobody talk shit about my dog. Oh, here it is. Uh, silence. Do good or yeah, whatever your name is. Fuck that silence hole. You need to stay in silence. He bro. says lossless is a red bar hater picking Hell apart no. little things and making up scenarios. When did I do that in any Hell point no, in bro. this? No. On God, on God, he ain't never done that. <laughs> I ain't never done that. No, I All know. I said. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you was I that. complimented his studio? Uh, yeah, I said did. nothing but nice things. Uh, I defended him against Jim Renam's uh, horrible roast of him, and then I said we that I thought maybe he didn't want to face the camera with Mark on to his it face because he didn't want to give him a close up because he does it wear makeup. That's you, you throw out a possibility. Look, that Mike okay. wears makeup. Someone did a thing actually at one point where they did like a Photoshop where they increased the contrast and stuff, and you can That's see the makeup <laughs> lines <laughs> here. Speaking. And there's nothing wrong with it. He thinks it's like a movie set, and he's uh, doing. Jules does his makeup, whatever. No folks wear makeup sometimes. It's okay. Whatever. Bro. What else am I saying? That's so heinous. That's but that's Bring like your hurting seats. your feelings, bro. You need to get you need to get about your feelings, dog. My my main issue is not with Mike, it's with the show. That's right. Um, which I haven't seen in so long. This is an older clip though. Talk to him. But please. in the beginning he was very confrontational and he created all these conflicts, and that's what I loved about it. And I feel like it's just kind of turned into like a gossip reaction channel. And that's just my opinion. I don't hate the guy. Like, that sounds like someone who was in love. And then became indifferent. Yeah, I'm just a bitter <laughs> ex lover who turned think, on Mike. I think I think there's a little bit of I don't give a fuck going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> on God. <laughs> on God, bro. 
Then well, again, yeah. here he says, silence, do good. Yeah, lossless things because he made faces where Mark couldn't see. He was mocking him. You saying that just proves that you're a troll because you know that's exactly what Mark, uh, that yeah. and Red also, Bar was doing. Yeah, I, I would expect him to do that. He that actually, guy. you know what? Fuck this guy. I can find it. There's a point where he actually, under his breath, mumbles that you're like an idiot or something. Right. Also, I mean, did we not notice the part where he, I call in and he's like, already annoyed with me because I don't instantly pick up a FaceTime call when he gave me like a three hour window where he's going to be probably yeah. I like, want to find this and then we can cut off of it but I, I swear hours, you know right. to do stuff right. like that yeah, so yeah. It's like, I like learning that stuff but it's not I think people can see it as insignificant or kind of, oh yeah you just, you just make no it's not insignificant it. trust me even uh, as simply as you know let's see you know, and I was getting you know pretty good and pretty fast at also, making I'm like, sure. I can um, see why he's annoyed so the so face time everything about this is shit in my eight hour shift or whatever after yeah. you know it's just gonna be too dude the fact that he couldn't and set up a zoom like, call in a studio like this but he has like back, space like, station you know, equipment for just a mic like one <laughs> mic I don't like letting people down give me a break my other my other uh theory of it was actually more normal where he's so paranoid and uh perfectionist about the setup that he doesn't want to have like this big kind of like bubble or window of a camera feed in his camera shot he wants it to be a part of the camera shot that's why I think, but put him on an iPad, that, right? Like those, because I know there's a point in here where he, and you're talking, and in the background, he, he I've been taken off that payroll, but somehow I'm getting. He says something super passive aggressive to you, and you don't yeah. catch it. If you're concerned about me not texting you back for a few hours after I'm offering to pay, maybe you have your priorities. Back and, and also, he like, he didn't if I were that, Mike, so I'd kind of be bored by certain things because like, I'm telling my story, and I'm kind of sticking to that. I'm like, I know what he's expecting is something different so like i also would expect him to be like nah, yeah get to the point where you're talking about crystal and touching girls you know like well that was just the whole point he's like yeah i got you right where i want you yeah okay so uh, brian callen nice he's, gonna, brian. he's gonna talk about brian fucking kids yeah i'm gonna get the scoop i'm gonna get the first scoop yeah so like i already knew i'm like this is gonna this is gonna upset this guy because i'm not getting him exactly what he wants but i'm getting what i want out of it you know so this is my dizzle let's see What's their behavior like around women do you have you seen it's easy leading you giving leading questions yeah, what's their was, behavior was, like around women i think i say something clever here which is i'll just say Flirt this. with any let's see how many have you seen them Go on any dates with any women outside of their marriages? Uh, I, that wasn't I very... Really, you know, I can't speak on that. And wow. I'll say this about, I'll say this about Chris. Yeah, I, Chris I was just gonna, you that. know, we, we, I, that's, I've got Chris running through my mind because you also worked on the Golden Hour, and Chris D'Elia is now a part of that podcast. Yes. So yeah, yeah. please say I'll, what you were gonna say. About, I'll say lossless so salty sounds Chris, like you're salty um was very yeah. supportive of me Who Chris said was that? very nice to me Chris, uh tom uh, brady from my podcast yeah, yeah. if i ever did anything tom for him, brady. Be, you know uh effusive in thanks for watching though gratitude towards me yeah my thanks for watching hit the like is that he um knows that he's got problems and he's earnestly trying to get better I could be wrong, but my take on him was was actually that his position is that of sincerity. You this can measure the things that you've heard about him against your own moral compass, um, and take that yeah, information. Yeah, chat slowed from, when you know, it turned into red bar. Him. But my experience yeah, yeah. in person was that he was kind and gracious and went out of his way to help me in ways that. Jason, I don't to, think he's which doing should be that. even more suspicious because for him to be kind and gracious to a guy that's like you, you know, what is he yeah, up to? Nobody like you. That you makes know? me a bad person to so be nice. That, that, that to me is even know. more <laughs> suspicious that he's trying to get these guys to think he's a good guy. Okay, so you would never seen, you'd never overheard Chris, Brendan, or Brian talking about other girls, flirting with other girls outside of their marriages? I would say I, I overheard Chris saying, like, expressing that he's you know talking about rehab or trying to get better or saying like you know it's it's expressing that he is trying and going through something difficult but no not not anything like that and um you know 
it's just I, I have to plead the fifth with some of these other Ooh. you know people but because it's just it's honestly not my place to speculate even um and but you have seen brendan you know, kind of getting close to crossing that line with his marriage there is what you're saying <laughs> Well, I I would just say this. Wait you know, for it. Is there a single person that Brendan is honest to in his life? If so, I'm not I aware. Love you too, wow. Thanks, Rick. Okay. And, you know. How's his but, relationship but, with his son? Have you ever seen him do anything sexual with his son? Who we hear has uh <laughs> he's got uh, suffers from seizures. You ever seen him? Uh, do you think he has a lot of love for his son, or does he hang out with his son a lot? Um, you know, is there? Do I think he loves his son? Yes, very much so. Um, he's very disappointed. The thing that I was going to say earlier is like, I don't know if I mentioned this. You know, we DM'd a little bit, but like he he was doing this joke on stage about me, where and I can like recite it word for word. I've heard it so many times. I've been the you know the, the crowd taking. So he's media pictures. Like, um, like, fuck Mark's talking about himself again. Yeah. This joke he does about me where I'm like in this scenario. Love you, dumpster Rick and nice. But he's telling people, the audience, that I like, I'm like, I had like, to hear Mark's this. Here. He does on my social media. Um, I had to walk outside the club. I hate him here. He's on his phone, so if he wanted to kill me, uh, now would be a good time. So okay. I'm going to get murdered in this joke. He is recently single. I'm not. not um, he's on all these dating apps. Bumble, Tinder, Grinder. Okay. So I'm gay in this joke. Um, yeah. he, he went on this second date with this girl, Tiffany, that he's like, wait, wait, wait. I, I think I'm sorry. Yeah. Is he using you to describe stuff that maybe he's gone through? <gasps> he's accurate in that now, sense. I don't know, but I have asked him before. I'm like, what is going on with this joke? Like, it's completely fabricated. And, you know, nice. there seems to be like a mix of how you I'm actually sorry. feel about me because you're always complaining that I'm on my phone, even though I run all your social media. But let me just get to the punch on the punch. Sure. Is, he goes, uh, in this scenario, I'm telling a girl that I'm going to send a dick pic. So it's like, it's like, you know, it comes to me, he's like, hey, I'm thinking about sending her a dick pic. And then in this scenario, it's like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, go ahead and do that. Like, like mocking the idea that I would do that in this climate. He's like, yeah, man, great idea. In this climate, yeah, great idea. It's like, you know, it's probably all dick pics to everyone. Punchline says, yeah, Mark's on steroids. Ha 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 ha. And it's like, it's an actual laugh line. Um, While Brendan's taking then, steroids, and I got him, he goes, a laugh line is still because I'm on Mark's on steroids. On it, you know, because you take so many steroids. Um, and My then he goes, goes, Houston, or whatever city is it, you know, San Antonio, it was the worst dick pic I've ever seen. And it's taken sure. it on like a great white shark. He's never seen uh, a dick pic in my It's this, it's that. I'm like, like I've never like, shown so you this, a dick pic. In this scenario, this, this I'm like, and that's all yeah, yeah, my dick has deals. I've taken the closest thing. So, and this is like, this is all a like, setup. I'm not breaking any news, but this is like a whole bit where. He throws me in the yeah, this whole thing is so long. I'm not yeah, gonna be able to find it, but I know. I know. I can imagine he was like Mike, not getting what he wanted, but me getting what I wanted out of the situation. And also, that was good to refresh my memory of like what he actually said because I forgot some of the bits of the joke. Where it's like that was like a five minute setup that he would do at the start. He would come on stage, and be like, yo, yo, Houston, what's up, yo? Hey, you guys know Mark? He's in the back there. Yeah, um, he's really single. He's on dating apps. He's on steroids. Ha ha. Oh yeah, it's fucking. Uh, he's going. He takes girl to Applebee's, right? Doesn't count there, right? The second night, it's like Applebee's. So it's like I'm cheap. Um, his security. I'm bad at my job. He's gonna get murdered. I'm gay because I'm on Grinder. I'm sending shitty dick pics. My dick. Like it's like ten insults of the guy who has to be in the room taking pictures of him because I'm I'm doing a social media in order to set up the joke. The whole punchline to end that thing is. I'm the Steven Spielberg of dick pics. I got a whole green screen set up. What's popping right now? Minions. I got fucking a yellow filter with goggles on it. Jurassic Park. I'm putting a fucking T-Rex filter on my cock. Like, that part of the joke isn't even that bad. It's just like, why did you need to insult me for five minutes at the forefront of this? And then secondly, who are you sending these dick pics to? As a married guy, you're like, yeah. you're like stage lighting dick pics all the time? Like, what? Because... Who are these going to? Like, because you never mentioned it. It isn't like to my wife. It's like, so we're left. We're like, sounds like you're sending dick pics to a lot of people. And my theory on this is actually because have you ever seen this? Um, this guy posted on the subreddit, and some people would be like, oh no, that was debunked. I'm like, no, it wasn't. But this guy posted this story of like, in some, it's a different subreddit than the TFAC case subreddit, where he's like, I just got fucked by like this 
this like famous like podcaster and he like goes into detail about the story and it's like oh my god that's Brendan Shaw the giveaway is he wears a beanie while fucking and his ears are all fucked up he was like is that a condition or what? so like cauliflower he, ear yes he inadvertently describes that it's like it's like there is no other human on earth who's a famous podcaster who's like looks like this and like would wear a beanie while fucking a dude who comes to his hotel because he couldn't hook up with a girl that night he's on grinder sending dick pics and maybe he sent a shitty dick pic or a guy sent a shitty dick pic to him but i'm like he's never told a joke on stage it's completely like imaginative he always what he does is role reversal so it's like there's one part of the green with poppy where he's like my wife's a real rattlesnake uh first day of picture or first day of school she asked the kids to send a picture or like like in the scenario, like Brendan takes the picture of the kids and like, geez. And then she goes, crop out the uglies, send back. And he's like, the punchline is like, we're in a group chat with the other moms. Oh my God. And I go, did she really do that? Cause like, do you want to see him super nice to me? And he goes, no, I said that. Like crop out the uglies and send back. So it's like, oh, so all your stand up is like, like the dick in this joke becomes the other person. See how everyone else is stupid. See how everyone else is mean. So how everyone else is weird. See how Mark's incompetent. See how Mark's in dick pics. See how Mark's gay. But like, I honestly believe that Brennan Shop has had sex with men on several occasions. And somebody just happened to put it in the corner of, of the subreddit. And the moment somebody was like, that was Brennan Shop, they took the story down, but it but it, it had already been screenshotted. So it's like his obsession with penis cannot be understated. I'll just say that. It's like I've never heard a guy joke more about dicks, talk more about dicks, like reference other people's dicks. Like, and I've been in a locker room of college football players in rooms full of dicks where that's kind of the age where you like get your dick talk out or it's like dicks, 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 dicks. He's got a big dick. That guy's got a small dick. We're all have different size dicks. We're guys in a room. It's like normally men advance past that stage of like dick obsession. And if, if you want to be an adult man who appears straight, maybe keep that dick obsession private. Right. If you're like 40 years old and, Still going, yeah. No, no, it gets to the point where it's like, we're so manly, we'll suck each right. other's cocks, right? It's like, you know, that's that stopped being funny 20 years ago, or what you're like, well, like, just in your like in the timeline of like what you think is funny. It's like he does too many, like, haha, what if I was gay jokes? He has a whole bit about, did you see that? Where he's like, I forget if this made his special or not, but he's like, oh, it'd be so fucking cool to be. He has a bit about. It would be so awesome to be gay. I'd have this little twink. My my assistant, like Zachary, would be there. Like it was like an elaborate, like ten minutes. It wasn't a bit. It was like uh, it's too much. Know? And I'm like, at first you're like, okay, that's cute. But then like when you keep bringing it up, and then you know, like maybe say girls that he's hooked up with, I've heard describe him as like being obsessed with black dicks. And be like, tell me about the biggest black dick you've ever sucked or something. I'm like, he said that during sex. <laughs> like. <laughs> again god damn yeah. i wouldn't I'm the person who who people have told that to right like i'm just making that up in a thin air right uh some things you wish you could unhear right chris <laughs> yeah no, another thing in this interview i remember at the end he, he brings up brendan's kid having seizures right, and stuff right. he was trying to get something dirty out of you there brendan champ touches kids yeah Does here's he a I want to respond to the chat because I want to be fair. There's lots of positives, but no, I want to talk to the people who are giving negative stuff. Um, yes, give it to us. Give you guys a reason to be here. Um, let me I'll see. Somebody was saying, like, obviously it's all just trolling because they're claiming that I was being super negative or something, but that's so stupid. Wu Tang says, with respect, you could ask the same thing of this panel and the point of their stream. Uh, why host a live stream just to shit on the people commenting? Huh? We didn't, uh, we didn't shit on the people commenting. We responded to your that. negative comments uh, pretty cordially. Right? Uh, Jason McNiff, Wu Dash Tang, um, May Noodles said, "Yeah, he's not shitting on anyone. I didn't. If you talk shit, take the heat. And I wasn't really doing any crazy. Uh, not at all." <laughs> uh germanicus says we wash we've been cool can we bounce these babies Nah, leave them in there i don't care like i said if it's not doxing um i don't care um let me see uh y'all hate jimmer for reason valid reasons some of us hate mark for reasons valid reasons mark mark's hats shop i think you mean to say 
hates learn to spell there. Yeah. Shob for reasons, valid reasons. If you want a uniform discourse, start a discord you know. What are you talking about? The show title is Jimmer, not Mark. Correct. Not a live stream that you advertise at Chang's. Others say, I don't even know what Chang's is. This is a mixture of cultures and uh, communities. Is, dude. Dumpster Rick, maybe next time I will come up, but to too many beers now, LOL. Met is my fun favorite Wonder Woman. You go, girl. Jason McNiff, I said, we are watching a live stream of three people watching a live stream of one guy watching a live stream of one guy. What? No, you went too far with that. We're two people watching a clip of Red Bar. Um, there's somebody who just asked me a quick uh, question, by the way, on a Reddit. Also, like, that's 90% of internet content. I'd say we're more original than most. It was more original content here at most. It was 90% of this panel was us on camera just talking. There's and then a guy we brought up clips at the end because we want to give context to the things that we're talking about. Because people, you see, there's Red Bar people here. There's TFAC people here. Then there's people who are, like, involved in the Jimmernam thing. So, like, you have three different like communities of people and we're trying to give everybody context for what we're talking about red bar to those people we gave you jimmy name context for the people who don't know him We've and then yeah, t-fact really stuff for the people who don't know that i'm going to answer a question that i got directly from the subreddit um somebody said uh this is w y so like y dog four five eight four nine five four didn't think you'd actually read this. Uh, this is unrelated to the jimmy name thing but uh after watching everything that's happened the last year and for me like the five-year downfall, where do you see a guy with kinky 10K views on YouTube? Uh, I don't know what he meant, like weekly. Uh, 10K views on YouTube vids and failing comedy number 25 Cedar Boys. Will Shab continue writing out his comedy lamp or try to pretend he's an NFL pro? Daddy's money can't last forever. That's a very valid question. Um, he's basically asking, I know there's some problem. I always have typos on Reddit, and I'm not going to hold that against him. I think the gist of his question was... Um, where do I see Brendan in the future? Will he ever admit that his comedy career is trending in the wrong direction is ultimately a failure? Because there's no way for him to correct the ship. Like he believed in his mind that Gringo Poppy was going to launch him to the place where he's like a Tom Segura level act, where like you can sell out theaters like in most places, or a Theo Vaughn level act, where it's like these guys are crushing on the road. Like maybe they're not doing arenas, but it's like like. Theo Vaughn's podcast gets a million views every episode, or like yeah. even, oh, it's half a million. Like he like he gets these huge guests and just like and also I just think like I love Theo's comedy. Um he's 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 put in like I knew him and I think you and I knew him from the the, the real world spinoff road rules, right? So like, yeah, road like, rules. So I like, remember watching that. Putting in your fucking reps, your hours. I saw Theo doing stand-up in 2009 at the improv lab, like. He has apps. It's just like talk about a guy who deserves whatever moment he's having right now. And I'm sure that the sky's the limit for him. But it's like guys like him, guys like Segura, like guys like uh, fucking Shane Gillis, who's, whose new special I just watched. It's like, fuck, man. To me, he's got the best Trump impression for, for one example. But I think his stand up in general is like he is so good at self deprecating. He does this bit about like my ex, my ex, uh, my, or my, my current girlfriend has an ex that's a Navy SEAL. He's like, I used to think, I used to think the worst thing you could be, like the worst thing my my girl could be, could have had in her past was a black guy. <laughs> and he says, I mean that with all due respect. Like, yeah, I wish I wish women would be scared of my penis. The only people who are scared, the only women who are scared of my penis is in like a parking garage. <laughs> there's actually, um, so there's been a big th push for like Shane Gillis being like kind of the savior of Rogan podcast I mean, because, is, because I think he doesn't give a fuck. He's the anti he's been call Yeah, he's been calling him out. Like, um, yeah, there was a, I'm trying to remember. Like I just watched this clip the other day. It was about Shane Gillis. He was on Rogan and Rogan had said something that made no fucking sense. And Shane Gillis is like very heavily knowledgeable Vikings. about the subject. And he kind of like schooled him on it. Vikings. He, yeah. Yeah. Vikings. Yeah. Rogan kept saying like Vikings were the like, typical it's, stereotype, it's, it's, and he's like, "Nah, they actually don't look like that. They look like like yeah. shit." Right. <laughs> so the most important myth. thing from that is like not only okay, so the guy and the guys were just regurgitating this guy's point who made the video, but he's like, Shane Gillis is secretly reads a shit ton. Shane Gillis 
isn't afraid to have a normal conversation with Rogan like a friend where he can disagree with him. And he wasn't going, I'm going to trump your knowledge. He, the reason that they got into the convo was he, he goes, have you ever seen that show Vikings? So he's like, I want you to watch Vikings. And all um, Shane said was, yeah, I kind of certain things. Eh, Karen, like I lose interest. And they're like, well, what is that? And he's like, yeah, you know, they get like girl. Like, is there shit where it's like the girls beating up the guy? And they're like, no, not really. And he's like, well, even like just like the like, okay, they have like the horns and do the costumes. He's like all this. He was basically like, I can't watch shit where I know there's so many historical inaccuracies that it takes me out of this moment. And I was like, I respect that. You know, it's like if you're portraying the 90s where I grew up, I'm like, that doesn't look like the fucking what, who wore that? <laughs> like, I'd be like, if I knew anything about a, a, a time period to the extent that like, it's like the Nazis weren't dressed like that. Why are you representing World War II dramas like that? That would be silly to me. Right. So he was basically saying yeah. like, Viking, a show about Vikings where they're completely misrepresenting what Vikings look like seems silly to me, right? But in the process of saying that, he did disagree with Rogan and educated him on it, and they had Jamie pull it up, and Shane was right about everything. So the guy's point is like, here, oh, the guy's like, I looked retarded and I have Down syndrome and I love Trump. He's actually smarter than everyone there. And I thought that was really cool. And he's also like, I legit, oh, also there was one, he, he covered probably in the same video, he's like, Shane Gillis doesn't have a writer. He's like super undemanding. Like, and Andrew Schultz and his uh, his co host, uh, Akash, who I've met before and is really cool. He was like, he's like, you don't have anything that were like baffled. He's like, you don't make any demands. He's like, no. Like, he's like, and they're like, because you'd be embarrassed too. He's like, yeah. Like, he's like, he's the blue collar guy that Brendan Schaub, like, if he could fucking snap his fingers and like be Shane Gillis, except have abs, he would like, cut off his fucking limb to do that. You know what I mean? Like, like he's like, if I could wake up tomorrow and be Shane Gillis, but like still have a big dick and maybe some like ab definition, like he would like, he would go and murder his whole family, I think, to, to make that scenario happen. Like he would make that deal with the devil because Shane Gillis is exactly who Brendan like would love to be perceived as. A guy who's just about the comedy. Yeah, maybe he did some sports and it didn't work out. But right now he's like, He's the next big thing. He's putting in the work. Like, no one can deny he's funny. He doesn't give a fuck about anything else. That's what everyone says about Shane. But this is about Brennan is, hey, man, maybe worry less about getting a Ferrari and worry more about telling funny jokes on stage to human beings. This is the clip about the Vikings thing. And I also remember there was that funny moment when he first came on. And he had that controversy. And he was saying, like, oh, if I can only go on Joe, oh, Joe Rogan, it'd all be yes. good. Oh. And Rogan didn't get the joke, and it was kind of super okay. awkward. And he was just like devastated for so long about that. Well, then he so brought funny. it up, and that's what Brendan wouldn't do. Is if, he, if Brendan gets embarrassed, he will keep it to himself and then take it out on someone else or whatever. But like the way that he dealt with it, I'm like, fuck, man, the the balls to just admit like I just got humiliated. Like it's like the self awareness and self deprecation. How many people are you gonna win over with that? When you see somebody being like, man, I just fucked up, didn't I? Like, it's like, it's such a human and relatable moment that like, if you're not a fan of that guy after seeing that moment, like it's like, ah. but then Rogan's explanation is also rational. He's like, oh, I didn't know where you're going with this. Like, I didn't know what you were, it took me a second. I don't even think Rogan missed the joke. It was just like, imagine you're like, and then I thought I'd go on the Mark Harley podcast. I'm like, did you, wait, did you actually think that? Or, oh, I thought it was funny. I'm like, no, yeah. I, I don't want to put you And down. the dead silence too. Maybe. Yeah, it, it was, was like, he was like, it was just a human moment, right? And then it was like, they made it funny. He could have ignored it. He could have been like in his head the whole time. Like, oh shit, I just fucked up. Like, what do I say now? Do I not try to make any jokes? Does Rogan hate me? Like, you know, imagine the pressure. You're on Joe Rogan. You know what I mean? Like your first time, this could go really good. Or you could be, what if you're like the worst guest of all time? Fuck this guy. This guy sucks. And Joe Rogan exposed how unfunny he is. He doesn't know that, right? <laughs> Let's check out uh, this clip here. It's I got. It. I think I started at the part. Women? <laughs> oh, they kill everybody. All right, good. Everybody no, no, no. I mean, like, the badass, kick-ass woman characters. Yeah. Do they have that? They have a couple. That usually takes me out of a... No, no, they're realistic. Okay. I mean, they're not, like, fucking up all the dudes or anything like yeah. that. Ah, uh, the old Conor McGregor woman. <laughs> I don't love it. They announced a sequel. <laughs> Is the girl in this... Oh, it's Netflix. And the armor. The armor takes me out of it. It looks... Why? It's a little too Game of Thrones, you know? Hmm. Show what a real Viking looked like what did they really look like it looked like shit dude <laughs> <laughs> they were like five six they were not these giant yeah well how the fuck does the mountain come from where does he come from then 
They, how are you going to wear like tall, three felt fifty shirts? Dude. They look like fucking dickhead. That's look at that. really they look, look like, like hobbits, dude. What is that? That's <laughs> I mean, real. that's that's not them, but <laughs> that's not real. That's a Ren fair. Look yeah. at that fucking kid. Those are, those are cosplaying. <laughs> those people are cosplay oh. people. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't zoom in on his eyes. <laughs> that's not fair to that little fella. That's what nah, they're supposed to look like. Oh, this is this is they've been glorified because they were. Do we have an accurate depiction of what they actually look well, like? I don't think there was. Well, click on that. I mean, what, nobody took a picture. What real yeah. Vikings wore? Click on that. What? What real Vikings wore? Where, where is, uh, see it? Uh, right, yeah, right here. yeah. So click on that. Let's These see. are the best moments because I love the other one where, uh, what was it? Rogan was um, watching like a news clip and it was um, a boxing match between that guy named Dad and he's like a YouTube creator. Uh -huh. And he was fighting his son, but it was another YouTube creator, and he was beating the shit out of him. And he's Rogan goes through this whole speech about like, yeah, this is I, disgusting. Yeah. The guy's beating up his own son, and he's proud of it, and he's celebrating yeah. after. And then Jamie and goes, then say, "Oh, the that it's all fake." And then yeah. Joe Rogan goes, "Why does it lie?" <laughs> it's like the greatest <laughs> uh, sound clip. <laughs> He there's needs some, more of that, though. I think. I know he, there's some people who are like Brendan is afraid to disagree with Rogan. He'll be yeah. passive aggressive about him. He'll he thinks he's gonna go. I'm gonna ruin your career for disagreeing with me. Don't right. be a pussy. He's just like Brendan Don't be is a just, pussy like Jim or Nan. Yeah, like he loves power dynamics. Brendan loves fucking with power dynamics, and he feels more like ever since Brian came back, it's like, oh, now that he knows that he needs T K, you probably all notice an uptick in like how he bullies Brendan and how he like. Is more of a dick to him. It's because he knows Brian can't leave because he has a you know like he's got alimony, he's got a house payment, he's got a new family. He's like he's in and he can't work in Hollywood, so he's more financially dependent on this than he was previously or when it started. Like so, Brendan will always take advantage of a power dynamic gap. You know. Hold on, I'm just looking in the chat here. Mass said or Germanica said there was a troll in my head that had the similar name. Which which troll are you guys talking about in the chat room? Wu Tang. Uh, Silence do do good says Mark's definitely hitting the Addy. Six hours of talking this much. I've been talking well, the entire time and I have not been on Adderall. I know people it's it's weird in the suburbs. So I I will admit I took a microdose of LSD before this and drank some wine, but that's the only substances that I've taken in today. Um <laughs> People act as if and you and i have talked privately it's like i that's yeah. what broadcasters do first of all like howard yeah. stern does a five six hour broadcast yeah. you think yeah, he's I, doing adderall he's should. like a 70 year old man i know like yeah that's i guess what? I, talking, I, I woke up i worked out i did a bunch of shit today and i still have some i still have energy because i don't do you know six hour live streams every day so i made sure to as we talked about before like hey mark make sure to rest up this like, is the first one i've done in five years and also the other thing is like i come from that school of like i'm not a youtuber i was originally first into doing like broadcasting live audio yeah. online and then the video came later but that was what it was i would go to like broadcasters to me where people i'd go to work and they would get me through the six hours of work and right and another show would come on and for the rest of the day that's what these guys are for it's they're just, keeping you harder than that <laughs> listed in the background you don't have to be focused you can be doing something in the background and hearing the audio and i think i'm trying to do a good job of keeping it to where you could listen to this same show just the audio and it still would make sense to you um, yes we could do a whole other podcast like i know a lot of people know about it but i i some of my friends didn't know about it like going through that uh, Brendan and Bobby Lee saga and how yes. it led to Bobby going on the H3 podcast, which in the end, it's so weird. Brendan ended up kind of winning in a way where he didn't get divorced, right? But Bobby yeah, Lee he, did because right. like his infidelity, uh, Kalila's infidelity was exposed because she's banging some dude in, in Hawaii. Who was directly responsible for that, right? Yeah, and 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 the the funniest thing is Bobby was innocent the whole fucking time, and he's the one who loses in the end. Yes, uh, so I know. I'd well, love to. I'd, I'd love to go yeah. through that. It's, it would be. I'm gonna pee. By the way, I'll put it on mute so you guys don't have to hear me piss. But yeah, no worries. The only issue I have is uh, the fact that I have to pee. So. Uh, Laura Lay, all these drug accusations, but I haven't seen any proof. But if he was, I wouldn't really care. How do we prove that to you, Laura Lee? Um, I don't know. What, what can I show you? I have this. This is vape juice. It has 
just nicotine in it. See, I don't know if I can get that focus there for you. Wait, hold on. Let me make it full screen. We need to do a, a legitimate investigation. Let me remove this. Let's see here. Let's get rid of Mark Pissing. There we go. This is really annoying, actually. Anybody who vapes. Do you even vape, bro? Um, they don't sell. Canada just did a flavor a favor. Can't speak. Flavor ban. Um, New York has done that like a year ago, I think, or something. So now they only sell tobacco flavors, which I hate. Um, to get like flavored juices now, you have to buy like pure nicotine mix. This is like a 20 milligram. And then you have to buy like these little 10 milliliter bottles of the flavoring. And so then this thing is like 27 milliliters. And then you take the flavoring thing and you fill it up to the top of this red thing. And then you got to mix it. It's so stupid. They found this whole loophole to still sell them. But you can't just buy the flavors. That's just get people to stop vaping, right? But like Robin a, came back from everything. Mexico and she bought all these disposable things, these elf bars. And uh, I have this is insane. So here in Canada, you can buy these elf bars for like 20 bucks, right? She yeah. went, to, she was in Mexico and she bought them. It's basically a clone of the elf bars. Guess how much this cost? This one thing. Just guess, because this is $20, and I'm it has, this is 5,000 puffs, $20. This is 6,500 puffs I'm from Mexico. The, Mexico is two bucks. $60 US. What? In Mexico? Yes. Whoa. How the fuck does that work? I don't know. It was like 800 pesos for each. That's crazy. I don't know why it was more expensive in Mexico, but this gonna... 20 bucks. And these, the problem with these things is like this, like my normal vape, this is like a caliber and it's called. Um, it's like green screening a bit, but um, this just has like regular juice taste. It's just the taste. There's no menthol. These. Even if you don't get the ice flavored, like you say, I want no ice, they all have the same like weird menthol, like cutting of your throat feeling, and I fucking hate it. Um, but I use them if I ever run out, like as backups. But this one doesn't have it as bad, but uh, most of them have this. I don't know why. It's like you're smoking a menthol, what's it called? A uh, Newport. Can I show you what this podcast has been sponsored by on my end? Yeah, hold on. Let me get you. What does that look like? That's your uh, your microdose of uh, LSD. <laughs> that's a full tab. So I took a quarter of one of oh, those. It's a full tab. Yeah, that's a that's just a you know. But uh, yeah, I I have a friend who um who does micro dosing of mushrooms mm -hmm. or ketamine. I've heard people doing that too. I've never. How does that help? Like, what does that do for you? The the microdose LSD. What do you feel? Well, uh, the main things you're gonna notice at like a sub sort of psychedelic. Because I've taken like five, six abs of LSD and had full psychedelic like visual experiences. LSD is my favorite recreational drug. I also, I, I've drank this bottle of wine while I was on live stream. Um, the first thing that you notice about LSD at a microdose level is, I would say, a, serotonin, a serotonergic mood enhancement. So you kind of have an enhanced feeling of well-being. You're like, things are good. I can laugh at more stuff, right? It's a good. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Mood enhancer. Some Italian wine. Beautiful. So do you, with, in LSD to me pairs well with alcohol, LSD is a mood enhancer. Um, it, the unique thing about LSD compared to mushrooms is you hit a level of drug saturation in your blood that lasts for a greater period of time than any other drug that I'm aware of. Mushrooms is like, <laughs> is that, Hava, Nagila, Hava. is that my, is an imitation of my Jewish father? Yeah, this is my. Where's uh, the Comica? That's the joke, guys. From Bot Mitzvah, Robin's kid, her daughter. But yeah, um, if you've never taken LSD as a microdose, I don't know. I, I I tend to be an advocate for that, and I will try to describe it in as neutral terms as possible. But color saturation know. increases, and just mood enhancement, and things are funnier, and you feel a sort of. If I took a microdose in the morning of LSD, I wouldn't feel the need to take caffeine, for example. It has that sort of effect where you're like alert, awake, 
you just have to time it right because if you take it too late, it will interfere with your sleep. What Could is you this? imagine I won this? <laughs> National In my physical. shape? Well, well you look like you're out of shape to me, but, you know. This is from... Uh, uh, I guess I don't know if all America. Th- yeah, well, it's national. You remember in school? I don't know if you had it when you were in high school. They did the physical fitness test, mm-hmm. and they had the national award, and then there was the presidential award, which was like a blue version. Yeah, you had to you had to run a mile in like sub five minutes or something. I'm I mean, sure you could do that now, but <laughs> fuck, no, that I was can't. hard, and I've pulled it off. So, you, and then you, it's like a whole thing. You had to do like sub five. A minute mile then you got to do like x amount of push-ups pull-ups all this shit it's crazy we should look it up but a, so a sub five minute mile is insanely difficult i've done a sub six minute mile at 230 pounds i almost fainted to get 555 <laughs> brent here's you know one of, of brendan chop funny lore thing he claimed to have run a sub five minute mile in front of these other guys the buttery bros who are very like fitness aware if a 260 pound guy tells you I run a side, sub five minute mile. You're like, hmm. I wonder if you have any proof of that. It's sort of like saying, like, <laughs> yeah. you're like 130 pounds. You're like, I bench press 800 pounds. You're like, that's interesting. It doesn't seem to be compatible because every person I've ever seen who runs a sub five minute mile is very thin, or like is a Navy SEAL, or like you know what I mean. It's like it's an elite athletic achievement to run a side, sub five minute mile, especially at 200 pounds. But I had cross country and her friends in high school, for example, who ran like. Four forty-five miles, and I'm like, you are building, yeah. you know. Um, so, and it's not even good if you're like a lean person. Running is not even, or any cardio is not good for you anyway, which is kind of well, funny. That that's a broad term, but I'm going to say like it's like or to limit. You're supposed to limit it, very limited. If you want to gain weight, I would say yeah. Like so, yeah. Like, like, that's what I, I want to do. I'm not gaining weight. I'm like, well, you're doing a bunch of cardio. You don't take any rest between sets. You don't eat anything. You know, like there's always these. But some people are kind of addicted to like now running makes you feel good. That's why I've always run. And I could like it was funny because I like Brendan, we do these tough mutters and it's like, oh, we got to train for this like nine mile race with obstacles breaking up. It's like, do you know, during the pandemic, I ran a half marathon at 235 pounds just for fun, like like around my block or do you, like, but, you, but yeah, go, go ahead and you get in shape. But like, bitch, I'm there. Like, <laughs> um but I've never seen Brendan run a, a mile continuously. I'll say that much. I've never seen him run a mile continuously. Or no. at sub 11 minute per mile pace. Have you heard of the the Peloton? Because we have like the Peloton bike and the Peloton treadmill. Yeah, uh, I know in, the about ba- it. in the basement. Yeah, Robin uses that a lot. And I I tried uh, the bike and the, the treadmill, I think once. But everything I was, I was reading about trying to bulk up was don't do cardio, focus on heavy lifting, lots yeah. of protein, lots of uh, carbs, uh, eating a lot of meat, a lot of small meals a day, right? Yeah. These are all these are all general good bodybuilding tips. Now I think cardio in general, if you did 20 minutes of low intensity cardio a day, that's great for your heart. The only thing yeah. you have to worry about if you're trying to gain weight is like, are you doing too much cardio that that is somehow surpassing your caloric surplus that you're creating from, from eating? If mm-hmm. it is, then you want to do less because some people are like, they run a lot and they just really like that. But it's like, if you want to gain weight, you have to change these dials, eat more food, run less, whatever it is. But it's is, it, is running bad for skinny people? No. If you want to gain weight, should you be running a marathon every day? No. Is it right. possible? Like any amount of cardio you can do, you can probably out eat. If you want to drink a fucking gallon of ice cream that's melted after you run a marathon, you probably won't lose any weight. You know, like like you, any amount of exercise can be balanced with an, an amount of calorie intake. It's just what lengths are you going to to fill your body up with with junk? If you're doing like a, an extreme marathon, like the amount of food you have to intake to burn all that might be too much for some people. But like if you are running that much every day, you can get away with more shit. Yeah, my goal has always been because like for the majority of my life, I was never able to gain weight no matter how much I ate. Mm -hmm. And then it was probably within this last year, I gained like 25, almost 30 pounds for the first time in my whole life. Was it through lifting? No, just eating, eating more or maybe I'm because I'm getting older. I don't know what the factors were. I just I hadn't weighed myself in so long. And I remember every time I was weighing myself, it was like the same every time. And yeah. then I went to weigh myself like a couple times this past year. And it was like, I was finally up like 20, 25 and then almost 30. And it depends yeah. on like, it fluctuates, obviously. 
Yeah. Right. And so a lot of people will kind of go like, oh, this is just because of age. I'm like, well, I think people tend to think metabolism changes more than it actually does. It's like there is a slowdown in metabolism via age, but it's like people think it's like this 30% slowdown. It's really like, eh, it's more like 3%. You know what I mean? I, I'm not sure on those exact numbers, but people always like, it's like, oh, and then you just turn old and become fat. It's like, well, you also stop moving as much. You know what I mean? Like That's true. That's when you're true. Kid, you're doing That's all true. Stuff. That's true. And you're going sports. And it's yeah. like, if you moved as much as you did when you were a kid, you probably like, you know, you'd be burning more calories every day. So there are many factors. In, but if you want to like anybody who's like, I'm skinny and I want to look bigger, it's like you could pick the six basic compound movements, which is like horizontal pressing, vertical pressing, downward pressing, horizontal pulling, um, or sorry, vertical pulling, horizontal pulling, upward pulling. Um, then for the legs, any form of squatting and hinging. And for the abs, any sort of abdominal flexion, like weighted crunches. Those movements I just listed, if you just did one of those for one heavy set three times a week, you would get bigger over time if you did them intensely enough. So that's, you know, it's just think about how your body, if you, if you can do more like this, if you can do more like this, if you can do more like this, if you can pull, 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 you'll be bigger. And it's better, I don't, correct me, I don't know if it's true or not. It's better to do heavier weights less if you're trying to build muscle and you're skinny versus lighter weights a lot of times. Fun yes. Fact, hypertrophy is identical between the reps of five and 30. If you go within a, the, the, the same proximity to failure, meaning if you go to failure at five or 10, or 15, or 20, or 25, or 30, your body doesn't care as far as hypertrophy. Um, peak strength changes when you start to go under that level, right? It's like if you're training for a powerlifting event, you don't want to be doing 30 reps. However, if you're putting on muscle, if everything you did was 30 reps to failure, you would gain, scientifically speaking, the same as the person who's doing everything five reps to failure. Now, hmm. do I know anyone who wants to do 30 reps to failure? No, because it's fucking boring. I'd rather do like I'd rather do ten, right? Um, ten is this nice, like little theoretical groove of niceness because five's kind of heavy. It's almost like the first one's heavy. Ten's like the first one you should be able to could be control. Like imagine a voice you can explode up and then control down. The first one out of a ten rep set shouldn't be that hard, but by the tenth one, it should be burning and like uh, if the oh I can't quite uh, that's the feeling you want, right? Explode up, control down. That's for building muscle, for making your muscles bigger. I'm not talking about Olympic weightlifting. I'm not talking about powerlifting. I'm not I'm talking about peak strength performance. But those are the foundations, right? If you want to be a powerlifter, get some muscle first. So that typically involves just getting a really good movement pattern to failure in a certain you know, rep range between 5 and 30 on these basic movements. You know, if you, if you can overpress... Uh, overhead press 100 pounds right now, what would you look like if you could do 200 pounds? I guarantee your fucking shoulders and traps and upper chest would be way bigger. That's all. I saw uh, Mike David from Red Bar. He says his exercise just go like this over and over. <laughs> he thinks this is going to make him uh, bigger. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing trap workouts. This is, this is, I don't know if Mark, Helen Mark Harley told me, this is how you get bigger traps. You just, you just shrug at stuff. Okay. So I'm going, what, yeah, what we're doing here? Uh, we got to move this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he says he's okay. Oh, he's only typing. Uh -huh. we're gonna throw, oh, my God. I don't have time. No, I don't know. He doesn't come on the stream now. Oh, boy. Uh, Jules, did you talk to him before? Hey, tell him we got time to come on. What is Joe? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he is. Hello, Mark. Hi. Hi, Mark. I love you. You're the best. You're handsome. You're great. You're amazing. I love you, Mark. Crystalline touching kids. Eh? Oh, boring. Oh, my God. This fucking guy won't tell me about Brian Kelly and Muslim kids. Oh, I don't get it. Laura Lee uh, says, but if he was, he, I really wouldn't care. Silence, do good. LOL, Jason. Here we go again. Jason McNiff. He just said. He took LSD. Laura Lee, 
I'm not talking about just that. Silence do good. Pissing in the sink, uh, Mark? <laughs> yeah. JC McNiff, Laura Lee, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Laura Lee, you don't have to, LOL. Silence do good. Laffy cry face. Laura Lee, good one, Jason. Laura Lee, Germanicus, Laura Lee, smiley. Silence do good. Jason is cooking tonight. Laura Lee says, Germanicus, children, you know. Jason McNiff, I took 25... UG ultra, uh something unigrams whatever micrograms LS, micrograms UG is micrograms yes why isn't it MG because that's milligram ah LSD when the stream started silence do good says so many lost people hair B uh Jason McNiff Laura oh, Lee you do not matter how matter. many chigs you fuck B doesn't matter you do not matter I do not matter. Less is Silence do good says his vape cost sixty dollars, guys. No, it actually cost eighty eight hundred pesos. Get it right. Uh it was like a gift Robin brought back from Mexico, which she didn't know what she spent. She's like, I think I got ripped off. And then I looked it up eight hundred pesos is sixty US dollars. I was like, what wow. the fuck? Um, how can you hate me, Marg? God. Yeah. There's your proof, Laura Lee. Man, these are kids. So I think he's Laura Lee's insinuating these are children that are commenting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If you're a kid, what are you doing up this late, first of all? Yeah. Silence Duke good says, woman, these are children. Timbo says, shrooms don't ever stop working once they start working. That's really? Half-life is pretty short. It's like uh, five hours yeah. max. Any of my trips on, like, a full trip was like, wow the, i have all the secrets to the universe and i can almost grasp it and then the next day you're like uh what what was that all again uh, i forgot yeah, you didn't have a hangover. that's the great thing about mushrooms i remember like you're like having this great mushroom trip and like and unlike alcohol you don't like you don't feel like shit the next day you're like man i got really high mushrooms and the next day you're like perfectly coherent right um so unless you unless it compromises your sleep which lsd can do because it's a, you know it ultimately has a stimulating effect on your mind but uh the greatest thing about psychedelics to me is the fact that there's no psychedelic hangover. Which, for example, in MDMA, you feel like you don't know who the fuck you are the next day. <laughs> Jason McNiff, BGL has 200,000 plus Reddit posts, karma, LOL. I do have a lot of karma on Reddit. What does that mean? I, I love like, this whole argument where people go like, you're terminally online, man, and then they're I, talking to you in like a weird sub- Reddit I know. or weird Discord I really or at, anyway, yeah, if if my wife is in Vegas right now, but I'm gonna see her tomorrow, and then what I'd be doing right now is either fucking her or sleeping. So that would yes. have been fun too. So originally, what our plan was was we were contemplating. Oh, do we wait for her to get back? So if in yeah. case this, of course this this pussy never showed up. But if you did, yeah. it would have been so funny to have both of you be able to jump on screen yeah. and like defend yourselves so but. well and me and luana actually have plans for a podcast um in the future which i'll tell you more like in the very near future that we're i'll tell you more about off screen but like you'd be a fun guest to have on to like you know zoom in and we could talk about like our experience with jimmy because that would be an episode of our podcast for example would be like what happened between that and just like you know put him behind us but that's the only other conversation i like to have about him that's of like you know him being kicked off youtube for being a complete fraud but oh um, correction he says Again, he thinks I'm insulting BGL by pointing out his post karma LOL. Oh, so he was admiring your post karma. Right, because I guess that comes from people liking your comments and stuff like that. So like when I did a Reddit AMA, it was like every reply I get, you know, like people are like liking. So it's like, you know, I just anything I post in there is gonna have more like, you know, just by virtue of the fact that I shared certain information on Reddit, you know, and gets upvoted, I have more than the average person. <laughs> I've never thought about it. I was like, I wish that was dollars. That'd be dope. Let's see what here. Yes, uh, Jason, he's reading the chat, not knowing the contents, context, and defending under the assumption is hate. LOL. He thought my Chang's references was hating on Mar Mark. I don't remember doing that. There was definitely comments in here that were uh, negative. So, hold on, let me see. Someone post a... Uh, 
here. I have this. This one, yeah. This is gonna be my sound effect for uh, when something interesting happens. Plus the flex. Jim and Nam touches kids. Yeah, Jim and Nam is a pussy. <laughs> Jimmy Nam said he's gonna get arrested by beating me up and then pussy out of talking to me on why Oh shit. And by the way, this every minute we go, it's like I'm justifying this as going, we're this is another minute. This live stream last is another minute that Jimmy Nam has an opportunity to come online and take me the fuck down and put me in my place oh no his thinking i guarantee at this point he's like holy shit i did not expect all of this i did not expect mark to show up and it's pretty much like i should probably just move on and uh stop talking about them maybe yeah maybe because when you like you know he hasn't in a while my comment to people was like bro like people like what do you got planned for jimmy nam i'm like let's just say i'm talking to somebody who knows where all the bodies are buried all right um, which is why this dude, I mean, like, cause I don't even think like it's, it's more, I think he's scared of you to be honest, because like I would talk to him of course, but like you're able to corner him in a way where he's, he is petrified of you. You could just see that in the last, in the exchange that that girl posted. Um, how would somebody be able to find that by the way, the exchange that's at two X speed, if they wanted to see like you and Jim and M going at it, how would they find that? The top type because like I think I tried to top type in like lost list versus Jim and Um, it would, it would probably be morbid verse. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. lost list. But you sent it to me in a DM, yeah, because I passed it on from somebody who sent it to me. I was just going like, I remember trying to looking for it on YouTube. Like, let me see if I can find it real quick on YouTube. But I was like, ah, it's a little trickier than I, you know, thought off the top of my head. So yeah, you definitely linked it to me in DMs. You can I, I, by the way, get it back. I don't right now, <laughs> TFAC came more, but complete dweeb who can't even handle confrontation with men better than you. You will forever be known as a pussy amateur. Wait, what does it say? I'm, well, I'm just reading the banner down here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So they cannot even face the guy you threatened. <laughs> That's right. You wrote that, right? Yeah, I've been having that running all night. <laughs> so I'm just reading it. Let me read it one more time. Jim and M slash Morbidex slash TFAT K slash Disneyland Resort slash 19 other fucking names. Complete dweeb who could not even handle confrontation with men better than you. You will forever be known as a pussy amateur broadcaster. You're not professional. You're a fucking amateur. An amateur broadcaster that cannot even face the guy that you threatened. Right? You said, come at me, bro. I'm, I'm going to break your arm. I'm going to have to defend myself. I'm going to break your jaw. If you're outside my trust. Dante Nero. <laughs> More like Dante Negro, am I right? I'm going to have to defend myself. Or not. Like weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> All righty here. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So that was fun. I think we could, like I said, we can totally do this again. And yeah. maybe even at the end of uh, any part two what we do, we could still just continue baiting Jimmernam the whole time and see if maybe Look, he I'm ever not, grows yeah. balls. That's, that's, that's the thing with guys like some guys that I've referenced tonight that I've had beefs with that I hashed out with. The only thing that had to happen was for them to answer the bell, right? So all Jim and M's got to do is decide to let his fucking nuts drop. Maybe he's a woman and doesn't have any, which is totally fine, but I just want him to admit that. He can't Yeah, I mean, honestly, was- it's funny because him uh, avoiding it makes him look yeah. cowardly and a, a pussy. He won't it's confront me now, you know? or you. He's afraid of both of us. And it's like funny. It's two totally ends of the spectrum, and he's afraid of yeah. both of us. Yeah, for yeah. different reasons, yeah. <laughs> and he ha- and the thing that I think if he truly did come on, maybe there would be some verbal spar sparring back and forth. But eventually, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, he would get owned. Like he, I'd be like, if you wanted to take him on, you would destroy him. Yeah. But I would. I, I know my things that I would repeat and talk over. But I don't know as much as you about his his old life. But I'm like, I would just keep repeating the same things of like, you know. You wanted to fight me. You're making, like right. It's like, easy. You're and back down, and then also you're flexing on being a fucking uh, somebody who manipulates other people. Do you realize that society frowns upon people like that? And it's not like if that is your character, you may want to conceal that. If you're on YouTube illegally, you may want to conceal that. You may not want to cross people who can report you for being somebody who shouldn't even be able to legally have a YouTube account because you've been banned already. I mean, we established that, right? How does he get his channels? How does how does Jimmerman still have YouTube channels after being banned permanently from Reddit? Or sorry, from from uh, YouTube. What is his what is his scheme there? Uh, wait, what's this guy says? Uh, KK says, if the host is taking notes from Red Bar, he should try being friendly with his chat. What gave you the idea of taking notes from Red Bar? Does this look anything like Red Bar? We discussed Red Bar, but also no. If the chat is free and open to say whatever they want, and you, I said at the beginning of the show, I told all the moderators, do not delete any comments, even if they're insulting. Only doxing's not allowed. And uh, if that's the case, it goes both ways. I can say whatever I want about the people chatting. Um, it's true. It's, it's always funny how people want, like, like freedom. What? You get, uh. It's kind of like the guy who called earlier. It was like, I don't have to present, present evidence. I just want to prove this evidence that I'm not Jiminem, but the other evidence I don't have to. Okay, cool. Sounds like you don't believe in evidence. Only when it suits you. Only when you want Sounds it. Do good says yeah i wasn't saying anything negative and was clarifying what happened that he didn't remember and he said i'm sensitive he doesn't understand the context of a lot of the chat he addresses well i mean clear it yeah, up yeah when it's some um, yeah when it's some sort of like tfac thing that is like heavily inside joke with super lingo yeah i'm probably not gonna figure it out but I thought I read it out to Mark, your comment, and he responded back to that. It was something like that from the same guy. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. If I am, I apologize. But uh, I mean, right when I say you're being sensitive, I mean like, okay, I, I mistook what you said. It's not like a big deal where it's like, uh, let's have a big thing over it. But um, here we go. Angela Witt says, lucky wife, sad me. Mark Harley, fine as hell, and I'm married 34 years now. Good for you. And um, wait, is it, you said her name is Angela? Yes, it's Angela Witt. Okay, Angela, are you black? <laughs> Hold only on, asking. let me look at the... reason that I'm asking that is because typically only black women express their It's desire. just a picture of a... Is Angela still in the chat? I'm going to say... Yes, when... it's just a picture of a dog in the avatar, Angela but it looks like... You have to answer and say, "Are you black?" Because the majority of women who go, Ooh, "Are you, you black?" Oh, you fine. That's usually either the person saying openly, "You're good looking," is either a gay man or a black woman. Those are the Angela two. Witt. She uh -huh. says, "Lucky wife, sad me, laughing cry emoji." Mark Harley, fine as hell, and I'm married. Cry oh, laugh emoji. Cool. Thirty four years now. Crying laugh emoji mm -hmm. sideways. So my guess is she's in her fifties and is black. I could be wrong. Also <laughs> older, like typically to express Mark Harley is hot. You're either a gay man or a black woman. That's the vast majority. To express Mark Harley's ugly, you're usually a. Do you have proof of that, Mark? <laughs> I have a lifetime of experience. This is that. This is the new world now. Everything you say, you have yeah, to prove exactly, it. Exactly. Well, you know, no matter what it is. When guys call me ugly on Reddit or something like that, I'm like, interesting. Typically, guys call me ugly from a profile with no picture of themselves. And I go, we can compare looks. Like we can, I can show you to my wife. I told some guy the other day on the Reddit, I'm like, if you want to like, she's like, can we pass the lawn around? I'm like, slide into her DMs. Like, see if you can spit game to her. Like, if you can, if you can steal away from her, like, like tr take your best shot, bro. And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, well, it sounds like you're not confident enough. I'm like, in your looks. And he's like, just try to sidetrack the whole combo. But I'm like, if you think you can fuck Luana. Or he, oh, his, his retort was like, well, clearly she's not into guys who look good if she's with you. I'm like, that's cool. Like, you uh, post a picture of yourself. Um, Sliding. Um, 
Lorely, we're going over there. Wish Mess said for you and Mark to come say hey to Wendy. Uh, KK says the explosion sound effect. That's a Funkmaster Flex bomb sound effect, not a red bar. Funkmaster Flex has been doing that since what? 90s? He's a DJ. He's like an old New York DJ, I believe. New York DJ. Um, no one was being abusive, but you keep saying people are being abusive, but you're only talking about silence who has been reasonable. No, I'm talking about other people, not you. I'm talking about other people. They were coming in here going, lossless is salty. Lossless is mad at red bar. They were saying stuff like that. And I, it's mad at red bar. How the fuck there's, and there's so many names in here. I'm, I'm just having trouble that are kind of similar that it's hard for me to tell who said what. And, and I can't go back all the way because it only goes back like i think 100 messages or something so you know so uh, what I, I apologize if i mistook you as someone else but the, yeah there was a couple of people in there going no it's assault it's just probably red bar guys that you're uh, are still thinking about me a year later from a discord i know was in your your conversation with sven i found uh, fascinating not knowing anything about this character not knowing the appearance that he was on but you called him you use some social engineering to call this guy. Yeah, so that's a funny story because the guy who's speaking to him isn't actually me. Oh, really? See, I don't know. No. So the guy who's speaking to him sent me the audio, and he was originally a Red Bar fan. Uh huh. Yeah. So everything up into up to that video is me, and then that video I I edited and put it together, and I cut some things out of it and. Did the animation and stuff yeah and and spoke to the guy who who was able to make the call and got the audio from him and posted it mm -hmm. um and i was able to keep it up because i i can't explain how but i have consent in that phone call because sven uh, fen uh fen sven put out a privacy strike on everybody um yeah. who posted that because after yeah. he sobered up he was embarrassed and i'm sure mike uh busted his balls and like said and if you don't take that down, uh, your career is ruined. So now you have to make a fake statement pretending we're friends again and hang out in the BBG and pretend to be nice. So I think that's what happened. So, so was yeah, he, but he uh, so Sven started doing privacy strikes and everyone else who posted it, it got taken down. Mine is still up and it's the only one on YouTube that's allowed to be up. Unless someone posts it again now and Sven forgets about it. But yeah, it. It's the only YouTube channel I know that has it in full like that. And uh, yeah, got a shit. That's like has the most views on that channel. It's funny. It was just like a throwaway channel. But now that we're here after all this time, that's the perfect place to do it. Because, you know, the, the connection, I was like, so I made all these red bar videos. Now, what do I post if I don't really want to do a red bar focused thing? And then I was like, OK, so it's about Jimmer Nam maybe red bar t fact the t fact people know of him but the red bar people might not some do and then you have been on red bar yeah and so it all kind of like worked together <laughs> if you weren't here this wouldn't work for me to just like do a whole other stream about jimmer nam on this channel it just wouldn't have made sense so yeah all the pieces aligned and came together yeah. it closes some loose ends um and but i found the conversation with sven interesting because he has some he had some real behind the scenes insight and also just found it entertaining because he's this uh is he from denmark uh he's, netherlands okay yeah so he's got his accent i like to hear he's like he's the using netherlands. His, uh, the tricks talmudic manipulations <laughs> talmudic subversions <laughs> talmudic subversions um he called like out to his face. No one's ever done that before. Really? No one's even allowed in the studio. He was the only one, especially I'm, that new one. I have no fucking. Um... <laughs> that was a funny episode though, because he's so drunk and he like at one point he's drinking a beer and he spills it on his own boot and doesn't even realize it's happening. He's like going like this and it just falls and spills. Sven what spills it on his own boot. These two guys, like, how did they become friends and who is Sven? 
Sven has been involved in the show for probably since the beginning or close to it. He was always, there was always Sven week where he would show up and, or he would call through like Zoom or Skype, whatever they were using. Yeah. And um, yeah, they do a Sven week where he is in the studio because Mike used to do more shows back then. And <laughs> it was like his co host. And yeah. it's the only guy who's a friend of his that maintained, he, he maintained friendship with. Up until that most recent Sven week where he was super drunk, saying like anti-Semitic stuff, doing Nazi salutes and stuff, yeah. doing Hitler speeches. And uh, Mike, while he's not afraid, I guess, to say some words, he just doesn't do it anymore because he thinks he needs to right, appeal to this. Got to appeal to this new woke crowd of like, because yeah. he's, he's, his whole like thing. mindset is, and is like, I'm going to say the N word and then suddenly just be like, yeah, I don't say that anymore. Yeah. He has a song called uh, the DuckTales remix where it's N-Bop and the whole song is him screaming the N-word over the DuckTales Wait. theme song. Like, and I he said uh, he's going to kill people's kids and rape them and do all. So like, he, he totally he's, switched up and now he's, he's seeing an old friend, Sven, who... Boost out? Yeah, he's seeing like an old first friend, first Sven, who is like still that guy, kind of guy who's just honest and blunt and says all this stuff and so it yeah. was an awkward moment where they're meeting for the first time after all these years in studio yeah. and sven's trying to be himself hey, and mike times? yeah yeah mike cut to black at one point and sven said during the phone call that when he did that mike gave him a talking to and scolded him for yeah. being too anti-semitic and you can't be saying the n-word and when fans heard about that they were like but you know the hardcore older fans were pissed because they were like mike's actually now dictating he can't say the n-word and that yeah. was the proof that you know he doesn't want that audience anymore he wants yeah. to have a newer audience that's easygoing doesn't criticize him pays the 11 dollars a month and i don't blame yeah, give him here give it a year give it a year yeah, if you got if you got a if you curated a community that just doesn't bother you or criticize you and pays every month, whatever. Yeah, That's cool. What you, how many people do you imagine are a part of Scars Club that do the eleven dollars a month? Mm, I know that last time I checked, I think there was like twenty five hundred to three thousand people in the BBG Facebook group, and then you got to imagine not all of those people are paying for Scars Club. So what maybe, say even fifteen hundred. Imagine maybe you made, half. You made fifteen k a month doing yeah. one day of streaming <laughs> uh, he's been better lately from what i saw i think he's doing maybe one every other week something but like that like a, like two, two a month 15 grand like i'm sorry yeah. but, and that like, lowers the overhead because you're not but, using bandwidth you're not using electricity at the studio you're yeah yeah no That's he's pretty, got it. he's got it made it, i mean you it, really it, only it, need a thousand it, people right exactly but that but also the other fact is that he Jules is the one controlling the cameras and it's a two person household. So they're sharing that income between the both of them because she doesn't yeah. have another job. But so you sense. gotta figure it's that amount and then minus taxes split between two people. It's yeah. still a decent living, sure. Yeah, for doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, but I think he might have like a loan taken out too from when he bought the studio or something. Uh, I get a feeling because he made a speech about how he agrees about maxing out your credit, all your credits to invest in a business or something like that. So that's why. I feel. Yeah. Maxing out daddy's money to invest in a credit for sure. Yeah. Wow. Either um, his or daddy's who knows. Do you have right. proof of that Mark? Yeah, exactly. The lore is just funny about him. Can't like, speculate anymore. Oh, and make jokes. Guys, hey, listen, you fucking cocksucker. All right. Are you fucking left Chicago? Are you, you drinking a little fucking whiskey? Yeah. You're going to fucking wake up one day. You're going to get a fucking bat that either you're going to fucking face Sam Tripoli. Or you're going to be a guy there with a bat. You fucking. <laughs> He's going to hit you over the head. Melanucci brothers are coming for you. Okay. So look, it's fucking. Oh, genies. The fucking Caccini brothers, the fucking Melanucci's, the Baladani's. I don't fucking know. Yeah, he's a fucking guy. Like, man, I, you, Give you me the two fucking, times is coming. You fucking Joey, Joey Five Fingers. <laughs> Joey Five Fingers. <laughs> fucking Louis Six Toes is coming. Everybody's coming. <laughs> You're going to fucking get a bat to the fucking, maybe they'll fucking break your arm. I don't know what they're going to Maybe they'll take a fucking thumb. I don't know what they're going to do, cocksucker. See, to right? me, that whole thing, like, yes, it's crazy that he, Red Bar got him, Joey Diaz, to react so crazy. But I feel the reason it is funny is because of how Joey Diaz reacted, which makes so Joey I, Diaz I, funny, I, even yeah, when he's crazy. I, I saw a small clip of it and thought Joey was crazier. 
And then when I watched it on context, it was like, oh, I watched like the crescendo of it out of context. And I was like, whoa, like Joey's yeah. like really mad at this guy. But then you watch the whole thing and he's like, look, motherfucker, you've been fucking talking shit about me and Chris D'Elia and Sam Tripoli. And he like names all these people. He's like, yeah, that's the guy who like, if somebody was talking shit about me and my 10 friends, I'd be like, motherfucker I'll just like oh, you know it's not just that so what the big bit oh, and like, the biggest... what I'm saying. It, it all makes sense to me but like seeing in context it was like it's like a symphony he's like ah, rah, rah. and then and then I watched ah, you know and thought oh my god he looks crazy but in context it's like that was a fucking rant you know one of the issues is that I said I think I said this too before but for the people listening whenever the um the Sam Tripoli thing is brought up they always bring up the uh the Eric Clapton parody song he did of like did the doctor know that your kids are retarded or something like that? Oh, um, okay. So like they well, think that's the like, whole the thing that's clapped in, you know, he, like, he thinks that that's the whole, everybody thinks that's the thing that made Sam go crazy, but no, there's a whole segment before that, that gets cut out of all the clips. Cause I think red bar was trying to hide it. Uh, it might be on some of the clip, uh, third party clip channels, but prior to that, there's a whole segment where he talks about like, yeah, I'm gonna squeeze. I'm gonna take videos of me squeezing your children and send them to you. I'm gonna kill your kids and bury them and like rape their dead bodies, like the most heinous, crazy shit. And his thing was like, "Whoa, you're all about free speech, Sam." So here's my free speech and like, right. We, but also, we, you're talking yeah. about a guy's kids. You're not talking about kids in general. You're talking about his kids. They yes. did have helmets on, not because they're retarded, because their the skulls grow weird or something with kids. No, no, I've seen that before for sure. Yeah. Oh, and, and, um, and so it was like, the whole thing. It wasn't it's just the song. It was that too. And that was crazy, the shit he said before that. Like, regardless of the point he was making, I can understand why the guy would want to come over there and beat the shit. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's his kids. It's and like, Mike doesn't yeah. understand it because he has no kids. Yeah. And also, this whole like free speech thing is like, Anybody advocating for free speech, it means legally the government can't come after you. It doesn't mean that you can There's say no consequences, and individuals, right? Individuals, yeah, and individuals won't have a reaction to that, and that they want to break the law in reaction to what you said. That's that's a, a that's a good way. point because he Red Bar was trying to act super smart over it, like, well, you're all for free speech, Sam. But yeah, it's like okay, right. but he never said law. that. If I want to break the law to to in order to respond to your free speech, he's yeah, like, and beat the shit out of you. Yeah. yeah, it's like that's your also your personal decision as an American to have that's to your free speech. Crime. Yeah, yeah, that's you're going to commit a crime before you're arrested. So what was the crime that he committed? Ring his doorbell. You know what I mean? Like he didn't he didn't commit any crime in the same way that Mike didn't commit any crime by. But it's crazy. also his right to commit the crime and go to jail to beat you up as consequence of what you said. Correct. So if he chooses often, to. People often confuse that the idea of free speech means that I have to um, have a, a a reaction that you want to anything that I say. Free speech means the government can't come after me for criticizing something or saying what I want. You know what I mean? It's that's that's a civil liberty, meaning it's granted to us by uh, you know a democratically elected government, not. Um, I can say whatever I want, and, and 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 you have to take it. You have to enjoy the fact that I'm talking about raping your kids. I got some uh, other stuff here. I'll answer this question, Patty Mayonnaise PM. Did you go over the Bobby Lee stuff yet, losses? Um, we yeah. vaguely made a mention to it, but I said we could have a whole other video where we discuss all that stuff again. I think it'd be fun to go through like the the details of it because I have a lot of cool stuff to stay to say about that okay it's getting real late i can't speak anymore it's 4 30 a.m here by the way um jason says ask bgl what his short-term plans are for the bapa verse my short-term plans for the bapa verse i'm gonna make an hour-long like i want to make a synopsis video telling my whole experience with brendan start to finish and kind of get it out so like i'm a lot of people will accuse me like, Mark, you just like to drop into the Reddit to get attention. It's like, do you think I don't get fucking get attention everywhere I go? Like, ugh. like that's that's attention is a, a, a remarkably um, abundant commodity for me, both online and in real life. I don't feel I'm ever being ignored. But what I do want to do is make sure to tell things accurately and precisely. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to make a reaction. Yes, everyone has a right to commit a crime, KK. It's illegal. Yes, they'll go to jail, but... Yes, they have a right to do that. 
Like, they, in other words, they can't be this. We're not living in minority report. You can't pre-arrest somebody for a pre-crime. What crime did Sam Tripoli commit? Ringing a doorbell? Like, if right. you made a threat, then you could also, like, okay, take him to court or whatever. But um, well, my, my point was, even if he did more than that and he broke into his house and beat him up, it's his right to commit the crime and he will go to jail for he's it. An, but, he's an autonomous individual. And it's like, yeah, that's, not, that's his freedom. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be <laughs> arrested. lose it, but like, he, he had if it. You, if you claim that you can arrest Sam before he commits the crime, then you're saying, uh, you can arrest people for thoughts, essentially, right? Right. That's that, that, that philosophical was my point. pathway. Yeah. That was um, my, my point. point. Freedom of speech this, does have consequence. Someone might punch you yeah. in the face. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, well, Bob responds, I'm going to, I'm going to react this weekend though. I want to react to, um, Brendan saying, I don't know what dumbass you got your information from when somebody on his page said, fix it with George. And he said, I don't know what dumbass. Like this, you could tell it's triggered him because he was like, I don't know what dumbass you got for your information, but we're like, George is still working for me just remotely. And it's like, ah, gotcha, bitch. So I'm going to go over that brief scenario just because, like, that's not really part of my narrative that I want to tell because it's like mm -hmm. that wraps up a lot quicker than it's like, this is just like a little weird add on where it just kind of mirrors my experience. But um, like a YouTube video or Instagram. Yeah, story. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I don't, I, I keep that shit off Instagram. I think that's like, that's for me. Instagram for me is like, like skits and fun pictures of myself and self-deprecation. If you want to hear me talk about a topic for 10 minutes, Instagram is going to be the fucking place to do it. I'll link to it on my, if I do post anything, I'm, I'm always going to link to it on my, uh, you know, on my Instagram in a story or something like that. But I, I was planning on maybe doing a live reaction to this and just kind of watching their segment and live reacting to it um, as I watch it. And uh, <laughs> just break down like <laughs> they're terrible. I mean, it's Brendan. You could almost like teach a class on like here's how to handle every single PR situation the wrong way or like the opposite of what the ideal way would be. It's like here's we're gonna learn like anti PR from Brendan Shop. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do the worst possible decision in every step of your life to make yourself look like more of an arrogant asshole. Every month there's gonna be a new thing that you're gonna do <laughs> to dig yourself in a deeper hole of people thinking that you're a shitty comic who's a terrible human posing as a successful, funny comic who uh, is actually a good human. Okay, I want the other question. Wait, uh, I'm responding to this person. Um, to silence do good. Ask Mark what's up with Luana traveling with the girl he dated when they broke up. Oops. Yeah, so they became besties. Pretty crazy how life works, but you know, sometimes the the scenarios that I was describing earlier of like, oh, I had beef with somebody and then we talked and figured it out. That's what happened with Leah and Luana. They're online beefing with each other over me. Like I get it, you know, like obviously I'm an all Don SB, but they ended up saying, Hey, let's stop this shit. Like, hey, reach out, check that it's you. Okay, we're gonna FaceTime and then you know, like let's talk shit about Mark for a little bit, get that out of our systems, <laughs> and then uh they ended up just becoming friends and I think they have a lot more in common than they do in different. And they're both like, I do believe that Lee and Luana are both really good people at heart and um, they're eccentric in different ways. I think they both kind of like have the same underlying pattern of like, they're very unique individuals. Okay. And I think, and I've also, I can share in this and be like, I felt misunderstood much of my life. I think Luana's felt misunderstood a lot of her life. I think Leah's felt misunderstood a lot of her life. They clicked on the phone and text, started FaceTiming. Their relationship developed over time and they decided to visit each other. So Leah made plans to go visit. Uh, she'd never been to like this specific part of the Northeast. She'd been to, uh, we, when I was working on 50 Central, she'd been in New York and like lived there with me as I was working as an actor there. But she'd never been to like Rhode Island, Massachusetts kind of area, like uh, New England in the fall. So she's like, why don't I go there for Halloween? I'm like, sounds good. You know, um, they went, they partied, they had fun. They did everything they wanted to do on their little checklist of shit. And I was kind of like, literally do whatever you want. Like I'm going to be here holding down with the cats and whatever you feel you need to do to like, get you know this out of your system and take a step forward to move 
beyond, you know, having bitterness or resentment or hate towards like me or Leah or whatever, you know, like you need to do that. So I said, go have fun. She had an amazing trip with Leah and there, and now Lu Luana flew across the country to Rhode Island to help Leah move into Las Vegas. So Leah just moved away from um, Rhode Island uh, to move to Las Vegas. And you actually heard Chris at the beginning of our stream, Luana called me, she was calling me from Leah's new apartment. And I was kind of like, Hey, I got to do a pod right now. But um, she, uh, she's in Vegas and I will see her tomorrow. So <sighs> initially I was going to go pick her up. So initially I was going to go meet up and hang out with her and Leah at the same time with Juan and Leah, we're going to, you know, we actually FaceTime <laughs> this fucking dork from the server. It was like, almost banged those two girls. Yeah, it was cool. And they're like, no, you didn't. Like, hmm. first of all, like you see, <laughs> I think I might've told you about this, but this, um, this guy was like offering to like buy them like dinner and drinks and take them out. You know, and I'm like, yeah, if you want to hang out with them, like go ahead. Like, obviously you're not going to fuck this dude. Cause I've seen him. And like, and I've heard you guys discuss like whether or not he's physically attractive, but he comes on the subreddit. Like, yeah, like I almost had a threesome with them and shit. I'm like, no, you didn't. That wasn't even close to what happened. They were just discussing whether or not they should exploit you for, <laughs> you know, a night out of the town. And then ultimately like you were reaching out and they ghosted you. And they're like, Oh yeah, I didn't work out with my schedule, but I'm like, Bleh. and Luana got mad about it. Cause I responded and she's like, stop being on the Reddit. But I'm like, this guy said he almost had a threesome with you. And then Leah comes in. Like once Leah got one of it, she's like, actually Orlando <laughs> full metal napkin. You're lying about every step of this conversation. And like, like, not like you're lying about everything. It's like, yes. Oh, did you talk to Luana in on Instagram? Cool. So did anybody who would message her? Like, it's not a big deal, you know. Nor do I micromanage her personal communication. Like, she can talk to whoever the fuck she wants. But it was just a funny thing to be like, yeah, like I almost fucked Mark's wife. Like, it was cool. I'm like, but you didn't. You didn't even come within a hundred miles physically or metaphorically if fucking either of them they both think you're gross but uh typical subreddit guy right and then i was like yeah post like go, go ahead post post whatever proof you want and it's like uh what not no, nothing nothing can't quite uh-huh waiting for the evidence that you almost fucked anyone versus you reached out and said can i pay money to hang out with you and then got ghosted oopsies but par for the course for a guy who posts like if you're posting on the subreddit all the time like to me, you're that guy. He, yeah. when when Luana and I started hanging out, nobody knew yet. He like messaged her a couple times, and then went to my page and was like, "I'm in your ex wife's DMs." Ha ha! I'm like, "Who are you? Like, what the fuck?" And I showed it to Luana. Like, it's like, "Hey, Luana, like, you're next. Like, who's this guy?" And then she's like, "This motherfucker." So she goes in his DMs, and I was like, "Dude, don't fucking do that. Like, what are you, what are you antagonizing Mark for?" He's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Like he like messaged me like, "I'm sorry, man. I do I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that was my bad." I'm like, "Yeah, no shit." Like, why would you ever, like, you think that's, like, cool? Like, to be, like, my wife responded to you because you're, like, we're, like, nice to her. And you guys are talking about, like, cool camping sites to go to or something. And you're, like, oh, yeah, dude, that was fucked. Wanna, um, no, you didn't. I'd admit it if you did. I'd be, like, yeah, good. Good for you, bro. You must have some gain. Mm. Because, uh, you know, I've seen guys who've tried and had more success than you and, they don't look like you do. A little bit different, right? No, no, you're saying that I didn't talk to her. No, I'm not saying you didn't talk to her. I'm saying you made up a scenario in your head where you almost fucked her, and that was a completely delusional statement for you to make. Let's just not forget about Jimmerman, who was the accordionist of the year in 1991. <laughs> he was Forbes' uh, top... 10 under 10, of course. <laughs> yep, I'm a nerd. It's so funny the contrast with these guys. Can't I know, take anymore. right? It's like, at what point did you decide to, to do this tough guy act? Like, as you okay. probably... Let's, let's go to one last question, then I got to get out of here. It's 4 4 a.m. and get some you sleep. Uh, yes. By the way, May Noodles is, uh, I guess, trying to convince you to go onto Wendy's panel or something. I don't know. I'm going to go to bed. But um, uh, lots of uh, great show, great show, great stream tonight, guys. Germanicus, thanks for coming, Mark. Mess, I'm so proud of you guys. And then one last one, Uncle Podcast. 
Ask Mark if he is still planning on doing content about Bappa on his channel. He said he yeah. saved some info for his own channel on that Red Bar interview. Oh, believe me. I mean, that was a year ago. Like, I, you guys didn't even, like... <laughs> like, I'm going to put the whole narrative together in one coherent video, but it's also, like, there are just some things that, that Brendan has done that, like, I've, like, straight away from that, you know, can be corroborated by multiple people. That it's just like, eh. Do I have some career enders for him? Yeah. Will I do that happily? Yeah. Do I think Brendan should pack it up and not be an entertainer and start selling cars? Yeah. Would I be happy to see that happen? Yeah. Can I say that about any other human alive? No. Would he uh, even be a good car salesman? He would be better at selling cars than he would be at uh, selling jokes, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that'd be like at least you. But I thought he only knows about having it, but not the real like. Correct. I think he'd be able to like convince someone that something's cool, and, and you'd have enough Just people. Bullshit them. Like, like former celebrities are kind of like, oh my god, like you want to have like the sales pressure is like you're in the presence of a guy who you want to impress. This guy used to be a UFC fucking heavyweight, and like what he's selling, he's selling Lexuses now. I want to fucking buy. I want to buy a fucking Lexus from Brennan Shop. Tell me about how. Cool, this truck is Brendan. <laughs> like, it's I can really see great, you know. I it's mean, it's got a door, it's got a windshield. Yeah, he's like, you know, I, this is my favorite truck in every facet. Okay, not mm -hmm. the speed this thing. He just, like, to me, I go, I just, um, I'm gonna use an example. The guy who skits with Isaiah Miranda, he speaks really quickly, and people have given him feedback that he needs to slow it down in order to be coherent as an actor. So as a 24-year-old, he hired a speech therapist to help him practice being more coherent when he speaks English. Brendan is 40 years old, <laughs> slurs his speech, misuses the most basic phrases, such as notorious or lesson. He'll say, he's notoriously known. And I go, Brendan, you realize the word notorious implies being known, right? You understand? Yeah, that's that's redundant. redundant. Yes. So, but you like, you'll notice with people like this, narcissists who mispronounce things. I used to have this friend who would say, um, rather instead of either, he goes, you know, rather you want A or B. I go, <laughs> like, if you let it happen once and then twice and they keep doing it, it's like, I'm not going to be, I'm sorry. I, I, I like, I excuse myself from correcting you on the word either versus rather because you're a smart guy. And you need to know the difference between that word if you're going to jam it into every conversation. And it almost feels like they're taunting you with it. It's like you make this mistake, but then you like force the mistake. It's like you don't even need to use the word notoriously known or learning lesson. What kind of lesson is there that doesn't involve learning? But he'll use the term learning lesson. What's a learning lesson? And he's notoriously known. <laughs> um, he, you know, he just like crowbars these shitty phrases into everything that he says. And um, and again, slurs his speech, has a limited vocabulary. And you go, wouldn't you like, if you were a 40-year-old millionaire who talks for a living, maybe hire somebody to like help you out with that? Join like a website to expand your vocabulary, like um, membean.com or something like that. <laughs> like, you know, have, have somebody for an hour a week, just practicing speaking clearly. The human torch applied for a car loan. Ow now, brown cow. Maybe he wouldn't be as entertaining if he spoke properly. You never know. Well, maybe yeah, that's the beauty of him. You're hundred percent correct in that it would take away the magic of Brendan Schaub as a guy who thinks he's Chris D'Elia on stage, but he's going, I'm freaking nice and cookie. Yeah, be cheese, be cheese, be cheese, be cheese. <laughs> it's like what? Like, so I want to laugh, but what the fuck are you did you see? It was like a clip of him going like Every he said part of his punchline to his joke was like, Man, it'd be cool to fucking just have pandemic with the bros, fucking play Xbox, we lift weights, we talk, and that we'd fuck each other. But the way he says night in the Greeno Poppy is like yeah, like he like like he massacres the word night. Every uh, night we fuck each other. I'm like, how are you? And that's like the final cut of it. Yeah, you're giving me bad <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> Did you actually mm -hmm. watch Gringo Poppy? Gringo Poppy, yeah. <laughs> because it was so like it I saw, was. I saw it two hundred times live. 
<laughs> promoted as the worst comedy special of all time. Literally. You had to see like, it. Because sometimes things that are so bad are good because they're so bad. That was yeah, just, it's like, it's couldn't even room, pull that the, off. It's the room of comedy. How would you feel if you're... And the set, set the way the set was built looked like just like cardboard. Yeah, <laughs> the best things with this, like, you know, a story of that I think I, I forget if I told you privately about like, let's say a conversation with a bigger YouTuber or a, 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 a bigger podcaster that he knows who's friends with him, who gave him some feedback after Gringo Poppy was dropped. Um, was like, have you fucking seen the comments on your special on YouTube? What the fuck are you doing? And he was like, this guy's being a dick. I'm like, yeah, he's being such a dick. It's crazy. Like, I mean, yeah, like it's totally normal to have like 10,000 negative comments on a video where you I don't read that stuff. I don't fucking read the comments. I just have my employees manically delete them. <laughs> You're right. If you go to Gringo Poppy right now, and count oh, how many comments are on there. Just take a sample of 100 and then extrapolate. Let's say there's 20,000 comments. Read the first 100 and see what percentage are positive versus negative. First of all, that applies to everything. That applies to all comments. It's going to be like, if it's 98% negative, that, that applies to the 20,000. So it'd be like, imagine that there is like 18,000 negative comments and then realize that 18,510 10, comments. Okay. Um, and I'm guessing that nine as an Irish is the first one. As an Irish man, I personally found this more depressing than the famine. <laughs> Here's the second one. Walked in on my kid watching this today, saw him giggling too. I hope one day he puts two and two together and realizes why I left. <laughs> 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 it's not the go. It's like it's not just this is bad. It's like every the comment comments is, are funnier than the, the special. Worst, like, no, the, every comment is this <laughs> is the worst thing I've ever seen. And occasionally, like I had to make Brendan was feeling down one weekend, and I made a com like I had to make like a like a folder in iPhone of like, hey, here's like people saying positive things to you via DM and on your special. Like I had to like curate it. Hey, Brendan, no, it's not so bad. Like to to boost his ego one time. But the truth is. Thousands upon thousands of negative comments have been deleted by his staff members working around the clock in the opening months to maybe a year after. Because there was like, are we still deleting comments? Like I remember being like, <laughs> like, 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 he'd, would something get around? Like, are you guys who's staying on top of deleting comments? Like, like from Brendan, it's like, it's Brendan. It's been a year. Are you still worried about like what they're like? What are you trying to get up to like 2.0 on IMDb? Like, like, which is actually, if you know the reality of how poorly it's rated, it would take thousands of people to vote at like a 10 out of 10 in order to bring it up to a 2.0 oh, um, <laughs> to balance out all the ones. This is one that's like a kind of a typical one, but it's still funny. Thank you, Brendan. I've been. <laughs> Paralyzed from the neck down for 12 years now, it's been hell. Today I heard Gringo Poppy and it gave me the courage to stand up and turn this shit off. Yeah. I couldn't have had it without you, Brendan. Thank you and God bless. That's the typical uh Imagine, right. So that you can extrapolate what you just read. Like oh, I, this I, I defy you to find more than one out of every hundred comments be positive. Brendan Schaub is comedy. What Brendan Schaub is to MMA. I haven't laughed this hard in years. This is by far the funniest comment section I've ever read. <laughs> Damn, this guy sure has some hidden talent. Hope he finds it one day. <laughs> Nobody laughed harder than Brendan Schaub during the entire set. I made my kid watch this when he was grounded as punishment for getting two Fs. Now he's a straight A student, and president of the student council. <laughs> True story. And you're not like you're not like curating. You're just going like one after the other, right? You're just going like these are what's in the comment section. Oh, not... this one's brutal. It, his physical comedy is incredible. Whenever he explains himself doing something unfunny in an unfunny life scenario, he does so by walking back and forth on stage with an awkward little hop in his step, not to mention holding his fingers over his eyes to represent night vision goggles. This set truly was special. And that's that's what I like about that is the specificity of it tells me he actually watched the special. He wasn't just like show. analyzed it. You yeah. have him down. You notice the pattern that when any, anytime he's like life event, I'm doing this gay little like walk that he does. Like meant, you know, like again, the phys, that's his physical comedy. He's like going like mm, 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 and I'm walking and I'm doing this and we come over here, you know, like, <laughs> but I can picture all those moments that he does repeatedly throughout the special. So this guy actually sat through it. It's almost like reminding me of that uh the what was the movie? The room. That's you what know? no, that's that earlier. I said that you're you're like this special is 
to comedy specials with the, the room. disaster artist that uh yes. james franco yeah. remade of the room it's like yeah. it's so bad it's i could read be that good book. so yeah like the, so the book the disaster artist is even more interesting because like the guy who made that movie james franco's portrayal of him because he needs to be the the protagonist of this movie they made him a lot more likable in the book they're like this guy's a fucking asshole like he's yeah. super abusive he treated people like shit on set he's super hot and cold very narcissistic very like so in, in the book the realistic portrayal of him was far worse than how he came across like um you know the actor that portrayed him made him seem a lot more likable you know pretty fun fact i actually um god it's been a long time must have been six years ago or so i interviewed james franco on like the pod trash and no. he was in the middle of filming uh the disaster artist yeah that's fucking wild dude yeah and i got to talk to him for like i think it was like a half hour and he was going through the whole thing about like filming the the movie and what's funny is that's you know that's a meme how people like if i go to the subreddit if i post something people would just go oh hi mark like yeah as, oh like hi mark yeah oh hi i did not do it i did not i did not <laughs> i did not hit her i did not and i guess it took like 80 fucking takes of that scene like he just it i mean the story in and itself as told in the book and the movie but there's more to it in the book i just it's it's, it's one great. of the most, it's great it's, it's, yeah to me it's up there with like i remember reading that scientology book i know you're in the cults too like going clear and i was like holy clear, fuck yeah. this is real like this shit this is what scientology actually is like yeah the book and the, and the documentary was great the documentary is great i'm just saying it's like if you've only seen the going clear documentary it's like just know there's so much they weave so many More in the, the yeah many stories together like especially with paul haggis like being like they have like the history of elron hubbard the history of david miscavige the history of tom cruise the history of um like everything weaves oh, together like really perfectly. so you get this like history of scientology i did also, not mean to do that uncle podcast i just timed you out i think i just pocket timed you <laughs> wait hold on dude uh Shit, how do I undo that? Podcast is someone who I've been talking to on IG, I believe. It's the same dude. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I hit it while I was like touching the phone. I yeah, I had such weird luck because I'm talking about I'm in my like old ass apartment totally in the beginning. And I had met I had such good luck because I had a guy who was a friend of mine who had connections and he would like was really good at like finagling people into coming on, thinking we were a much bigger podcast than we were. Yeah. So we had like Johnny, we had, I interviewed Johnny Knoxville when he was filming um, this movie with Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones. I forget the name of it, but he, I, we got to speak to him, uh, David Arquette, uh, a weird ones like Melissa Joan Hart. Remember that girl from Clarissa Explains It All? That was that really shit, old show. Dude. I was obsessed with that show. She, yeah, she called in as like an adult and she had written a book about her experience and how there was like weird abuse. In oh the, no way yeah talk i would her. read that book because i was me and luana are, are, are totally I got a, she sent us all autographed versions of it it was funny one of my friends was such an asshole he like pissed what? on it. he sent her a video of him peeing on it what yeah it was like one of our listeners and he said that's fucked up he sent her a tweet and it said this explains it all and it was he filmed a video with the book in the toilet and him peeing what on would it. your rationale be for doing something like aside from to me the obvious interpretation trying to shock and be an asshole yeah, it's like, i i got really pissed at it when guys do shit like that it's like oh you've never gotten pussy in your life i got it yeah like, i was like dude you're whether you like her or not you're kind of screwing with my reputation of having oh, yeah that's on. the other side of the coin like but in, yeah independently of, of him being a, like fucking you over that in and of itself is a dick move to somebody who's like what did she do like she was in a sitcom and you're upset about it um but then to do that to somebody who who did you a favor by coming on your show like as your yeah. friend fucking luckily like it was a listener but i mean she knew because it was right after the interview then she's suddenly getting that uh so she yeah no she i put two like, yeah, and two together that to me that's super fucked up Fuck, i don't know how to I put the guy in timeout for 300 seconds. Well, I mean, we're ending anyway, so you'll be untimed out by the time you come back. Sorry, Uncle Podcast. I did not mean to do that. I was holding the phone like this, and like my hand must have just done it when I was touching it. Bad fucking fingers, you fucking. Yeah.
That's why you won't fucking meet up with me because you're scared to live stream. And you had to put I'm fucking- I'm the greatest streamer podcast. ever. And that's why you had to put Uncle Podcast to time out because you're a pussy and a traitor. That's why you moved to Canada. Maybe if I can do it from the browser. Let me just see. Uh... But yeah, Mark, while I'm doing that, thank you for coming on, man. That was great. It sucks that Jimmerham didn't show up. That would have been- epic yeah, that, like, I mean, this was great but if he showed yeah. up and there was an epic like conflict back and forth that would have that would have been like okay. explosive I, I know it's easy to say in retrospect but i had there was i maybe give it mentally like a one percent chance but i was like i did not expect him to show up like no, i was thinking either. Like, it'd be fun to like, be like i was just keeping a positive vibe. yeah we were we were, we were our intention was to be like Let's make fun of this guy relentlessly until he doesn't show up. And it's so obvious that he had what six hours or whatever the yeah. fuck, we were, you know, like he's you cooked every opportunity in the world to fucking you could have taken a nap. There was one way that it maybe could have we discussed it about what you we were thinking oh, of maybe oh, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you did that, I could I could see maybe he would have at least reacted to it because he just went ghost right and it's like again it just seems to be i have the text and we didn't we didn't even get through like me playing all his my voice messages back to him or more of his text but you got that you can play you want to play one are they short if you want to play one or two while i look this look this up um but yeah it's just so lame that he did that but you know the other thing obviously scared of you too but he's also scared of me. Not even if well, I were wasn't going to be talking because he knows my whole setup is going to be like everyone has good audio and he has no yeah. excuses yeah. and he knows that like I'm getting satisfaction out of you going at it with him because he did it to me like look at my pit bull and it's like well I got well, I, kept sending this, I kept sending him this emoji he'd say you are two bitches my bitches. I'm your king, kind of boy. I just kept sending him this over and over again because I was like, "Wait, this... he sent this tonight?" No, this was like during our exchange. He kept talking shit, and I just kept sending this emoji over and over again. Like, and then he talked more shit. Oh, so who are the two guys. bitches? He's referring to you and Luana, uh, I guess. I don't know. Oh. I guess all I would do is I kept like sending this fucking <laughs> one of them, like, "Ah, you fucking idiot!" Like, Jesus Christ, you sound just so keep stupid. Sending it back. Um. Oh, somebody said. But uh, can you uh, hold on? Let me. Can I put you full screen instead of? I can also solo just layout. It. Yeah, here we go. Um, Jim Renam invited me to his house not long ago. Once I got there, he started filming me and abusing me. I have his home. That so that's a fake man noodles that's been going around. I meant to tell you that. I don't oh, know if I did. So Man Noodles has three O's in her name. Oh, got Does it. that have two? Like M E H N two O's. That's D L E S. That was just that, like, it's so what? weird. She has a a guy or whoever out there with a cloned account with two O's, but it's not being negative. It's telling the truth, kind of, but it's <laughs> yeah. And she's it's confused because like, she's like, "Why would a clone appear to tell the truth?" But it's also like. She doesn't want someone going around acting as her. So her yeah. name has three O's and she asked me to tell you that and I forgot. Yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure nothing she said is true about you. I'm sure nothing she said is true about you. Let me do more of my research. Oh, that's it. I, what I already played, hold on. Joke in the YouTube community. Um, <laughs> I know even you don't believe that. What would you do? You would, he would, ch you would choke my ass and break my arm. How would you do that exactly? Like with what? Like you would like be like lay down. Like would you have a gun or something and then like stomp on my arm? Like how are you gonna get me in that position? Realistically, because I know like we're talking shit here, but like you know I'd murder you with my bare hands, right? Like we're both. <laughs> that right you can't be that delusional can you jim or nam and then the dumb a thing do you know how stupid you sound saying the same exact insult what is that the fourth time in a row oh, i'm sorry do you need to maybe go check reddit for the comment that you can read out loud 
<laughs> Maybe someone else has written a better joke for you that you can use. But uh, but seriously, you'd never meet me in person, would you? You wouldn't even make eye contact with me. <laughs> Yeah, I do want to go live with you in real life. I want to live stream us. I want to live stream you break. And tell you what, I'll sign a contract. If you send me a contract ahead of time, um, it says I won't press charges no matter how much physical damage you do to me. Of course, I'll meet up with you. Which too much of a bitch. And then this, oh my God, the stupidity of you saying... I get attention from homeless cats and stuff. Right? Your entire livelihood right now, the way that you make money, the only way that you make money is by reading comments off of a subreddit that you say that I'm desperate for attention from. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wouldn't want you to do another video about me and Luana to your 800 viewers. No, please don't. Please don't go live and talk about me. What an incredible threat. I'm, I'm shivering in me timbers as you speak. I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to keep talking about me and Luana. Oh, no. Can you hear the fear in my voice? Can you hear how scared I am of you doing a live that nobody will watch? <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm very concerned. I'm very scared about you doing a video about me. Another video about me. The 18th video you've done about me. Oh, no, don't make another one. Don't make another one, please. Don't make another one. Again, let's, let's live stream this in-person meeting. And he's texting a ton between us. <laughs> Like every voice message is like ten texts, and then I'd send a voice message. Yeah, because he's too afraid to like respond in yeah. with with this his voice. Like, yeah, you know, he's not going to sound like a man when he's not on his microphone. Right. So I just I just need to clarify. It's like every ten like texts he'd leave, I'd be like, okay, like fat, out of shape Asian dude <laughs> with a pie face. <laughs> irony. Mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> No, I said live in person. And I think that's kind of it. Like, then I, I'm like, I literally sent this fucking emoji so many times in a row. <laughs> I feel mm. like, because I kept, I just kept trolling, like, you know, that's all I, you I, had I, to do. I was like, hey, hey, you know what? Like, you know what it looks like when somebody who actually knows what they're doing fucking makes content about Brendan Schaub? This. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. I said there's so many that. channels of this that like who would need to see his channel? Yeah, and anytime that guy brings doesn't me up, even need ex to exist. Yeah, yeah, that guy like anytime too lazy to try brings me up. He's like, yeah, I know. Like what what BGL is saying is kind of crazy, but he's also like never been like caught lying about anything. And I'm like, thank you. Like that's all I want. Like you can be skeptical of what I say, but like catch me in one lie. And I actually did a podcast um, that never got released about. Do um, you know the Joke World YouTube station? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think he got scared to burn a bridge with Andrew Schultz because I told the story of how him and Brendan beefed about like, um, like I didn't actually know the full story because somebody corrected me afterwards who knew better. They were like, the reason that because like Brendan told it like, yo, Andrew Schultz called me up and basically was like, yo, bro, I heard you're like using Bruce Buffer in this promo for Gringo Poppy and like that's my thing. I've been using Bruce Buffer, but like the thing that Andrew Schultz I didn't because Brendan didn't realize it, so he's retelling the story. Where like Andrew Schultz is confronting him, but basically he was saying, "Are you making fun of me by doing this?" Because the whole bit was going to be like a parody of, I guess Dave Chappelle promoted his special by like he's driving in a car and like Morgan Freeman's doing voiceover, and then it's like he's like, "Would you stop yeah. that?" Like and Morgan Freeman's in the car, yeah. so it was going to be like Brendan driving, and then like it's time, are you ready? You know, like doing the UFC thing, and then he goes, "Hey man, chill out, it's just a comedy special. Like you don't need to do the whole thing." Hmm. And Andrew Schultz saw the promo because he sent it over. He's like, oh, look at this cool thing. We spent like 20K on it. And we got Bruce Buffer. It is like, he normally like, to get Bruce Buffer in person for a day of filming is expensive. Like, it's like a million dollars, isn't it? Right. Or it he used like, to be. He pulled a massive favor to get fucking uh, Bruce Buffer for like 5K. But let's say the whole thing costs 25,000 bucks. Oh, I think it's if he said, oh, Bruce Buffer. Isn't it the, the intros? 
Let's get ready to rumble. That guy's different, but they're that, related. Did you know that, that guy? Story? If he says that phrase, he makes a million dollars. That's what I was thinking okay. about. Well, that's good, but but Bruce Buffer probably similar. Where it's like he says, "Are you ready? It's time for the main event." Right. So he's doing that shtick, and he's in the car. With, but like, it didn't work out logistically because it was like. Yeah, it's Michael Michael Buffer. It's his brother. Bruce well, yes, Buffer's exactly. Michael Buffer's brother. Know, Michael Buffer know, gets a million. Others or something like that. It's some, some crazy story. Like they didn't grow up together and then they ended up being And then like, they've yeah, <laughs> they found each other late in life. It's so like, weird. Oh, you do the exact same wow, job. you both yeah, we both do the same exact job. Um, so he hired that a very expensive production, the creative director at the time, like like made like use his filmmaker because like when he wanted to create like film type stuff like this guy would like had a writing directing background i'm like you vastly underutilized this guy who like knows how to make a fucking movie like look like a movie so he made like a movie level trailer for the gringo poppy that was a parody of the dave Chappelle special promo but like andrew schultz got wind of it and saw it and was like are you mocking me because you're saying you turn to him and be like yo relax it's just a special and my thing has been getting Bruce Buffer to say, it's time for the notorious Andrew. Sh like he, and he brings him out. So if you say, yo, yo, relax, dude, it's not a fucking fight. It's just a special. It's almost like you're mocking like Andrew Schultz. So that's how he took it. And he was like, yo, like, so he called up to be like, are you like poking fun at me? Or like, do you think that's cool to do that? And Brendan Schaub interpreted it as like, Oh, he thinks it's his like thing that he like owns Bruce Buffer. And only later did I because like Brennan really nailed this narrative of like, he was like, you can't put that out. But in retrospect, Andrew Schultz's reasoning for it was something I didn't perceive because Brendan didn't perceive it, therefore he couldn't tell me. But I see Andrew Schultz's rationale. Anyway, I did like an hour-long interview with fucking Joke World about it that he didn't release because it like slightly makes Andrew Schultz look bad. You know what I mean? Because he was like, you don't want that. He said, like, you don't, hey, you don't want that smoke, homie, to Brendan. And Brendan's like, uh, hey, put me on speakerphone. I'll kill everyone in this fucking room or something. Like, which, like, which it's like, you know, if you're like, don't, again, the reason people go, oh, shoot up the thick boy. I'm like, Brendan's never threatened me. But like, you know, if I were Brendan and someone was like, you don't want that smoke, I'd be like, oh, yeah? Like, who the fuck's in that room with you right now? Like, I bet that I bet I could beat everyone's ass in there. Like that's a reasonable thing to say. If some guy says you don't want that smoke, you know what I mean? So, but again, this is another example of Brendan just being a fucking idiot. But I think joke world, again, I, I set aside time for me, the interview, and then it's like cool for not airing it because I think it, the way I portrayed it at the time without the extra info of like, this is just a misinterpretation. So I'm like, ah, this is just a, like, a funny story that like happened that Brendan made a big deal about. Um, but like, it's these, all these secret conflicts that he has where it's like, he seems to just like, can't help but rub people the wrong way. And it's one of these things where it's like, like the dick joke that thing that we played earlier where it's like, but if you ask me like, no, so I'm just like a joke, you know, it's like, what? Like, so he's always like, he pokes people and either consciously or subconsciously this is them, but then in a way where you could be like, no, that's no, I wasn't doing this, it has nothing to do with you. But it's like, did it though? Because you have a track record of like sneak dissing people because you're too much of a pussy to be like, actually make fun of somebody who's again, Andrew Schultz is up here, Brendan Schaub's down here. So yeah. then down here he could shit on him, but because he's up here, you know, oops, can't do it. Gotta pretend like that has nothing to do with you. I love you. And it was so funny. God damn. And he was like so happy that like Schultz saw his special and was like, yeah, like, or like he watched him, he watched him do the set. He didn't watch the special. He just like came to the green room and like watched him and said, he's like, good job, man. Like I'm seeing some improvement. And it probably was like a good set that night. And he's like, man, I got fucking Andrew Schultz's like seal of approval. I'm like, I don't think it's like him saying that you're, like got like a killer set he just like literally said like good job you know <laughs> like, <laughs> um anyway 
We all right, get- all right, Mark. I gotta go to bed, and I want to say well, thank you for joining. That was amazing. We got six and a half hours of great content there. Six and a half hours of opportunity for Jim and Ham to join our podcast and just talk it out. Like uh, non see yeah. down here, Jim Renam is a pussy afraid of whoosh, the greatest <laughs> streamer, the greater streamer of all time, <laughs> and Mark Harley, who Love he claimed he could beat up. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't even, but is now hiding. He's a epic twist. loser. Epic loss. The hey, other one hey. was uh crying in a corner. He's crying. You, I think Jim and M should start lifting more weights because he's gonna want stronger muscles to hold that gigantic L that we just handed him. Yeah. <laughs> left to fucking carry around for the rest of his fucking life. First stream in five years and same more viewership than he had. Fuck, you're Ooh. fucked. You Ooh. fucked up, Jim and M. That it's sucks. An awkward, it's an awkward that sucks. I'm just getting started. I'm just it's getting started. But true. Hurtful but true, you know. Thank you to everybody who joined in in the chat room. Next time I stream, I'll have the regular setup where like, I can have the messages pop up on screen and feature them, and we can answer them. Uh, Mark, I'd love to do this again with you, obviously. There's a lot yeah. more to talk about. Um, get started chat room was crazy. Yeah. Like Literally, the chat must have had over a thousand messages in it over the course of the night. More than that. It's just like, this is just what yeah. you can scroll back yeah. and it's just like uh, that's crazy a lot of people that's just like the last hour that's fucking awesome man and i appreciate everybody coming through and, and watching and uh whether you're you know pro me or anti me or anti us or pro us whatever it is i appreciate you tuning in and we'll yeah definitely- if you're still a jim and Am fan eventually i'm gonna get you over here trust me i already got i think a hundred or plus of his subs that came over here. People saying, I used to love Jim Renam, and you opened my eyes, or Men Noodles as well opened their eyes to it, apologizing to me for believing in him and not me. So hopefully the more we do this, the more we can yeah. keep it going. But mm-hmm. as far as Jim Renam just not showing up, just shows he's a pussy and he's not really worth well, the it's time. It's but if he does agree to come up on this panel, we're not going to, do not go on his panel. None of us are going on his panel ever again. If he wants yeah. to confront you, he can do it here or on your channel whatever yeah he can do it as a man not as a guy who's desperate for or in person yeah yeah either way so thank you to the everybody who's still sticking with us we got 65 people still in here at fucking five in the five in the morning they're still here jake hudson hi you just showed up uncle podcast thank you angela witt farkas 17 um let's see Marcus 17. No, uh, Farkas oh. 17. He says Wendy Pack 2. I think he's they're still trying to get you to go over the Wend- Wendy's if he's still awake. But uh, Bird Carries, thank you. Uh, Jacek McNiff, Leia Leia, KK, Matt Noodles, Germanicus. Am I missing anybody? Patty Mayonnaise, PM, uh, Silence. Do good. Apol- Again, apologies for misinterpreting your messages. And he said, all good. I like your content. Thank you, sir. And um, anyone else I missed? Seriously, everybody who came in tonight, thank you. Thank you to Mark for joining us. And uh, hopefully uh, Jim and Nam will meet his end at some point or face his demons or admit that he's a groomer and a piece of shit, coward bitch. Or maybe all of this... The best that'll come of it is he'll just stop acting the way he's been acting. He won't go near kids anymore. Um, He'll avoid conflict with people, hopefully, because he knows he can't fight anybody. He's afraid of everybody who has even a modicum of intelligence. And um, yeah, at least we could say that. Other than that, you're a pussy, Jim or Nam. You didn't show up. You're afraid of both of us. Fuck you. And um, pussy. Good night. Good night. Take care, buddy. Good night. Let's play the intro one more time, just to yeah. just to just to drive play us out. Yeah. Oh, we got Jay Dummy here at the last second. Jay Dummy. All right, quickly, quickly, Jay Dummy, say hello. Hello. Go to bed. Thank Good. you, sir. It's my friend Jay Dummy. 
What do you What's think of Jim right? Ram not showing up after telling him he's going to beat up this guy, Mark Hardy? Look at this guy, and Jim Ram thinks he can beat this guy up. Fucking guy still drinking protein shakes. What, what, what fucking time is it? <laughs> <laughs> fucking snap that pussy like a twig. Protein never. <laughs> <never seen it. laughs> what are you telling, brother? Yeah. Oh, shit. Flex off. Yeah. But, um, no, no, I just like it is funny because guys like I don't know, man. It's just not every bodybuilder can fight, but like I just it's weird to walk through most of your life being like, no guy picks a fight with me because it's like, why would you? Don't why would you risk if I can fight? A lot of guys have muscles but can't fight, but like to when you see a guy like Jim Dan being like, I'm gonna break your arm, it's like interesting. <laughs> I just it's not something I hear a lot. He person. offered Jay Dummy, I don't know if you missed it. He said Jim Dan's like I'm not going to fight you because if I do, I'm going to like kill you and then go to jail. And then he's like, okay, well, I'm going to sign a waiver. I'll come to your house. He lives pretty close, not close, but close like enough an to him. An hour said, I'll come there. You can put me in an arm bar first and then we fight yeah. from that position. I said, I said, said arm bar or any, any, or any position. position you want. I said, I'll you still kill you. Have, you could have my back. You could have my ankle. We'll start any, anywhere you want and I'll agree to all the terms. And you're still going to end up uh, with your neck snapped at the end. of the This week. is a guy who has like a story from like, what, two weeks ago of like busting some guy's head open. They don't even know if he's alive still. <laughs> this this wasn't, <laughs> weeks, but it was like, that was, that was a few years ago, but that was like Luana. No, like, no, no. It was last week. Just go with exactly. it. All, yeah. All you care about is last week. And then I yeah. made the adult decision to not murder a guy who swung a golf club at me. And that was like a real growing point for me. But Jay legal- Dummy's got some kicking power too. I've seen it. He does <laughs> some. Uh, I've got some legs too. Yeah. Uh, I actually almost uh, beat up two kids in the McDonald's parking lot. By by kids, I mean like seven year olds. But um, <laughs> <laughs> some guy was going the wrong way in the parking lot. You're talking shit, right? You got to do you at me. I fucking, You're fucking have to grow up at some, some point. <laughs> that dude's going the wrong way in the parking lot. I'm like, hey, you fucking idiot. And two like twenty something year old kids walking into McDonald's are like, "What'd you say to me?" I throw it in park. I'm like, "I didn't fucking say shit to you. I suggest you get your hat brown and fuck off. Or I'm gonna fucking murder you." <laughs> they look at each other and they're like, "Yeah, maybe we should just go get an order." Yeah, maybe we should just not walk. drive the wrong way. <laughs> maybe I was in the wrong. That was like the golf club thing. This guy like like was zooming past me in a parking garage, and I was like, "I was like, what the fuck?" And then he stops and like throws it in reverse. He's like, "What the fuck you say?" I'm like. I said you're speeding in a parking garage and almost hit me. Like, <laughs> fuck you. I'm like, no, fuck you. Like, we have, you know, it's like, oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And then he like backs into a spot, pops his trunk. And I'm like, is this guy about to get a gun out of his trunk? Like, then he comes out with a fucking driver and like, <laughs> like, how? He's like, oh! but like, he crossed the point where if you want to hit someone with a golf club, it's like, it has to be the length of the club away from you. Right. And the moment I'm like, oh, you took one step too far. You weren't doing shit. So I just like, imagine trying to check swing somebody to intimidate them. And they just go like this. Right. They step into it. <laughs> right. No, I just, and I, yeah, I stayed in there. I was like, what do you, what you want to hit me with a golf club? <laughs> but by then pe- other people, there's like seven in the morning at 24 hour fitness in Sherman Oaks. After we, I like said like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, you better get the fuck up. I'm like, did you just you parked your car to get a golf club to try to swing at me, but like I called your bluff and now you're like still screaming at me. Like, but at that point, other people had started like, hey, hey, whoa, 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 like some you know, mature individuals. But then I go, I go, they're like, hey, hey, relax. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's this guy's a lunatic. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I'm like, I'll give him some space, he can go check into the gym. I wait like 10 minutes. I get up to the gym, he's still checking in, like he's like giving them his number. It's like it's it's three, two, three. 818 717. And he notices me out of the corner of his eye, like standing 20 feet away. And he starts screaming, I used to fuck white boys up, put you in the yard. I used to fuck. <laughs> and then on the third time, he's like, I used to fuck what? And I'm like, Sir, 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 I will murder you with my bare hands. Okay. Yeah, right. We clear on that. And I felt so bad for the there. But I, that was my quote. I was like, Sir, 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 sir. These. I will kill you if, if you say that one more time or if you want to come at me. Um, but by the end of that day, by the end of that workout, I saw him passing. I was like, all good? We dapped it up and the beef was squashed. But 
That's uh, all right. Let's, let's go let's... through. Uh, let's go through just a quick collage of Jim and M photos. This is the guy who's gonna beat up Mark Harley, by the way. Uh, JW. Hey, let's take a look at the guy who's gonna beat the fuck out of me. Hey, gay boy. He's looking pretty gay boy. Hey, Here's what's up, Ray? Here. Here's what's him up, as a kid. Boy? He was a he was a professional squeeze box player. I squeeze the box. Now I fuck puppets in the face. <laughs> Here's uh here's him with his fake YouTube his, his fake YouTube plaque that he bought for like eighty dollars. Notice the uh the name of the channel's rubbed off because it's a fake one. I put tape on it. Yeah, he said he put tape over it because his girl his ex girlfriend was like, "Why can I read the name on the play button?" And if you zoom in on it, you'll see it. It's like rubbed off, and he's like, "Oh, I put tape over that part and." To protect it and then when i took it off it removed all the but those things are etched i was gonna say like i, I he I got a fake one such a piece of shit that you can like, like rub the fucking channel name right off. you could buy these for 80 bucks on ebay i showed that before did you see the <laughs> intro i made to this episode j dummy no i i just woke up a minute okay so i'm gonna play it at the end of the show again and uh to play us text. out so you so you can Static's check it text at 11 saying hey wish is on and i, I happen to turn it on i'm like this maniac's still fucking on. Yeah, yeah. I was first streamed in five years. I had to, and I got Mark Harley here. It's great. Yep, yep. And it went pretty well. I think we peaked at like 120 or 130. You, uh, you should check the numbers after I came on. Yep. Uh, they're plummeting quickly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Son of a bitch. After the video, I want to see what the full count is. But um, yeah, let me play that. I got all of his like, crimes and all the... Even funny counterpoints when he was, I had like a, the target for when I went to Vegas and did sh uh, shooting. And he's like, oh, what is that, a BB gun? Like thinking, and then there's someone in the chat like, that spread isn't even good. And so I just was like, you know what, let me flex a little bit. Show me I got dead center. And um, just all of his like claims and that there's no proof of all the things that he's done. And I tried to compile it all into one thing. This was like 24 hour turnaround too. If I had a week to set this up, I would have had like crazy production and all kinds of funny stuff, but we had to get this done now because like Jim Renam is just fucking getting old. And now knowing he's this big of a pussy, it's not even worth it. By the way, here's him. I'm the king of six viewers in 2018. Six viewers. And apparently I learned everything from him and I wanted to be him. <laughs> and Jay Dummy, you remember Bobo from California. I just figured out who it was. He was the one who brought Jim Renam to Podtrash to try and like pawn us off or get him a part of Podtrash. And we said no. I didn't remember that. Yeah, Bobo from California, you know, the one in the hot tubs. He's oh, yeah. hot tubs I with men. About. He's uh, the effeminate. Uh, he chubby. was like, you guys got to hear this Jim Renam guy. He's great. And he was doing Howard Stern commentary, which was. That might start I, ringing a bell. Yeah, he didn't start until like 2016. And like Patra started 2014. And I was doing the broadcast since like 29, two, uh, 2009. So it's like he just told this whole blatant lie. And it's just like. That frustrates yeah. me the most. Someone who is capable of bullshitting. He's like up the timeline by like nine, <laughs> right? To yeah. He it's like you mean. I think I. Like, I don't know I, if I, I said this to yeah. you. Yeah. It's like the only explanation is he's used to. He's never been a leader in his life, and so yeah. that's why he surrounds himself with people like Wendy the retard and all these like mentally ill people to where he feels he's in control and he's inspiring to them, but. So then he rewrote this fantasy in his head. He hasn't seen me in seven years or heard if I'm still around. So he thought he could tell this lie that he inspired somebody who actually has like some history and like reverence and people, someone people know. So he can go, hey, did you guys know I taught Wish everything he knew? And he never thought I was going to uh, pop up. And then I popped up on his panel and that's what he was like. Had nothing to say. So retired. Your wife's a manatee, and you're a traitor of the U.S. because you moved to Canada. It's same <laughs> bullshit as usual. But uh, anyway, I got to end this. This would go yeah. on forever. It's 524. Yeah, it's it's, uh, Thank you, guys. Fun. Thank you, Jay Dummy. Here, I'll play this uh, so you can see it, the intro again, and I'll use this to play us out. 
the home. You want me also prove to people that you were on my Stern your website, stern? and that's where you got all your Howard TV clips from, and you put them on YouTube, and that's how you got your views on their Jimmernam, your right. first account? I actually started YouTube 12 months ago. And when I started YouTube, I was doing basically uh, Howard Stern TV stuff. I started playing a lot of Howard TV shows. I made almost 400 videos of Howard TV stuff. Don't lie on my name and pretend that your I was name. You were cool. Dude, no and one I even knows who you are, bro. What did I learn from you? Is your name what did Wish? I learn from you? Is that who you are? Yeah, nobody knows who I am. This? Yes. What's this? This is what I'm doing to you when I see you. Oh, okay. So you got a BB gun that you do target practice with, you shithead? Oh, yeah. Because you're yeah. a weasel. Zoom in on that. Not only do you look on like. Did you tell these people you're a sexual predator yet? No. All right, I want you to be all about love. No. I love you, bro. You're a good Ew. kid. I love you, dude. What? I missed you. I love you, okay? No, I, I want you to be a good kid. I don't want you to be a bad boy. Okay? I, no, no, be a good no, no. boy. Please don't ever use those words in the same sentence. And then you buy fake viewers. At least we don't. Tell everybody I buy you're fake viewers. Shorty, if I show you proof that this guy's a child predator, uh, then we'll no, 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 get her, get no, him, get him, no, 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 because there if is. there was proof, he would not be on the YouTube streets. Yes. I know what the fuck yes, I'm will. talking about. Because he's changed his name a million times. No, it... but you you put a 12 year old boy in charge of your fucking porn section on Discord. Oh really? Like, so go oh, ahead and show us the proof on that. <laughs> no, we don't see your Discord, stupid. Why did you get Discord shut down? Because you made a 12 year old your moderator and tried showing him porn. Why did you try 12? Why did you try making a little kid a moderator of Discord that porn in it? Because he's smarter than you. He's oh, than so you made it. Yeah, so more you made, you made you. a fuck. He so you made. He has more views than you. He has more views than you. So you, you made a child. Asshole. He's not a pussy what? like you who doesn't know shit about sports. So you made a child. Moderator of a Discord where you had naked and porn in it. You're a child. So You're you a child. so you had a Discord with porn in it and you made a 12 year old your moderator? What are you talking about? Discord with porn in it. Internet has porn, you fucking moron. Oh shit, they found out that I'm a child predator. I want to fuck people's kids. Better change my YouTube channel now. God damn it, oh shit, oh shit. He loves people like that because he can manipulate them and pull the puppet strings because they're so stupid for Jimmernam. But when someone like me comes along... Uh, night, I do have a silver night. plaque from YouTube thanking me for getting over 100,000 subs. But, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you're not aware you of that. You can buy... By the way, viewers, you can buy those plaques. Oh, okay. Well, I don't buy yeah, shit. Yeah, you can. But, Good right. money. Yeah, how much do you make? Because you should be proud of it. Uh, some months, so I've made $30,000 on a slow month. Have you ever made 30000 <laughs> in one month? Oh, uh, okay. There we go. Now I got that clip, so now I get to pr disprove that. Thank you. Okay. Write that down. Well, I hope I can see you again. It's been a pleasure. You're going to see me again. Go ahead and click end. I knew what I knew in the pen, I would have been blacked out on your ass.